Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. The final round is underway, and we'll get you to golf in just a minute. A big story all week has been the difficulty of the golf course. For the first time in 32 years at a U.S. Open, the leaders enter the final round over par. Phil Mickelson and Englishman Kenneth Ferry are both two over after 54 holes, and it's not a mere coincidence that Wingfoot was the site the last time it happened. Hale Irwin wound up winning that 1974 Open at seven over par. Now this year, Phil Mickelson would seem to be in great position, but for all the popular support enjoyed by Mickelson, there are, of course, other serious contenders. Australian Jeff Ogilvie, with his victory in the match play championship earlier this year, is viewed by many in golf as a man to watch. He's only a shot off the lead at three over par. Vijay Singh, with his major championship credentials, is right there, only three shots back. So, too, is Colin Montgomery. And then, lurking four back, our former Masters champion Mike Weir, and the 2003 U.S. Open winner, Jim Furyk. But still, it's the final pair that will draw the eyes of the gallery. Kenneth Ferry, a European tour player largely unknown on these shores, has never known a moment like this. Well, Phil Mickelson, of course, is by now in familiar territory. After a one under par 69 yesterday, he's in position to win his third consecutive major and his fourth out of the last 10. As always, a Sunday at the U.S. Open means that we wish you a happy Father's Day and hope you enjoy the golf coverage this afternoon. The final round is next from Wingfoot. NBC Sports and the United States Golf Association are proud to present a national championship. Today, live final round coverage of the 106th United States Open. Championship Sunday at Winged Foot Golf Club, where the passion for this sport is as great as you'll find anywhere. It starts from within that classic clubhouse, which stands amid two of the best 18-hole courses you'll find anywhere. And out on the A.W. Tillinghast West Coast is where that U.S. Open Championship legacy began. We're now for the fifth time, another champion will be crowned. And the Sunday hole location today and a nod to Jones's famous clutch 12-footer that forced a playoff he later won in the same spot as it was 77 years ago. So what does the 54-hole leaderboard in the U.S. Open at Wingfoot look like today? Where well, there is Phil Mickelson tied for the lead. He'll play in that final group a little less than two and a half hours from now with who? Kenneth Ferry. Both at plus two, Jeff Ogilvy, the young Australian with designs on crashing the party just a stroke back. VJ Singh looks to add to his major championship resume. He'll play with Colin Montgomery, who despite a 75 yesterday, is still within touch of his first major championship title. Steve Stricker fell off the pace a little bit yesterday. He was the 36 hole leader, but he's still alive after a 76. That is how tough this golf course has been. Only three Americans in the last six twosomes, so maybe we'll see someone else break through other than an American. And arriving for the second straight day very early, just about an hour ago, three and a half hours before his tee time was Phil Mickelson, the favorite in this championship. Morning, guys. And Mickelson, as is the routine, headed over to the putting green. All sorts of Exhaustive research done by Mickelson here in hopes of winning this U.S. Open Championship for the very first time. And we welcome you to Wingfoot on this Father's Day. Dan Hicks along with Johnny Miller. And you talk about Phil Mickelson, the only other time, Johnny, that he's played in the final group on a U.S. Open Championship Sunday, Pinehurst, 1999, and that famous putt that Payne Stewart sunk. And then he grabbed Mickelson around the face and said, you're going to love being a father. Well, three kids and three major championship titles later since that misty day in Pinehurst. Mickelson is a totally different guy, and here he is in the cusp of this national championship, finally. Uh, I totally agree. I think he learned a lot from that day, and um, the bottom line is he's in a great spot right now, folks. Uh, he's going for the American Slam. Uh, he really just has a couple players are within, uh, you know, a shot. One's tied, of course, and one one behind that Jeff Ogilvy. But he's in a really good spot in that. In his career, 77 percent of the time when he's led in that la the third round, going into the fourth, he's won, which is probably second of all time behind Tiger Woods, which is really impressive. 
But as Bobby Jones says, nobody wins the U.S. Open. <laughs> Somebody sort of, you know, you just sort of fall into it, so to speak. So the, the good news, I guess, uh, for the contenders are, remember last year we were talking about the Iceman, Retief Goose, and he's won two right. U.S. Open. Final he's got group. a three-shot lead. He, there's no way anybody could beat him. He never messes up. You know, the guy is Mr. Clutch. And he shoots an 81. So, you know, Phil Mickelson's never won a U.S. Open. You know he's dreamt of winning a U.S. Open since he's a little tiny kid in that backyard. But he has not gotten one yet, and there's a lot of pressure on him. And, Johnny, it's going to be an emotion-packed day, and this golf course has a track record of high numbers by 54-hole leaders. We took a look at the four previous U.S. Open staged here at Wingfoot. There's the list of the 54-hole leaders. Casper and Jones happen to hang on and win. Hmm. Jones with a 79 back in 29, Casper with his 74. But look what happened to Irwin, 79. Of course, he won in 74, but Tom Watson had a chance to grab the title, but finished with a 79 and was tied for fifth. You've always talked about how different the final round of this championship is. How different is it going to be on a course like Wingfoot today? Well, the big thing is you have got to drive the ball well. You're, hopefully your nerves allow you to make good swings and hit good shots off the tee, especially on one and two, two really tough starting holes, and then the third hole, tough par three, and then four, another really hard hole until you get to the easy fifth if you drive it in the fairway. But everything is dependent on the driver. If you hit the ball in the middle, you really have to play a pretty poor hole from there on in to make bogey. So that's the key. Remember yesterday, Phil couldn't do anything right, really, uh, until that last nine holes, and they made the unbelievable up and in at the signature 10th par three, and then from there on in, he was flawless. So he has good momentum right now, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. 33 in the back nine yesterday yeah. with the two birdies. He was five shots off the lead after the first nine, but yeah. kept going and kept his head down and ended up... Uh, being in the final group with a share of the lead. It's going to be fun. Yes, it is. Can't wait to see it all unfold, and neither can the rest of our NBC broadcast crew. Gary Koch and Bob Murphy out there on the towers here on the West Course. On the ground, you've been hearing from them all championship week long. Roger Malpe, Mark Rolfing, Dottie Pepper, Jimmy Roberts handling the interviews for us and offering his perspective. And with us, David B. Fay here in the 18th Tower, the executive director of the USGA. Let's get a feel for what the golf course is playing like and the par 4-6 is going to be a fun place to hang out. Ernie Els at the drivable 307 yard short par 4 today. That's a heck of a shot if it gets one hop. Uh, literally, it's only about 22 uh, yards wide right there, but that was a beautiful drive. Ernie at plus 13, plus 2 in his early going today and we say hello to old Murph out there. Murph. Then the third hole, the par three. Today, 223 yards. That's David Duvall's putt on the way for birdie. Played a very solid five iron to this point, Murph. Not a real hard hole location today. We've had some good starts. David there, you see, birdied the first. Bo Van Pelt playing with David. It's also one under. Reinvigoration and New life, seemingly, for David Duvall. He looks good, sounds good. Importantly, his game is very close to real good. Over to 12. Par 5, this was a moment ago. Camilo Bijegas, plus 20. 12 today. The tees have been moved up again. They're on the other team ground. 579 yards it measures today. What a great shot that was. Wow. This is quite the hole location right here. If you go about five feet left of the hole, it'll run right off the green. You can see how the ball wants to go towards mm -hmm. off the green. It's like going, I want to go over there. Back over to the sixth. Ernie's drive ended up right here, so out of the thick rough, trying to get it up and down for the birdie three. Wow, that's a nice touch, isn't it? But that's that's a very accurate drive, folks. That was only about. Oh, 18 feet off the line with uh, th over 300 yard drive. That's pretty good. <laughs> so that'll be a fun hole to look at today. Maybe we'll get an eagle and I'm sure we'll probably see plenty of birdies out at the six today. Well, this graduated rough here being used for the first time in a U.S. Open. We talked about it yesterday. You've got the intermediate cut at an inch and a half and then the further out you go, the tougher it gets. Three and a half inches of rough in the first cut primary. And outside of that, if you venture in, this stuff is probably six, six and a half inches in some spots. So we've seen a number of different 
kinds of shots being played out of it this week, but look what happened to Jeff Ogilvie in the second round on Friday at the 14th. Just grabs the club and turns it over, Johnny. Yeah, just wraps around the hosel and twists the club over. You gotta keep it from doing that somehow. Colin Montgomery wasn't spared. This was yesterday, a part of his rough start. He ended up making double bogey at the long par three third after that one. Fell short trying to chop it out. Kenneth Ferry, a contender not spared. This was him yesterday with his second at the six. Barely got it out of the intermediate cut. He was fortunate to get out of that cut there. And then maybe the most classic example was yesterday late in the day, Podrick Harrington only two off the lead when he tried to get that hybrid out of the thick stuff. On his way to a triple bogey seven and a round of 74 for Harrington. So it has been rough going here on the west course. Yeah, that's an understatement. That's one reason why Camilo is 20 over par. Let me tell you, normally his power game, he can power around anything missing all the fairways, but not here. And that's why it's really a true test. This is like an old fashioned US Open. You get in the rough, it's at least a half a shot penalty, period. An old fashioned US Open with Old fashioned tilling has greens to deal with as well if you happen to get out of that rough. Well, there's Padre Harrington at plus six, awaiting his 2.20 tee time. There's Peter Hedlund. What does he have in store today after picking up just the 40th ace in U.S. Open history at the long par three third yesterday and the always colorful Ian Poulter arriving? We'll see how good he looks in pink at the end of the day. Mother Nature has saved the hottest day of this championship for a championship Sunday. And out at 14, Stephen Gangliff. He's got the hot round today, three under par. Plays some nationwide tour, plays the Canadian tour. Just lost a playoff a couple of weeks ago. A beautiful shot to go four under for the day, Johnny. What a shot, that's not a hard putt either. No, it's not. There you see Stephen Gangliff, three under par for the day. Pampling two under through 11. So a little better scoring, uh, no wind. Yeah, just a gentle little breeze. And uh, there are some pretty easy hole locations today, whether it's quite flat around the hole. Uh, and there's some good ones too, but there are some easier ones like, uh, like number six, Bob, that's a uh, dead flat right. around that hole. And uh, it's, you know, it's a lot easier than if it's tucked around that bunker. I was a little surprised here. I really thought the whole location would be a couple of yards closer to the false front up there, but they've elected right here. This putt, if it does anything, probably pulls a little left. Yeah, that's what I have it. It's a very difficult hole normally. So birdie's rare. Phil made birdie here yesterday. Well, that's a, small, a slow backswing with a little pop at the bottom. Well, yeah. I think he got a little excited. He really popped it. He knew we were talking about him over to 12. This was Bejagas' birdie attempt a moment ago over at the par 5 12th. That is called Robin Eggs Blue there, folks. <laughs> Some birdies here to Wingfoot. Seven else with an eight iron here. 161. The be, yardage today. Gotta be careful not to come up short. Did he tug it? Yeah, he likes it. He said, "Be right." That's you're gonna see a lot of balls right there, folks. That's a very good golf shot. If you come up a little short, it'll roll back off the green. There's a false edge there. Ernie looking for back-to-back -back birdies. 14 again. And gang lift two. Make his par. Remain three under for the day. Very good round. Ernie Els looking for back-to-back -back birdies here. This at the seventh. Good looking putt, but it flattens out. Ernie, a two time U.S. Open champion over at the par four fourth. David Duvall's third. He's got one leg up, it looks on the grass. Let's see if he can get it to the hole. That's a good shot. David. So much anticipation yesterday, Johnny, with Duvall 68 on Friday to get into the thick of it. Shot a 73 yesterday. And begins today at plus 10, a full eight behind. 
But still a good showing here. Well, you say Mickelson doesn't practice his flop shots and go through the entire arsenal. There he is with a little flop there. And talk about a key shot yesterday when he was five shots behind after the opening nine. He saw his tee shot at the 10th back up down the hill. No problem. But he's been practicing those since his backyard days in San Diego. It all could pay off today with his first U.S. Open championship win. It is a beauty here. The West Course at Wingfoot. A.W. Tillinghast Design opened up back in 1923. Tom Fazio and his associate, head of the most recent restoration process here. They restored original green dimensions from 19. 29 aerials Johnny they built new tees took down more than a thousand trees so this uh, is a different kind of wing foot than what we've seen in previous US Opens and they've added a couple new hole locations back left on 10 and back left on 18 which are two beauties Adam Scott warming up Adam Scott begins the day at plus eight six behind as he approaches his tee time at about 40 minutes from now. He's not out of it. You know, if he shoots 66 or seven, you just, I'm not saying the odds are too good, but he's got a chance. He's got a nice comfortable pairing with Fred Couples. Remember Arnold Palmer was seven back in 1960. And you see, and you see Colin Montgomery there, three off the lead to begin his day and just a little while ago Roger Malpe caught up with the Scott. Thank you Dan. Uh, Colin you, you righted the ship after a tough start yesterday. Uh, Slightly. Does hanging on like that and finishing the way you did with those two great saves will that help you go into the first tee today. Very much so. If I've been level part I finished the way I started then in a downer uh, the way I finished uh, uh, to hold the last six six greens I hold six good putts and uh, and that gives me confidence uh, imagine the other way I had no confidence at all so so at least I've I've righted the ship as you say and and uh, and only three behind uh, three behind it into any last round you have a chance well 43 in five days thank you very is, much. There, is there a yeah. sense of urgency uh, urgency to win one of these there's been an urgency for a for for, uh, for about 10 years yeah uh, you know my last chance here came in 97 at congressional when Lost by shot to Ernie there, and and uh, it's been a long time. That was that was coming up nine years ago, and uh, uh, so yes, there's an urgency. Uh, I look forward to the challenge. I look forward to the challenge on the fifth tee yesterday. You know, hadn't done much wrong, and I was five over par. And uh, it can happen. If it, and I always believe it can happen to me. It can happen to anybody. And uh, this is a very very difficult golf course. And who knows that seventh today might be good enough. You never know. Colin, thanks for your time. Best of luck to you today. Thank you. You know, there used to be the talk of Mickelson being 0 for 46 in majors. How about Monty now? 0 for 57. A look at his major misses. They include four runner-ups. Yeah, it's been a tough run for him to, to not have won any tournament. Let's say the, the Disney Classic or something. You know, it's amazing. Well, this is the modern age of golf. All sorts of contraptions. A putting contraption here. And who's got it? None other than Vijay Singh, who spends about all of his waking day trying to get better, whether it's by practicing or getting the latest gadgets. Yeah, he's uh, just possessed by golf. It's amazing. He's a good family man, though. Out to the first, and uh, unlike the previous three days, Johnny, one has been giving up some birdies. Uh, the one thing, oh, that's going to roll right down by the hole. That is Nick O'Hearn coming in. Nick O'Hearn got within one foot of having a really impossible kind of putt. Long left on number one is not good. Already three birdies today at the opening hole. And over at nine a little while ago, Sean O'Hare for birdie at the long par four. It's a double breaker. And John, if you're a player in the locker room, you're watching the telecast you're getting reads off of putts yeah it's a good point it's a really a good point well Steve Stricker is doing his own reading out there hoping to hang on a little bit a bit better down the end yesterday he got off to a good start but some more loose swings by the man who hasn't won in five years his tee time approaching at 2:30, three off the lead
see if the first here at Wingfoot can keep providing some birdies. Nick O'Hearn for his three. Nice. Yes, it can. Four already on the day. Yeah, that was a good read because that could have been read too much to the left. Over to eight. And Ernie over the green. He was in the left rough. This is a hard shot. He has to pop it straight up. He's got a lot of downslope. Just got too much golf ball. That wasn't too good a shot, Bob, there. No, it didn't give it the right angle, did he? Hard angle standing. Now live. Jay Haas for a par. He drove it in the right rough and scruffed it out as best he could. It's a pretty good record he's got now, isn't it, Bob? Yeah, terrific, huh, Johnny? All-time cuts leader now, just... That's a, that's amazing. Durability, five, lucky. Five, yeah, 591 cuts, Johnny. I know. How about making the cut in all the major championships he's played here at Wingfoot? There's the list. He's a playing historian. There you see. Said one of the main reasons that uh, he attempted to qualify is he wanted another crack at Wingfoot. Yeah, sounds like he's had a lot of cracks at it with that many cuts. <laughs> Without winning a major. Ernie for par now. He's one over today. Oh, that's a sort of an ouch, isn't it? Still not done. Well, you, you just get off and you're likely to stay there all week. Ernie said he just is not putting the ball well. Well, when they start not going in, it's amazing the things that go on in your head, huh, Bob? That's true, because then you can't <laughs> see them going in. <laughs> You're envisioning them going over the hole. And you hit great putts, and they just sear the edge. It's like, how come? They used to go in two years ago. Well, from the MetLife blimp Snoopy one, Captain Jeff Kapek has given us a bird's eye view. Let's go to five. And our first look at the 515 yard par five that has played as the easiest hole on the course all week long. David Duvall with his third shot after driving in the left rough. Good layout to 141 yards. Wind a little bit out of the right. Gary, he's back except for the driver, isn't he? I tell you what, I've been very impressed, Johnny, with his golf swing this week. The club is not nearly as laid off at the top as it was for quite some time. Made it hook. Not terribly pleased with that one, but still uh, we're seeing signs of life. The ball looking over a lengthy birdie putt. Dottie Pepper right there. Yeah, a little bit of a slider from his left to right. Just watch Bo Van Pelt whip out a putt for Eagle and really good opportunity that you really need to take advantage of here, Gary. Well, the hole, as I mentioned, the easiest on the golf course stroke average of just over 4.6 this week, so one of the few breather holes here at Wingfoot. Duvall's pace has been very good, Johnny, all week long. One of the few players uh, leaves this one short, but he's been getting most of them to the hole. Yeah, he's been the most aggressive I've seen putting. Over at eight. Moment ago, Charles Howe, that would give all of you some ideas to what these players are facing today. He went from rough to rough to bunker. That was like a dub right there, Boy. you know? Well, the name Harmon and Wingfoot kind of go hand in hand here. There's Butch Harmon uh, talking to one of the many stars that he has tutored through the years. His father, Claude Harmon, the longtime head professional here. And you know that it's a special place when uh, there's been only five head pros in the 80 plus years of its existence and the search is on by the way for a new one as the current one Tom Neoporti you see he took over in 1978 he's going to end his long and dignified run a little bit later on now a lifetime member Neoporti he will be the golf professional emeritus when the new pro comes on board and just a moment ago at the par 3 13th Stewart sink for a birdie that looks good the first of the day he flew it in <laughs> nice chip <laughs> nice, nice one iron. Oh boy, 229 yards today. And over at the second just a moment ago. Fred Funk found a nice cool spot to putt from the shade of the big elm left of the green. And we're seeing a few go in. So Fred Funk 
Goes back to nine over par for the championship. Man who turned 50 on Wednesday. Still going strong. Just driving it in the fairway. Putting it on the green. It's a day to sweat, Gary. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be plenty of that, Dan, as the temperatures are scheduled to be up in the mid-90s. We'll be back to Wingfoot in just a moment. Ernie else for a par at the long par four. Nicely done by Ernie. Stays at plus 13. He's just plus two on the day. But out in 37. Yeah, they can make some putts out here. Some. Out to the third. And just a moment ago, Fred Funk from the right bunker. We'll see some business from this bunker today. Boy, and he plays it just right. Flew it up into the flat so the ball could stop more readily. You don't want to land it in the hill and have it kick and run away. Over to six. Check in with this short par for a six. And here's a guy that laid up, David Duvall from 96 yards. Well, he's in perfect position, but it's a very small target. Only 11 feet of green on either side of the hole. And you can see he had really a poor, not only was it left, but it was way long on the left. So that was a real hiccup. Up ahead to seven. This was Tom Pernice a moment ago, having a fine year. Pernice is really a strong strike at the bottom. He really made a big divot, and what a shot! Nearly another ace. We saw Headblum's ace at the long par three third yesterday. Pernice nearly added to the total. Let's go to 16. And uh, Camilo Vajegas once again uh, in the uh, off the fairway. Let's put it that way. Got an opening here in the trees. Can he pull it off? Cool. Well, it needs to fade. Oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> no wonder people like watching him play. Is that creative or that, what? That was just dang good. That's what that was. Unbelievable. He might still be uh, 21 over par, but uh, still providing fans with some unbelievable shots. We'll be back to the U.S. Open Championship. And once again, we throw out our well wishes to uh, all the fathers out there. Can't help but think about Tiger Woods today. Uh, not only not a part of this uh, championship on the weekend, but uh, after the loss of his father, his first Father's Day without Earl. But the good memories uh, are what pull you through of your dad. And Johnny, I know you, you lost your father a little while ago, and you, it's a guy that got you started in the game. It's uh, it's a special, special day, especially for guys that get started by their dads here in this game. And one of the greatest blessings in anybody's life is to have a great dad that really spends a lot of time with you and, and loves you. you know? There's John Cook and his son Jason right here with him at this championship on the bag. And get you out to this 16. And Camilo Bajegas for what would be the first birdie of the day here at the 78 yard par four. That was a heck of a shot. You know? Well, just, uh, you know, to visualize it and then pull it off. And to come up the right distance with right. that biggest slice. Pretty much straight uphill. Well, it's actually a very easy hole location. It is, there. Johnny. Yep. Easy to leave it below the hole, and uh, the putting from there is not all that bad. Nice. So, Jagus doesn't take advantage of the great second shot. Yeah, that's probably why he's 21 over him. And Duvall trying to dig himself out of the not so good second shot here at the sixth. Pretty good. He'll have a chance to save his par four. Six is going to be one fun hole today. Well, Jeff Ogilvie, you see there, is in the second to last group. Just had a chance to chat with Roger Malpe, and here's a sample of that conversation. Thank you, Dan. First, I should say the only reason uh, Jeff con considered doing this is because it's halftime in the Australia-Brazilian game, which is 0-0 in the soccer. Uh, but, Jeff, have you spent the last 18 hours thinking about today's round or trying not to think about today's round? Um, I didn't try not to think about it. I've been thinking about it. Um, it's hard not to think about it, but I slept pretty well last night, and this morning I was uh, thinking about it a little bit more. But I played pretty well yesterday, and I just, I guess, got to kind of run off the confidence I gained yesterday. And if I can do that again, I'll be in good shape. Obviously, Australians have always had great success in golf, uh, but there's only been one Australian U.S. Open champion. What would it mean to you personally as an Australian to win the U.S. Open? 
Yeah, it'd be pretty special. I mean, it'd be good. Um, Australians, uh, the Australian media is getting a little bit on top of us Australians because we're winning quite a few PGA Tour events, but we're not winning any majors. We haven't won one for 10 or 11 years. Um, so it'd be uh, it'd be pretty nice when the US Open. Thanks and good luck. Thanks, Rod. Dan. Thank you, Roger. I asked Jeff if he, if he remembered the last Australian to win a major period last night, and right away he came away with the answer. Steve Elkington at Riviera at the PGA back in 95. So he's well aware of uh, the Aussies coming up uh, empty in major yeah. championships. Beat Monty after Monty, what birdied in the 71st and 72nd holes, which you just don't do. Foreign born champions, they really had a stranglehold on this championship in the early years. You see first 31, 21 titles. After that, it's been an American coronation of sorts. Back out to the six, trying to save his four, David Duvall. That's the way he makes them. He just flies them in the hole. And the British Open champion from 2001 continues his fight back to get to the top of the world in golf. Top of the world right now is Phil Mickelson and the co-leader, Kenneth Ferry. What does he have in store for later this afternoon? What kind of night's sleep did he have? We'll have a conversation with him, with Bob Costas, when we come back. Back at Wingfoot, 27-year-old Englishman Kenneth Ferry from Northeast England near Scotland playing in his first ever U.S. Open and finds himself with a share of the lead with 18 holes to play. Butterflies? Feel good? Yeah, obviously a little bit. It's, it's an uncharted uh, territory for me so far, so but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You had never played in a U.S. Open, finished 11th last year on the European Tour in terms of the money list in the top 15, get an exemption into the Open. But let's take a quick look, not to put additional pressure on you, but look at what we might call the benefits package that comes along with winning a U.S. Open. All of this would be yours by twilight tonight. All right, there's the prize money, the cup. The exemptions into the next 10 U.S. Opens and five British Opens, exempt status on the PGA Tour for five years, invitations to the next five Masters, I'm guessing you'd accept, PGA Championships and Players' Championships. Not bad. Yeah, no, but not bad for four days of work, so, yeah. Much has been made during our coverage the first three days of the fact that you've gotten yourself in shape. You lost some 55 pounds, although, as you put it when asked, four stone. Yeah, right. pound, pounds and stone. I heard a bit of a, I kind of <laughs> caused a bit of an argument the other night trying, uh, on, on one of the other networks, people trying to work out how many stones were in a pound. Well, a stone pounds. is what, 13 pounds, 14. right? 14. 14. 14 pounds. So almost right on the money. Yeah. Minus a pebble or two. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. there L you go. A little bit gone back on since, but. <laughs> and, and what difference has that made in your game? Uh, just just the ability to get around the golf course a lot better. But uh, Swing-wise, uh, the technical side, no, no real big difference, but mainly just getting around the golf course for five days, and especially on a day like this with the heat, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to get around. How well do you know Phil Mickelson, with whom you'll be paired today? Do you have a relationship at all? No, I've never. I've, I've, I've met Phil uh, fleetingly a couple of times at Loch Lomond. Uh, when he's been over to play in Europe, but apart from that, never really, never, never met him. So, especially with Tiger out of the mix this weekend, Phil is the focus. You are on nobody's radar screen. Interesting contrast. Yeah, well, you know, and there was a lot of a lot of talk at the start of the week from from a lot of the big guys saying the same sort of thing with Tiger, with the big the big hype of Tiger and Phil that they were looking forward to kind of coming out and playing and. Uh, not being expected to, to win, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Phil, Phil's obviously the huge favourite. I'm the underdog. Obviously, never been in this position before, but everybody's got to start somewhere. And maybe, uh, like I say, if I go out and play well and play the way I have the first few days, and I get a few breaks on the way around, today could be my day. Got a specific game plan coming in? Just the, the same, the same plan. I've had the first few days, kind of fairways and greens. If I miss a fairway, just uh, take my medicine, not be greedy, and just try and get it back in place quick, quickly as I can. And you got the Superman belt buckle going? Yeah, it's it's there. It's, it's been there for a while now. What, what's the story behind that? Uh, nothing in particular. Just just kind of looking for something slightly different, and that's what uh, that's what I came up with. All right, good luck today. Thank you very much. All right, Kenneth Ferry. That Lex Luthor is a loathsome character, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Let's go back to Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob, tell him to stay away from the kryptonite. Kenneth Ferry. Johnny Miller, uh, this is the classic David and Goliath final pair championship Sunday U.S. Open. Any way 
that Ferry can hang around with Mickelson most of the day. You would think that uh, he's just going to be his nerves are going to be just off the charts uh, too jittery. But if he can get off to a good start, you know, he is right going right into his prime. I thought he was older than 27. He's just just get running right into his prime. So he's sort of bulletproof right now age wise. He's in a great time of his career and uh, this should give him a shot in the arm. Out to Cook with his son in the bag and the 12 for birdie. Very smooth stroke and a good putt. John Cook made some early noise in this championship. Had a good first round on Thursday with a one over par 71, but it is tough to hang at Wingfoot. Fred Couples getting ready to go here in three minutes. He'll be teeing off with Adam Scott when we come back to Wingfoot Golf Club in the Marinette. Here at the first tee, awaiting the next group to tee off. They include a couple of Butch Harmon's pupils and Adam Scott, 25 year old, and the salt and pepper now of Fred Couples on the hair. Got into contention at the Masters uh, earlier this year in the first major. And Adam Scott still looking for one. They both begin the day six behind. Johnny, that's familiar territory for you back in 1973 when you shot the 63 but who knows what number it'll take to get back into it today. Ladies and gentlemen this is the 140 starting time from Seattle Washington Fred Couples. So the chances Johnny for a couple of guys six back. Well I mean how many 63s have been shot in the last round? But I mean, the bottom line is it I is doubt possible. there's going to be one here today. I don't know. The, <laughs> there are some better hole locations for scoring today. There really are. I mean, somebody really played great golf, Tita Green. Uh, definitely something around 65 could be shot. I was going to say maybe today's version of the 63 is a 66 here. Oh, so well, maybe. I think uh, Oakland's not exactly chopped liver. Three wood off the tee, headed right into the tree line. What I don't see is that many guys just knocking it down the middle and knocking the flags out uh, consistently through 18 holes. And I don't know if it's and from just coincidental. Queensland, Australia, Adam Scott. Well, this young man certainly has been playing well lately. You see the top five in the last four PGA Tour starts, seventh on the money list, three wins for Adam Scott best form on the PGA Tour, maybe in all professional golf. This is Tiger Woods in the year 2000. Also a three wood up the left side of the fairway. Adam Scott splits it. Just perfect, absolutely a perfect shot. He shot a 70 yesterday. Adam Scott did. Couples with his 71 to start out at plus eight, six behind the co-leaders Mickelson and Ferry ahead at 11. This just a moment ago, Dan. Second shot for Ernie Els at the short par four. Very accessible hole location today, right on the very front of the green. And we're seeing some good approaches. That from 119 yards. And now live the birdie attempt. Not a lot of break around this no, hole. No, there really isn't, Johnny. A lot of very straight putts. This is a good putt. Yep, very straight, as we said. So Ernie Els, nice birdie, moves him to one over par in his final round. Drive it in the fairway there. You've got a chance to make birdie at 11. We'll go up to 13. And John Cook for a birdie. We saw this putt a little while ago made, huh? Slices Up a little round. Yeah, he's got it out too far though, doesn't he? Yeah. We're going to see a lot of putts from down there. The players are guessing that the ball is going to bounce in the front there, and it's just not doing it. Let's go up to Bob Costas. All right, and we're joined by Tim Rosafort, senior writer from Golf World Magazine. Talk about a few of the stories surrounding this U.S. Open. Let's begin with John Cook. Uneven number of qualifiers making the cut moving on to Saturday and Sunday, 63. So somebody had to play essentially alone, or in this case with a marker, and it was Cookie. It was Cookie with Andrew Sobota, the Wingfoot member. But he made a plea to Tiger Woods, sent him a little text message saying, hey, bud, 
why don't you throw on a shorts, bring up your bag with a kickstand, and come up and join me? And yeah. I need a, I and need did a Tiger partner. respond? No response, but you know, uh -huh. if he did respond, I don't think we could go out with it on air. Probably not. Backstory is he did approach the USGA, asked if his son Jason could play with him. They considered it, said if it was Father's Day, we would allow you to do that, but since it was Saturday, they went with Subota instead. Cookie played too well today. He's moved up in the field. All right, so he is, he's got himself a pairing. He does. Today. What about Jeff Ogilvie, who suddenly is the focus of much attention near the top of the board? Well, he plays a mean stairway to heaven on the guitar. He loves cycling around Scottsdale, Bob, which if you know, if you've ever been to Scottsdale, you know how hot it is. Explains how lean he is. His wife, American wife, a culinary chef, obviously feeding him a lot of protein because, again, very lean. Was attended a, a dinner at the White House a couple weeks ago with President Bush as part of an Australian delegation. And the rep on him is that he's hard on himself, which is not something you need in a U.S. Open, certainly. Let's see if that plays out today if things start going south for him early. Kenneth Ferry was up here with us a few moments ago. What do you got on him? Well, Ferry's an interesting story. He described himself as just a regular Joe from Ashington in the north of England. Ashington, the home of Bobby and Jack Charlton, the famous soccer players. Bobby Charlton, maybe the greatest soccer player in England's history. Had a little backstory with his caddy as well. His regular caddy dumped him for Thomas Bjorn a couple of weeks ago. His backup caddy decided he wanted to go to the World Cup this week. Of course, England's in. So his backup to the backup, Gary Tilston, could be stepping in. You talked about all the loot that, uh, that Ferry was going to have. You think about the bonus that he could receive today just for being at the right place at the right time. Yeah, speaking of soccer or football, as they call it over there, let's get the, the info from the truck. England's playing Brazil, is that right? Australia, Brazil, I'm sorry. And Brazil is leading 1-0. Is that right? All right, we're just winging it here. You can see I'm all over this World Cup action. Australia taking on Brazil, Brazil a world power, leading one nothing at some point in the match, or 1-0 as we like to say. Now let's go back to Dan Hicks. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Bob. Bob, I thought an energized goal was coming out of there at any second. Australian Brazil in action. We understand Jeff Ogilvie is in the player lounge watching as we speak. One thing that's unusual, folks, look at these holes, how they run pretty much all in the same direction except for number 10 that goes right to left. That's very unusual. Normally you try to get a lot of different directions so they get different wind exposures, but you're coming down now to the 10th hole. See the one on the bottom left of your screen, that one hole that goes towards the west. Well, Tillinghast had a crew of about 200 men using mules and the old scoopers to shape the layouts. As we go out to the one and pick up Couples, uh, Dottie Pepper, where did he land after the Aaron tee shot? Well, this is going to be a tough shot. It's going to be a tough shot, but he can cut it. That ball is cutting. Let's see if he got it on the right line actually overcut it which is hard to do but I think it's in the bunker but he had a pretty easy shot really for him he can cut it out of anywhere he's got enough green to work with it's tough green though he best US Open finishes for Fred Couples the best coming all the way back in 1991 at Hazel team pretty good here at Wingfoot back in 84 not really a very good record in the open if you can see you got to be a really tough guy I think that's why you get a Lee Jansen winning twice or one three times those kind of guys that Nick Fowl uh, Nick Fowler could have won in here of course and then Curtis Strange tough guys they, the tough guys sort of win here win at the open usually you know Johnny Jack Goosen. Nicholas Jack Nicholas once said that the US Open flag eliminates a lot of players some players just weren't yeah. meant to win the US Open and quite often he said a lot of them know it Interesting yeah. quote from yeah. the greatest ever. You gotta be so tough and resilient. Watch this swing. Just perfect everything, you kids. Just copy this. Watch it on plane. Right over the right shoulder. You do not want to go long left. That's the only place. Come and on back. That's not great, but it's pretty straight putt. It's back. getting better too. Sounds like Jack Nicholas talking there. <laughs> Jack knows that first screen very well after what happened to him in 1974. Well, let's get uh, a closer look here at these uh, keyholes here at Wingfoot. Johnny, beginning right here at the opening par four. Well, hey, look at this first hole. It's the hardest hole in the golf course. It doesn't really look like it at 450 yards, 24 yards wide fairway. Don't want to go right where Couples did. Uh, if you can hit in the shaded area right there, you sort of should be able to make par easily. But the holes have been cut basically on the front middle left middle and right now we've got a whole location that's in between those two back arrows so if you go long left the way that hump you can't see the hump but it really will kick that putt long and down the hill so you gotta be careful and then the fifth hole which is the easiest hole in the golf course it's an uphill par five you can see here you gotta avoid that bunker that that second bunker that you see 
Uh, players need to hit a good drive. It's about 27 yards wide. They give a little bit wider than normal here. And if you can hit it right there, you can make eagle because a lot of the divots are about the 220, 230 yard mark. If you miss the fairway, you're gonna have to lay it up there. You can see it back to front, tilted green, back right hole location, just right there. So um, you gotta be careful there. It's actually a pretty good hole location to get it close. And then the ninth hole, the longest par four in US Open history at 514 yards. Uh, the drive is pretty uh, pretty darn narrow with the trees. It's 27 yards wide there. Uh, you need to hit the fairway, otherwise you're just not gonna get on this green in two. Uh, it's a pretty tough hole location, just back, middle, right. So uh, you'll see as we get close, you can see this green and the hole is right there. And 33% uh, of, the, of the field have hit this green this week, which isn't a lot. And the 10th hole, A.W. Tillinghast just loved this hole. It was his favorite par three he ever did, which is saying quite a bit. Uh, it's a beautiful hole. It's a perch green raised up. Those bunkers are quite a bit below the surface of the green. And the hole location today is an interesting spot. Uh, you can see the, the, the slope of this green with the hole location sitting right there today. So you can't go long, you can't go left. So, and then going over to the 12th hole, can play 640 yards, but tell you what, today the tee has been moved up by the USGA. They're feeling pretty good about this course and the scoring. Moved it up to 579. So, a guy like David Duvall, the longer hitters, can hit it out here at 300 yards, and they can give this a go, even though, boy, well, you talk about a ribbon to hit to. Normally, you lay it up right here. It's about 120 yards of the green, and you don't even challenge this neck right here. But the players can try to fit it in here. You got these fir trees, which will, is almost like a water hazard. And they got the best hole location of the day sitting just in this back plateau. So watch out there. It just left of the hole, roll right off the green into the bunker, no chance. And then over to 18, played the hardest hole on the golf course yesterday with an amazing hole location. That bunker right there is in play. You can see it's about 285 to that bunker. Players have been hitting out to the 300 yard mark. We have the Bobby Jones hole location today, folks. The one that was one of the most famous putts ever in US Open history, We're just in front of that. And uh, you can see uh, the, the mounding on the screen and where that hole is. Uh, Bobby Jones made that left to righter there. Only one birdie in the last two days on 18. Darren Clark in the third round. Woo, that's a tough hole. All right, Johnny, thank you. Let's go out to the first. Coming up for the long par attempt is Couples. So he'll have that for an opening bogey five. Well, many people believe that Fred turned in one of the finest performances of his career. Johnny T. to green at the Masters earlier this year was that putter that just uh, defied him again at a second green jacket. He was going along pretty good with the putter. It was just the last, what, uh, 12 holes or something? Well, the killer came at uh, 14 there. Yeah. Three putt when it looked like he was going to make a birdie. Yeah, that's right. He knocked it stiff there. And then you know who put it away. This is going to get a big gallery uh, today, this group. This is a real glamour group, even though the leaders don't go off. What is it for another hour and eight minutes? Uh, the final group, I mean, and uh, this putt we might see later on. So it's an important putt. It's right down the middle of the there's little, three little valleys back there is what it amounts to. And uh, you got you basically have got uh, you basically have got uh, a, a valley here and then you've got this valley here and then you've got another valley over here and in between are these humps right here and humps over here. And I'm telling you, if you get in the wrong valley, these guys have hit it right up the slot. So it's pretty good. And this is fast. That could be a double breaker. Might come back, don't give, don't give up on it yet. That was coming back, I think. And that's what's happened to have a, a lot of the real tricky, fast downhill putts you've noticed. Remember Mickelson, what he did? I mean, what Tiger did the start of his championship? Yeah, paying too much respect, I guess, to three. And Jeff Sluman's putt for birdie on the way. Good position there, just about hole high. The ball breaks ever so slightly left to right. Talked to Mike Davis this morning, uh, Bob, and he said that the greens really were just watered enough to handle some of the sort of emergency areas, you know, the ones that were starting to get crusty and brown, and uh, so they weren't watered as much as the day before. All right. So Couples coming up for his bogey five. This is the only green on the course being treated differently from the others because of its severity. The plans were to single cut at once a day the others being double cut in the morning single cut in the evening 
This was one of the more conservative setups besides the rough by the U.S. Open. Very fairly. It uh, didn't take any chances on uh, crazy hole locations. Only one maybe the 18th yesterday was a great hole location. I loved it. <laughs> I'm sure the players. Oh, oh, that ball went sideways. Tough start for Fred. That Double was, bogey. Didn't that look like it was going to fall in and then it just went I don't literally know if the ball was ever hit sideways. Solid enough to just even get going. What a start there on such a it, it, look at the hole. It doesn't look that tough. That's what this championship will do to you. Jim Furyk knows a little bit about what it takes to win it. Champion from Olympia Fields in 03. And there is his dad who saw him win. Former club pro Mike. They embraced before he went out for the final round of the U.S. Open in 03. Exchanged some emotional words, and there is Ian Poulter, who will join Jeff Ogilvy in the second to last group. Steve Stricker, still in it, just three off the pace. Challenged BJ in the PGA Championship years ago, went head to head with him. Colin Montgomery has had his chances. We'll see what's in store for the contenders in the 106 U.S. Open in a little while. Well, yesterday we showed you Ian Poulter's head cover. It even changes clothes just like he does. Gee, I thought that was Paul Creamer. I wasn't sure. And the bag as well. Poulter in pink today, and earlier he had a chance to talk with Roger Malpe, who wasn't wearing pink. Thank you, Dan, with Ian Poulter. Ian, uh, somewhere in England, is Rod Stewart rooting for you today? <laughs> I get that call an awful lot out here. Man, he looks like Rod Stewart. I don't know what that's all about, but um, I don't know whether he follows golf. Maybe he will. <laughs> What's it going to take for you to win today? You had a fine round yesterday. What do you think it will take today to win? I don't want to put a number down uh, of what I have to shoot. I just want to go and enjoy myself today, uh, relax, hit the ball as well as I hit it yesterday. Um, and just just see how that's see how that's lying coming down the stretch. I think uh, it will be in with a shout if I can just you know stay composed and just hit it like I did yesterday. You know, U.S. Opens uh, it's a funny old game. You can be three or four shots behind with a couple holes to play. Um, you know, you can make a couple of birdies. The guy in the league can make a couple of doubles real quick. So it's never over till it's over in U.S. Open golf. Thanks for your time and best of luck to you today. Thanks very much, Dan. All right, Roger. We'll <laughs> see about how. Well organized his hair is by the end of the day. Ian Poulter, well, you know, second to last group. You start like that, you get nothing to lose. <laughs> Third U.S. Open appearance for Poulter. I like he's colorful. It's great, uh, you know, stuff he comes up with. It's good. Continues out to the 12th. David Howell hit it over the green here at the par five. So the move by the USGA to move the tees up has. Everybody going for it that gets it out there in the fairway with a go for it, Johnny. This is a much different par five today. That was a heck of a shot right there. Maybe you guys think that was just an easy one, but he had to swing hard and just barely dump it onto the green. Over at the first second for Aaron Oberholzer, who has a share of the championship round. Best turned in on Friday with David Duvall, a 68. There it is. That's a heck of a shot. And he's in birdie range at the first hole to try and get it to plus six. I'll tell you, he is playing really good golf right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a good round today. Okay, another rundown of the final pairings here at 2.20. That's about 20 minutes from now. You've got Harrington and Furyk playing together for the second straight day. Both shot 74s, both at plus six. And then it's Mike Weir, the Masters champion, going with Steve Stricker, the 36-hole leader. That's in a half hour from now. And that'll be followed by Colin Montgomery and VJ Singh. Interesting pairing here, the man from Fiji with the three majors and Colin chasing his first one. He's within three strokes of the lead. And in that second to last pairing, more internationals here. Only three Americans again in the last six twosomes. Ogilvy from Australia, Ian Poulter, from England and in the final group another man from England 27 year old Kenneth Ferry playing with Phil Mickelson looking for his third straight major championship victory. Look at uh, some of the uh, scores since World War II highest winning scores to par in this championship. Well what about 1963 at the Country Club. You don't hear a lot about Julius Boros in the plus nine number that he won out the average winning score in that period was uh, about two under. All right, so 
We move on to the 2006 version. Oberholzer did not make the birdie at the first. That's a bit of a tricky putt right there. It just it looks like there's a brow to the right we talked about that influences that putt. You cannot see the break. So he sells for par out to the fourth and Jeff Sluman. And he's got a birdie try here at plus nine. This was just a moment ago. It's a good looking putt. Yeah. So some birdies to be had out to the long par three third Murph. And a good look at Freddie Couples tee shot now. 223 yards. Sets up for a nice high fade, doesn't it, Bob? You'd have liked this hole. The location is in the top right corner there. Wow, flew it all the way to the hole, almost bounced in. Right on the corner of the hole. And now here he is live for the birdie. Back down that same hill, and this yeah. is fast. That's what we've seen in all the fast putts this week, guys. Yeah. Over uh, respect them, don't they? Over respect, good word. That's the same as leaving it short and not wanting to putt for par coming back too far. Guys, stop the cart. Well, there's the Mickelson posse. Dave Pels and Rick Smith flanking him as he gets ready for his 3 o'clock tee time. Just about 45 minutes away from Mickelson's beginning to what he hopes is his first U.S. Open championship at Wingfoot, where the going has been rough. Welcome back to the U.S. Open, Rick Smith. Most to the front side. Light. Uh, we well, I think apologize for the technical difficulties there with Mark Rolfing trying to get a word with the uh, Mickelson's instructor Rick Smith. We'll try to clear it up. And maybe let you eavesdrop on the uh, last second uh, strategy that Mickelson's employing today. Johnny from a mental standpoint where do you put Mickelson right now. Obviously he knows he's playing the best golf of anybody in the world right now. I mean is that the, the mindset you want as you step on the first tee today. I think he's got to say hey um, I believe the best player in the world. I think I've played the best golf in the last um, eight months. Um, that's good. I'm the most prepared golfer in the championship. That's a bonus and I've got all these teachers here and uh, guys that have local knowledge and that's a plus. Okay. And what the guys you, around him, guys around him, he can't be too scared of. I mean, give me a break. I mean, Singh, he's got Singh and my, well, Singh, even Montgomery wouldn't be that concerned with it. Singh's probably the guy he'd be the most afraid of is three shots back and then Furyk, the next most afraid of who's four shots back. So that's a nice lead with so one round to go. So he's not too concerned about that guy. Well, Kenneth you know, Ferry. I mean, oh, Kenneth, I know. I know. Kenneth that's... Ferry, you would think would just be, you know, Fairy dust. Here is Henrik Stenson off the short par four sixth. Again, the whole location up front today and the different team ground. It's enticing everybody to go for it. And how about this? That is one straight tee shot. When you when you really think about it, hitting a ball that far and being able to almost hit the flag stick. Stenson's coming off a of birdie at the par five fifth, so a chance for a birdie eagle run here. And you can see that he made it. I'll tell you what, if I was Captain Lehman and I'm, I'm seeing these Europeans, I'm thinking, holy mackerel, we better get our team really going because these guys are getting better every single year, the Europeans are. Mm -hmm. They're getting more confidence year after year. A moment ago, Nick O'Hearn at the seventh. Nice He's got little, a good round going, Johnny. Two under. Nice little controlled swing. There's a bunch of birdie holes today compared to the other days. Look at this flag oh, stick. Oh, and O'Hearn would yeah. make that to I, pick up his third birdie in the first seven holes. I, I was shocked. I went through and around every hole today, and it was like six really easy hole locations. So it, it appears that things are really going to be spiced up as the guys, like as you mentioned, at plus five, plus six can really make a run. You can do it today. There's some there. Usually you have flag sticks always behind bunkers or in corners. Today you have a bunch of them sitting right on the front of the green with nothing in front of the green. All right, Jim Furyk uh, got a little out of sync yesterday, Johnny, after looking his usual solid sell for a while, but he's right there at plus six, four behind to begin. 
Yeah, he just goes about his work. He's a, he's the most methodical guy that you'd ever want to meet. He never changes cadence. Uh, he doesn't change his pre-shot routine. And uh, I haven't really seen him eat a health bar quite like that before, but. <laughs> just <laughs> grinding it up as we are ready for the announcement of the next pair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2.20 starting time from Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, the 2003 U.S. Open champion, Jim Furyk. Appears never to be flustered. And every time I watch him, Johnny, whether it gets into the latter stages of a major championship and he's over a putt or over a crucial shot, I, I don't get the same nervous feeling sometimes I get when you wa when I watch other players. He's just got that calming demeanor about him and the fire. Yeah, he just, I've never seen a guy, though, on the last day of a U.S. Open in contention still chewing on the bar when he's over the first drive. That's <laughs> what I mean. He's just in his own world here. Going three middle. Oh, left. They might be going a little left. He needs a good hop right now. Yeah, gets it. Ground slice. He had a low line drive. Climbs out of the rough. That makes it a birdie hole, really. The, the holes. From Dublin, Ireland, Margaret Harrington. Best finish in a major, major tie for fifth four times. But Padraig Harrington, I wonder how he's taken the triple bogey seven that he had to sleep on last night after the disaster at 18. Came into that 18th hole, two shots off the lead, but he's still right there. Powerful swing, big wide arc. That's turning left. And that is really sitting down. So Furyk gets a nice bounce out of the rough. Harrington is buried at the opening hole. Up ahead to the fifth. And Jeff Sluman with this very makeable putt for an eagle. Up the hill, not much break. Haven't seen any eagles yet today. Normal putt here for this week, right? Unbelievable, John. <laughs> the number of 20-foot putts we've seen left short. What a nice easy tap in birdie for Sluman. He just keeps going on and on. He's like the Energizer Bunny, this guy. And still playing a lot of golf at the age of 48, too. Plays a lot of tournaments. Drives the ball nice and straight. Reasonably good putter. Just keeps making money. Well, you look at the leaderboard, you have to think guys down there, at five over, six over, even possibly Johnny, seven over par. With yeah. a good round, we're seeing lots of birdies and uh, as you mentioned, some hole locations that'll yield to good shots. We'll be right back to the U.S. Open. Well, Harrington starts out today where he ended up yesterday in the last hole. And tried to get too much out of the hybrid club and ended up making that triple. We'll see what his strategy is going to be here. Got those tree limbs there, but he's, they're not, they're wispy. He's in that second primary cut, which is out of, outside the first cut. So this is deep five and a half, six inch stuff. He does not want to go on that cross bunker. That bunker's not a cross bunker, but the one that's between him and the hole. Dottie, you're right there, aren't you? No. Nope. So take a look at this shot right here. Not sure how thick it is right in this particular spot. He's very powerful. I think he's going to go between those two limbs. There's a lot of bad things going to happen right here, Dan. If this doesn't come out, you know, enough distance to get there, but he is just inside the heavy cut. There's right between the two limbs, perfectly placed that way. Oh, he made it. What a shot. A little better result than at 18 yesterday, that's for sure. Right below it. Let's take a look at this swing. He'll swing as hard on this as he does any tee shot, hands forward. See how he braces his right knee. Look at that left heel. He moves that left foot again. He has an interesting move in the rough. I've never seen that before. He starts in one spot, lifts it off the ground, puts it about an inch farther forward. He did that at 18, and Cole topped it or hit it fluffed. All right, Furick in the fairway after getting the good bounce. 165. 
good chance to get inside 10 feet. Because there's a funnel effect there, right and left of the hole. That's a beauty. It's above the hole, though, that makes it tough. He's looking at that like, darn it, it's above the hole. It'll be a fast little right to left or down the hill at one. This was a moment ago, Jose Maria Olathabal. His third shot at the par 5, 12. And this is another one of those hole locations uh, you got to be very careful on. If it goes a little left of the hole, look at this. In wow. for the eagle. Wow. I would say 12's playing a lot easier today. Well, that one there was just a great shot. He had to hit it low to run it up that bank. And he's, I don't know what he's telling his caddy, but it. Also a moment ago, remember the human highlight reel yesterday? Peter Hedblum of Sweden. This was his third at the second. He had the ace yesterday at three, had an eagle as well, and he holds it out for a birdie at the second to get the plus six. It's like a European tour highlight film. And we've been talking about how tough this golf course has been playing. Nevertheless, we have seen a lot of holdouts. It began on Thursday, Jay Haas in his third shot at the par four second where you just saw Headbloom hole it out from. One hopping in for Haas for the unlikely birdie. He just seemed to get more and more of him as the day went on. This was Couples from behind the tree there, his third at the par four eight. Few hops it in for Couples. And then Rory Sabatini at the short par four six in that deep rough, but his second was a thing of perfection. 66 yards with a lob wedge for Sabatini. Ernie Els. Actually, Olin Brown, before we get to Ernie, his third at 17. Olin Brown was the contender last year at Pinehurst in the U.S. Open. Things weren't really going well for him. And even despite getting that one, he's like, oh, that really, you know, it's been a tough day, but don't cheer too loud for me. I haven't been playing all that well. Ernie Els, though, this was the second with a seven iron, Johnny, from 185 yards. Yeah, he played this like a local member. Watch this, folks. Just throws it right of the hole. Looks pretty, you know, looks like it's okay, you know. It's a nice shot. You oh. said you like these the most because they just kind of. Yeah, the people start going, whoa. <laughs> the longer you get to admire it, the better it is when it drops. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's the way you're supposed to react. There were more highlights on Friday. So we go to yesterday to continue the amazing hole-out streaks. That's the way you want to look when you make it, not the Rory look and the, you know, the Olin look. This like. was Craig Barlow's second yesterday. 149 yards with an eight iron. Wow, that was perfect. Perfect. On his way to a plus two round of 72. And then at the par 4 11th, Scott Hand, 137 yards away with a pitching wedge. Do you remember ever having this many hole outs in any no. tournament? And that goes for any tournament. I'm talking about anywhere. just a tournament. That's what I'm saying. Much less a U.S. Open at Wingfoot. It's just been so odd. Well, he's still got more, right? Oh, yeah. We saved the best <laughs> for last. Remember Headlum? We just blasted out at the second. What a great looking golf swing this is. This is another one of those Adam Scott type of swings. Three iron, 234 yards. 40th ace in U.S. Open history. So, after looking at all those fireworks, what are we gonna see today in the final round? You can catch in progress video highlights and all sorts of other good stuff at usopen.com. That was exciting. Out at the first, Harrington has already missed his birdie attempt. This can be a pretty exciting start for Jim Furyk if he rolls this in for three to start. This is not an easy read. I'm telling you, I've, I studied that putt and I'm still not sure what it does. Should hook a little. Yeah, it's going to go right to left. Look at it, see it? It's, it's there like it is. There's your line on that putt. Yeah. It actually broke right and then came back left. Did you see that? That was a double breaker. That's a tough read. Furek moves it to plus five. He's within three. What a start. That is nice. Perfect drive. Pretty good second above the hole. 
great read. Relaxed start for Furick out to eight. Nick O'Hearn for a birdie. He's three under today. Wow. Goes to four under. Johnny, that's plus five. <laughs> that's in the tournament. Yeah, that's in the championship. You're right. This was a moment ago at the par 4 6, the tee shot for Jeff Sluman. Again, different tee today, 307 yards. Sluman with that short looking backswing. It's actually got a big radius to it, but that might be going right down the middle. We'll get there. It might be the. How about this? This how is Sluman. And he's creeping into the picture here. He's already got three birdies in the first five holes. He's lined up for an eagle there. Let's go to two, Gary. This just a moment ago, Dan. Man who opened with 78, came back with rounds of 69 and 70. His second shot here in. Oh, no. So Luke Donald will have that short putt to get to six over par. Fireworks, Gary. Unbelievable. Great stuff, Johnny. Great stuff. Well, we've seen some guys put themselves in early position with a different way this golf course has been playing. Earlier, we tried to get an interview with Rick Smith, but Mark Rolfing's equipment uh, was malfunctioning. So we've uh, gotten Roger Malpe over with a chance to talk to Rick Smith. And here's what uh, Rick had to say to Roger just a short time ago. Thank you, Dan, with uh, Rick Smith. And Rick, what happened yesterday? What, what, what turned the light on, so to speak, for Phil? What got him turned around? What, what discovery did he make? It was interesting because, uh, you know, on the fifth hole, all of a sudden he hits a big flare off to the left, which is not his release cut. And the minute he made that swing, Roger, it looked like the kind of the things that we've been working on a little bit, all of a sudden it's like it clicked and it's like, no, I don't need to do that. I need to do this. And he made the change and really he played very well from there in. And then he got into a great rhythm. And when he gets into a great rhythm, you know, you don't see him miss many fairways. And obviously that is so key today is Getting off to a good start. We got a little opposite wind. Number one's downwind for a change. You're going to see some different holes. The finishing holes are going to be tough going back into the wind. And you've got to be driving it in the fairway. And if he does, it's going to be tough to beat him because he's got so many shots, you know. So any adjustments today or just more of the we, same from yesterday's back nine? I wanted to have an emergency 18 after his back nine and just keep <laughs> playing. It. So we'll see if he can just pick up where he left off. I don't blame you. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Rod. Dan. Okay, Roger, about 25 minutes away from Mickelson and Kenneth Ferry in the final group. In the meantime, Sluman making a run here. This to get to plus five within three. Simple putt, just inside right or right center. Can't get any easier than this. Jeff Sluman has gone birdie, birdie, eagle. And his four, four under par in the first six holes. Smile, Jeff, it won't hurt. He knows he has 12 holes ahead of him. He'll go to the par three seventh. We'll go to the second. And Luke Donald short putt for birdie three. And very solid. Look out for this guy. He's at plus six. After the opening round of 78. So we go to four. Check in with Aaron Oberholzer. Moment ago at the fourth, his second. Tough start for him. Had the double bogey at the second to fall to plus nine. Hard the third and then that. What is it? The, the tide or the moon setting or the barometer or what's going on today? And you know, you get some they woke locations. Up the whole guys, field. guys hearing some roars around. They get a little confidence going. It's amazing. Yesterday was a little dull, but boy, today isn't. Well, there's a guy that sent his fair share of roars through Wingfoot this week. I wonder if he's hearing the roars by the other players making some noise and creeping closer to plus two. It's got to be somewhat of an uncomfortable feeling when you know that Wingfoot has given up some scores today. And we'll see how conservative one of golf's all-time aggressors will be today. Maybe pars aren't good enough. <laughs> right back in a moment. Looks pretty darn good, doesn't it, Dan? Pretty smooth. Yeah, he needs a better start than yesterday. He's coming up in about 20 minutes. In the meantime, we catch up with the action out at four. Overholzer for birdie. And after rattling it off the stick, Overholzer moves back to plus eight. And 
we go back to the tee at the par four first. This is the 2.40 starting time from Glasgow, Scotland, Colin Montgomery. And a big day for the man from Scotland seeking his first major win in 58 starts, four times a runner up in major championships and turning 43 years old next Friday, Johnny. He said it all week long. I just don't know how many more of these chances I'm gonna have. Well, he just started off yesterday just missing every fairway. And I mean, for him, that's not his game. He's already hearing it from behind him there a little bit. Yeah, he's got super sonic ears. <laughs> Needs a good, nice cut down the left side. I think he likes it. He should. That's a good start, Monty. Maybe you got those bad holes out of the way the first four yesterday. And from Fiji, Vijay Singh. Vijay already working up a sweat. Eight career U.S. Open rounds in the 60s, four in the final round, looking for his fourth major title. A couple of PGA championships, one at the Masters, one last week for his first victory in 10 months. And by the way, folks, it is scalding hot right now. I mean, really hot out there. See if it hangs in there. That's a good shot, I think. Oh, boy, it took a hard bounce. That is out there a mile. Just on the intermediate cut and way down there for Singh. Yeah, that's a good hit. Who will be inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame this October. Was elected in 05, but had a scheduling conflict. All right, here's Monty, his second shot on one. 149 yards away, hoping for a good start. Just dead center in the green, that whole location. See, he hits that wave and it shoots straight right. That's that's a heck of a shot underneath the hole. That should be birdie. And he does have the look of a man that's going to start much differently than he did yesterday. And over at the ninth, Nick O'Hearn drove it in the rough, punched out to this point. So the third. Not an easy hole location to get to with a short iron. You got to watch out for the spin. Again, O'Hearn, one of those players that really has it going. And he goes off the stick here. Four under par. He'll have that for par. Yeah, a little unlucky. That would have been stiff, I think. Back to the first. BJ Singh on the intermediate cut with his second from just 126. Can you see that flag stick left to right? And just a smooth, smooth wedge. And that was not a good shot. That, would, that should have been inside 10 feet. Monty's inside of five feet at the first hole. Looking for a birdie start. Put a little more pressure on the final groups there. And we'll be right back to Wingfoot after this. BJ Singh for his birdie at the opening hole. Slow spot on the course. The odds of getting that to the hole is about one in 30 this week, it seems to be, on huh, Dan? Just no one has been able to get it there. Monty's got an upcoming birdie putt there at the first, but just a couple of groups left to be introduced. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 2.50 starting time from Woburn, England. Ian Poulter, play away, please. Poulter in pink today. Improving every day, 74, 71, 70. He's never had a top 10 in a major championship and really an accomplished player, especially overseas, but known here mostly, Johnny, for the outlandish outfits and the spiky hair. If he can put the game together in a U.S. Open today, they'll be talking more about his game. Important tee shot with the driver. That's a quick pull left. <laughs> Hit it into the gallery. Man, that was fast. I mean, we're talking really fast. The only thing good is and it from could from Melbourne, be Australia, fine. Jeff Ogilvy. Oh, 
eight different nationalities in the last six groups, including the lone Australian here, Jeff Ogilvie, who grew up idolizing Greg Norman. He'd like to see more major championships come the Aussies way, and he can start today. Long hitting, big, big follow through. Shooting. High cut headed up the right side. Nice shot. That's a long ways out there. Shooting 71, 70, 72. Very consistent by Ogilvy. And while Poulter and Ogilvy were teeing off, this was Monty's birdie start try, and he just isn't able to get it down. Boy, that's a great opportunity lost. That hurts. Played the hole perfectly except for the putt. Up ahead to seven, Sluman trying to continue his amazing run. This was his birdie try a moment ago. That's a hard putt to read here. He had a red right. Three birdies and an eagle in the first six holes. Par there, he stays at plus five, three back over to three. And Jim Furyk on the tee with a five iron. Just a moment ago, needs to pop this pretty good to get it back there. Pretty small target, huh, Bob? It's downwind slightly. Actually landed on a good mound there and gave it a thrust forward, but it catches the slope. And I mean, can you, can you get it closer? Oh, here's Phil Mickelson <laughs> coming up. Time, huh, Dan? Today, just been the routine for him. Did he get here over two hours ago? Got here at 11:30 local time, the tea time at three o'clock. So two and a half hours before the tea time, and he's still got about five minutes here until he goes off. That's yeah, got to be a good feeling. He's really got the people behind him. And this is the second Ford shirt he's had on today. He started with a white one. Now he's got a yellow. Now it's pretty much toast already. Mickelson winning his three previous majors, all of them with the lead. And we'll get to this final group in just a minute. In the meantime, let's check up on some golf. Remember, O'Hearn banging the stick on nine has this for par. Did he hit it? It's pretty quick. That's a little unfortunate. His first bogey, and now after Mickelson's reception, let's hear what it's like for Kenneth Ferry. Well, it's a little different. Yeah, that's uh, like one smattering. Well, he's gone in to maybe get some water before he heads out. Again, it is a very, very hot day. Temperature expected to soar into the mid-90s. Over to three. And Jim Furyk for birdie. Have not seen one player get it to the hole. That is a slow putt up there. Very confusing putt today. Good, tr good try though, huh? Shows you that he's understanding these greens, Johnny. Well, Phil Mickelson and Kenneth Ferry getting ready to go, and we'll be back. And among those already out on the course, Jeff Sluman, Nick O'Hearn, Luke Donald, and Jim Furyk are among those who have improved their positions in the early going. And now to the final pairing, the co-leaders, the fan favorite, ranked number two in the world, Phil Mickelson, and the unknown, ranked number 102, Kenneth Ferry. Here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 3 o'clock starting time from Ashington, England, Kenneth Ferry. Play away, please. <laughs> Kenneth Ferry about to find out how he's gonna perform in this pressure cooker. You have to go back to 1913, 93 years ago to find the last man to win this championship in his first try. That was Francis Wimet. What an important shot this is for his confidence. Oh, Johnny, this is perfect. Boy, that is big for his confidence, I'll tell you that. Yeah. 
and from Rancho Santa Fe, California, Phil Mickelson. Such stark contrast to Ferry and what he's done. This guy's trying to become just the sixth golfer to win the Masters, the U.S. Open in the same year, trying to put himself in position to win four of these in a row. He's going with the release fade. It's unusual for Phil to back away. Ball headed right. That is the shot that was really killing him on the front nine yesterday. But he's right there where all the gallery's been tramping him down. He's probably just fine. Might be perfect. Benefit from all the flocks of people that have been chasing him around all week, trampling that stuff down. Well, there's the lie as they circle around it. Not bad at all. That's a good break right there. I'm not even sure he has a tree in his way. So everybody off here in this 106 U.S. Open. And Kenneth Ferry, you're going to see all day long, he's kind of a fidgety guy. We've been documenting him on the first tee, kind of the mannerisms and facial expressions that he's been going through, getting ready for the biggest day of his career. He's a good guy, though, I think. You know that he's, he reminds me of Craig Stadler. He's just... He just real. I mean, he just says what he thinks, and he gets angry, but he's 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 cool. That smile came after he uh, split the fairway out there. So a good start for Kenneth Ferry, 27 years old, from Ashington, England, just outside of Newcastle. That's in the northeast part of that country. So off they go. We go to two. And VJ Singh's third shot. Cut just five paces over that bunker. Beautifully done. So Singh will have no trouble saving par. Lane at five over. We go over to six. A moment ago, this was Adam Scott who drove it to this point. Players have been tearing up this short par four today with that whole location up front, but oh. still a birdie for Adam Scott, who's got three in a row, and he's moved it to plus seven over at the first. Dottie, this is Ian Poulter for par. That's that slow putt we talked about. Well, he pitched to that point from nearly the second tee. Hit a dart quick across the green and uh, was actually fortunate to have that for par. Nightmare start, huh? A very nervous start. He's working that gum real hard. Well, Ogilvy has a birdie attempt here to tie for the lead, Dottie. He does, and it'll be a fairly quick. I don't think it's crazy quick, though, Johnny. He's actually you know, putting back into the wind. And uh, you know, as, as, as uh, tight as these greens are, I think that'll help just a little bit. Yeah, it's not out of control fast. No. It's just got some crazy breaks in this putt. I think, is it a double break or just mows less left all the way? This might be triple. <laughs> it's just going to wiggle the whole way down. Watch it shoot left now off this little brow. And then it might flatten out. I don't think he's going to get there. Everybody leaves these quick putts short. It's just you can guarantee it almost this week. Over respecting him, Dottie. Before Poulter's bogey putt here, MetLife Blimp Snoopy one up there in the blue skies over Mamaroneck, providing our coverage of this championship. Again, the hottest day of the championship so far by a long ways. Earlier in the week, temperatures in the high 70s and 80s and kind of breezes that kind of cooled you off today. It's pretty sweltering out there. I just love that look after four or five days of a championship golf, all the bare spots and the worn spots and the brownish color on the green. All right, Poulter <laughs> hoping to lose just one here at the first. This goes right at the hole. Okay, so Poulter quickly drops to plus six. Well, we've never had anybody win the United States Open in pink. I know that. <laughs> All pink. <laughs> that would be a first. Over the fourth second for Furick from the intermediate cut. Nice shot, yeah. All right, 
Furyk with a couple of pars since that opening birdie at the first. And well, let's get a closer look at this opener, Johnny. Yeah, let's let's do that. 450 yards was playing the hardest hole in the golf course today. It's a uh, one third of a shot easier than other days because the wind is switched. We saw that a little earlier. You need to hit it inside this 24 yard fairway, but the green is the big issue. Guys are hitting underneath the hole, respecting that, but not getting the putts to the hole. You have to be careful to go long left. Phil could do that with the lie that he's got in the tree in the way. And you can see how the green has basically three valleys. You got one in the middle and two on the outside. So this is a this is a tough shot here with that limb, I think, in play. Is it not? It is a tough shot, Johnny. 157 yards to the hole. He has to go under uh, limbs of a tree ahead of him some 20, 25 yards. He can either play straight at the hole, hitting it very, very low, or he could elect to play uh, left to right draw and uh, maybe try to carry it over the bunker uh, short of the green and try to play it that way. I would think he would take the straight line. You do. I was, think that, I was thinking with a short iron, it's a clean enough lie to play to draw, but of course if it doesn't draw, then you're in big trouble. Exactly. Big so trouble. It's just a matter of... Uh, this is a bad spot right here, isn't it? Yeah, not a good spot at all. It could have been worse, though. That Easily could have been worse. The bunker that's, uh, you know, well, well short of the green is really a, a problem here, isn't it, if he tries to punch it low, isn't, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, he does have a direct line again to the flagstick, but he would have to keep the shot quite low. Uh, or sometimes he could take something out uh, with more loft and try to hoist it way up in the air, but uh, maybe aim at the very, very left side of the green, but uh, I, I just don't know how feasible that is either. Well, you can tell he's switching clubs a lot. Let's see if he's going to go with the high one. He's sort of acting like with this practice swing that he's going up. Maybe up and hooking. That's what he's doing. Get it to stop. Let's see if he gets on the right ridge. That's good break that he got inside the right valley that we're talking about. That was a foot from going to the left side of the valley, and that would have been a crazy putt. It'll be a quick one to judge upcoming, but that was a good shot, that wasn't was it? Dan? Excellent shot. We've seen it time and time again. Mickelson extricating himself from positions that are tough to get out of, but that is one of the main reasons why he's in the position he's in. Ferry, what does he down, have please. Left? Oh, his caddy's fired up. Yeah. 150 left of the hole for Ferry. He's gonna have to get used to that. Of course, they're uh, you know, the galleries are moving around, the ropes are being replaced and things like that. But a good birdie opportunity, huh, Raj? It is. He's got a very good look at the green, or at the hole right in the center. Shot low and a little right of the hole. Uh, that wasn't his best. Might not have been hit real solid, John. No. That's going to maybe feed back to the front third of the green, which it is doing, picking up speed. So that uh, I'm sure he is not happy with that shot. So we're going to see a couple of putts from the front portion and the back portion. You'll get a lot of reactions out of this man today. It'll be like a highlight film of uh, facial expressions. Yeah, the media really tried to kind of push him yesterday and ask him, well, what was the last time? Where's your worst club throwing incident? He said, well, wait a minute. I'm in the final group of the U.S. Open. You know, I've had a temper in the past, but I've got it behind me now. Furyk now at the fourth for birdie. Yeah, I like that he told him I'm not entering that basically is what mm -hmm. he's saying. And they kind of kept pushing him. He said, that's enough to three. And the swing of Colin Montgomery, a hole that he double bogeyed yesterday, just just a moment ago. Ah, uh, that's better. Stricker just bogeyed the hole in the group ahead. And that'll collect down that same position where we saw Jim Furyk earlier. Monty, a horrible start yesterday, three bogeys and a double. Field here after the big U.S. Open prize tonight. The premier of treasure hunters is finally here. Follow the clues, crack the codes, find the treasure. It's TV's smartest adventure. It premieres tonight at 8, 7 central on NBC. Sounds a little bit like what these guys are trying to do. Crack the wing foot code, find the major championship, second of the season in golf. Mickelson trying to go two for two and three in a row. Slooming 
who went low back in 1988, Johnny, at the PGA Championship to capture his only major. 65, yeah, and, and he's on pace to, well, he just, I think, might have just bogeyed. I'm not sure. I didn't hear if he did. Yep, he that did. is the latest report. He just bogeyed the eighth, but he he's was, still three under today. Yeah, he was four under and uh, going to the eighth hole with the bogey there. Look at this stance. Like okay. VJ in a bad spot here, Mark Rolfing. To Murph. You are absolutely correct, Murph. It is a very difficult lie. He's going to have one foot in the bunker, and I think he's going to have to keep the right foot out. Good bend in the knees. Try to stay nice and level now. What a tough hole on Murph. Only one birdie uh, counting yesterday and today. None today, just a hole in one. That's a good shot from there. Back to one. Kenneth Ferry, first stroke with a putter today. That's the putt that you cannot get to the hole. That's all there is to it. He laughs. Ferry chose to not try and qualify last year at the U.S. Open at Pinehurst. Didn't think his game was ready for the test. Look how his putting has improved this week as compared to the 2006 European Tour stat. This is a guy, although he has two European wins, Johnny, he has not been on fire coming into this championship by any stretch. No top tens this year, right? Correct. Well, let's go to two. And Jeff Ogilvie getting ready for his second shot, Dottie. They played a beautiful three wood to this point. Wind has definitely picked up from behind. something in very high and very softly but that is well left of the target. It's not a very good shot with that short a club. Back to one. Let's see how Mickelson deals with this long one down the hill. Big breaker to the left here. He could go the other way too. Yeah, he could have if he really wanted to. And again, uh, same thing, Roger. That's not an easy second putt, I can tell you that, especially with the four starts he's had the first three holes of this week in four over to three. Well, let's see if Monty can get the ball up the hill. No. No birdies, Bob. Tough hole to get no to. No birdies. One birdie yesterday. Back to one. A couple of nervous par putts for both of these guys, Raj. Well, it's a nervous time, certainly, of the two. I think Ferry's uh, is probably the simplest, being that it's uh, uphill. Pretty straight, too, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think there's much breaking it if he hits it firm, John Lee. Johnny. He's got a Superman belt folks on. That might help. It says he's had it for about a year and a half. Has offered no clue as to exactly why he's got it. He says, I just picked it up. Want to be different. Yeah, this would be impressive. This. It stayed down on it, never moved his head, and uh, made a good stroke, Roger. That's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's a good start. Back over to three. And VJ now for his par. Oh, boy. That's a good par after that shot ended up where it did. Well, he's a man of patience. He'll handle it. Back to one. And Mickelson to stay tied with Ferry at plus two for the lead. Can you see that break very well from there, Roger? Well, it's kind of a nasty little break, I think, to the left down here. And you got to commit to the speed, don't you? Yes, you do. You have to commit to your stroke 100% here. Or you could uh, face a lengthy third putt. Number two in putting this week. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Double the nervous par putts out of the way for Ferry and Mickelson. They remain at plus two. That's a guarantee he's feeling pretty good about that. Uh, not about the drive, but about the four. So the huge gallery moves over to the 453 yard par four second. They're not real fired up about Ferry, but watch when Nicholson comes through here. I don't know, 
that, Johnny. If I'm if I'm Kenneth Thury, that kind of fires me up a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how he's going to react, but yeah, that's true. Over to two. And up at the green, Jeff Ogilvy, lengthy putt for Verdi. Verdi. Yeah, pretty hard slider right across the face of the green. So we'll have a couple of feet left for par. Three over, we go back to the tee. A little slight dog leg to the right. 453-yard par four. They call it elm because of the huge elm tree that sits about six feet off the left side of the green. Uh-oh. Oh, oh that's going left. Too good there. Well, no, it certainly isn't. They took care of that glove. <laughs> he just destroyed that glove. Just ripped it right off his hand. Said, "Thank you very much, Duck Hook." Just threw it in the trash can, I think, Johnny. Yes, Don't want did. that one. <laughs> yes, he did. He just ripped it off. Wow, that's a little early to be ripping gloves apart, Roger. Yeah, that might have been because maybe his hand had been sweating and it was wet, and, and a little frustration, <laughs> a little anger. Just playing the straight one, Gary. Get the hole! Yeah, it's going a bit to the right here. Well, he's going to find the primary cut of rough. He's bogeyed this hole two of the first three rounds, so. All right, so Mickelson, 0 for 2 in the fairway department, able to scramble for his par at the opening hole to stay tied with Ferry. Ferry's got his own problems here at the second. Well, there's two magnificent 18-hole golf courses here. This is next to the 16 on the west course. On the east course, a little guy playing in the bunker on Father's Day. What golf championship? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we understand that that 94 degrees is just one below the all-time record high here of 95, so it is a hot one on the 18th of June here. And not much wind to cool things off as we head back out to the third. And Jeff Ogilvy ready to play his third here. Johnny, I, I really like this young man today. I think he's been playing very well and not quite capitalizing. He has the same shot every time, same swing. There's no three quarters, there's no stingers, there's no cuts. He does every shot, it's like a machine, same swing. He'll run up into the mound and collect back. That's going to roll down that hill, isn't it? Yeah, for that same putt that we've been watching. It's hard to believe, no birdies. And just a moment ago at the second, Kenneth Ferry just pitching the ball down the fairway. It's real moist there in the shade, isn't it, on that side? And now live, Mickelson second. 117, not a good lie at all, just trying to get it onto the left side of the green, and that is all he could possibly hope for. That's a heck of a shot. At yes, a it is. Very small opening there between the bunkers in front of that green, only some eight or nine yards wide, so wonderful control. He's getting away with wayward tee shots. Up to the fourth. B.J. Singh second at plus five, three behind from 152. After a terrific tee shot, did he tug that a little bit? Let's see if he's playing right. a cut. Yeah, a little bit of a pull, but that's a good shot. Singh gets the putter going today. He had a nice putt at three to save par. He should be a factor. Back over to two. And Kenneth Ferry with his third. 114 left, Gary. Good angle. Should be just a good full sandwich. Well, he doesn't like this one either, Roger. No, it's left of the hole. Johnny, some pretty strong reactions very early in the round from this young man. Yeah, that could be uh, his way of showing he's nervous by not being very patient. Up at the par five fifth, Jim Furyk with his third. Been in four bunkers this week and has yet to get the ball up and down, but uh, they'll have a good chance there for Bertie. Back at the second. The fans are loving Phil.
move over to the fifth. Furick for birdie. Chance to get within two. Pretty easy putt, isn't it, Gary? Johnny, very straight from here, just uh, right up the hill. Plus five. Two back. Three back, I mean. Yeah, makes this be just two behind. Okay, nicely done. Good up and down birdie for Furick. And who knows how to win this championship is off to a great start. He's got a good birdie hole coming up. Short par four sixth. May not have the length to drive it on the green, but certainly can get close. Back to the fourth. Colin Montgomery to get to that plus four number and join Furick. And yeah. Monty's got a good pace on it. One under on the day, two behind. And the man he's playing with can join him at that number. VJ Singh's got a birdie putt upcoming. Back to two. Where the leader Mickelson has a lengthy putt for birdie. Uphill breaking to his right. Been a tough putt to hit firmly enough. Yeah, Roger, a lot of people short. leaving this short. That's way short. To four. And this is all VJ has left, Gary. Should turn just a little right up there. Oh, yeah, one pretty strong. So an opportunity wasted there by VJ. Four pars in a row for the Fijian. Still just three back. In the meantime, the majorless Scott moves to within two. Look at his early par start. It's got a par five coming up. We go over to the second again. And the lengthy par putt for Kenneth Ferry. Well, a little different angle, but similar in that it's uh, uphill slow putt and moving to his right. He's been putting well. He's sixth in putting this week. Got a chance. Got this? a chance. About that par. Twenty-seven-year-old Englishman says, "Yeah, I can make a putt when it counts." <laughs> just so much energy going Phil's way. Roger, do you sense anything? Anybody pulling for Ferry out there? There are some. They have, they have been very polite. <laughs> they haven't been many, but they've been very courteous. Important putt for Mickelson. Uh, looked like he had uh, an advantage on the hole, and now if he misses this, he'll trail Ferry by one. Oh, another clutch putt for Mickelson. He was saying earlier that uh, all the preparation he's done here at Wingfoot was to figure out ways to avoid making bogeys. Well, they look like bogeys. He's just not making them up. <laughs> that's exactly right. But that's what he said. That's what he spent all the time on here was trying to figure out a way to uh, not make the bogeys. Up to 18. Ernie Els finishing out here just on the edge. This for a birdie three. Very slow putt. He hits it. And he hits Alice it. Finishes up in style. The two-time U.S. Open champion. Final round, two over 72, plus 13 for the championship. It's pretty good playing, though. You know, those scores are all nice, nice scores. Ernie's still looking for that break confidence. Out, yeah, he's not, he hasn't broken out. He's just playing okay golf. Back to three. Ogilvy now for birdie. Just got to watch Ian Poulter's ball run right up by the hole. I don't know what happened there. That's, that's terrible. That's six feet, seven feet short. Moment ago, Peter Headbloom for birdie. Pulled one out at the second earlier for his other birdie. And adds a another one here to get to plus six. He's within four. Back to three. And Ogilvy now. Good par putt that, Daddy. Yeah, Murphy looked a little tentative to that point. All uh, all three. Long putts he'd had attempts at. Huh. 
Well, there are certain places you can put the ball on these greens, certainly when tentative comes into play, but that wasn't one of them uphill. Well, Mickelson has been scrambling his way around this uh, difficult golf course. He, of course, is one of the two masters, the PGA, but what does he think about playing in this championship year after year? Every year, one time a year, we get tested like this. And, and I love it. I love being tested at the highest level of the most difficult and sometimes ridiculous golf course setups we'll ever see. But I love it because I get to find out where my game's at, where my head's at, and it really challenged me as a player. Johnny was Jack Nicholas he used to say he used to love to walk into the locker room and hear all the guys griping all oh, the rough too deep. How do you get out of it? Check those guys off the list and Mickelson has embraced it. Over to three. And for his tee shot on the way. That's with the five iron wind helping and it's turning left. It's OK, I think. It's a little hot. That's a long five iron. Might catch the hill and go right back where we just saw Ogilvy and Poulter. It rolled all the way back down and took a little different angle, so it's just in the fringe. It's fine. What's that wind doing, guys? What's it's that? helping here, John. It's helping in from left to right some, but mostly helping. You think that was a long five? This is a six. Pretty good looking shot here. Just left of the hole. Beautiful shot to get it up onto the same level as the hole location. So Mickelson with a couple of scrambling pars to begin. Gets the green in regulation at the third. Kenneth Ferry continues to go through his gyrations but he has hung in there with the world's number two ranked player so far the nice save there at the second Mickelson eyeing his third straight major title has missed the first two fairways but holding steady himself at plus two they remain tied Welcome back. Kenneth Ferry's birdie putt on the move here. Up the hill, well judged for speed. Well, this was a little while ago. Mike Weir and his long birdie try at the fourth. Weir started off par and bogey and then par and rattled that one in at the fourth. Came to the next hole, the par five fifth, had a chance for back-to-back -back birdies. Pretty easy putt here. And the Masters champion burned the edge, so he stayed at plus six, four behind. How bad does he want it? And we go out to the fifth. And Colin Montgomery going for the green and two here at the short par five. He's got 239 up the hill. Aiming well left, trying to play a big high cut. doesn't fade. So he'll have a lengthy bunker shot for his third. We go back to three. And Phil Mickelson for a birdie attempt to take the lead. There's not going to get there. All the homework. Very surprising to see that. Leave it that far short. Back to four. You look at that whole location. Jeff Ogilvy is next, Dottie, within one of the lead. Well, 139 yards. Yeah, and the ball is sitting left. down just a little bit. What wind there is yeah. out of his left. Ogilvy 28th at Pinehurst last year and said before that, I didn't really think this would be my kind of championship. I gained some confidence from it. 
You know, Johnny, I think he had a really good uh, attitude about this whole thing. He felt like this whole week was about damage control and just being really, really quiet with himself. Well, he hits a lot of good shots. Look at that one. About the only bad news for Ogilvy today is that his Australian team lost to Brazil two to nothing in the World Cup. So maybe he can bring one home for Australia today. This was Jim Furyk's second tee shot at the short par four six. Not a good spot over in the deepest rough on the course. That rough there is really tough. As you can see, he tried to hit a normal pitch shot and it went halfway. Back to three. Then Ferry to finish up now. Hard putt. He's sending them in there with some good speed. Back to six. So now Furyk with his third. Furyk with two birdies in the first five holes. To get within the couple there at plus four. USJ got pretty creative here. You know, normally this hole plays 321. And today it is playing 307s downhill. So guys are being tempted, even Jim Furyk, the untemptable. Got tempted. <laughs> Three eagles on number six so far. This doesn't have much break, but it's slow. <laughs> Through the fringe, it got enough speed on it almost. So it's going to be a four for Furick, who escapes the rough at six to four and ferry. Forward to 69 yard par four. Another good looking tee shot here. Right in the center. Let's take a look at this hole called Sound View, which was the most difficult one back in the 84 US Open. Well, you can see it from here, 469. It's got a little right to left slope. You saw Ferry's ball just trickle left, 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 left. You gotta, these bunkers are really not in play. The guys drive it where we are right now, and they're going in with, you know, six, seven, eight, nine irons to this green. And uh, it's not the trickiest green in the world, but there is a little tiny knob that's just six feet right of the hole and short. So you're better off left of the hole. Nicholson looking for his first fairway. It's not going to come here at the fourth. That's found the first primary cut. He's making it hard for himself, real hard for himself, Roger, by hitting these bad drives. Up ahead of the par five fifth. B.J. Singh's third a moment ago from 57 yards. Got to carry it over a little shelf, and he gets it on the proper level. B.J. will have an uphill birdie putt left. So a moment ago, Montgomery with his third. Oh, it looked like he was trying to play a fat runner, Johnny. Not much of a follow through there. And yeah, he just quit on it. Yeah, that's uh, not all that great. No, that was an easy bunker shot, actually. All right, now live. They both have easy putts, though, right? Yeah, once you get it on the proper level here on this little shelf, Mark Rocking, there's not a lot of break around the hole. No, there isn't. Uh, BJ's is a little bit uphill, obviously, and into the wind, so it'll be kind of slow. Boy, if you take a look at Colin Montgomery, Gary, what a difference a day makes, because yesterday at this point he was five over par. Now he has hit every fairway and every green. Well, he said it well in the interview uh, when you first got here today with Roger Malt. The, uh, the finish gave him some momentum coming into today. Wouldn't you guys think if uh, VJ had a good week putting, he would have won this? No doubt about it. He hasn't really putted well at all. Well, he hasn't, and uh, he's certainly still not out of it, Johnny. No, he that's to get I mean, to four over right win. here. Yeah. This putt's a little bit tricky here. It actually wants to move left, and uh, a lot of the players have not seen that. Not a lot, but it will go a little left. Well, he played it, and played it too much. Well, it is such a rarity to win a tournament and then go into a major championship and take that as well. That's a short list of players, although 
Mickelson pulled it off earlier this year. He won the Bell South and outside of Atlanta by 13 shots and went on to win his second Masters, but it's never been done in this championship, the U.S. Open. And VJ Singh, the winner at Westchester last week, picking up his first win in almost a year. Man. A moment ago, this was Harrington at the sixth. After six pars in a row, Harrington hanging in a plus six. So that was a nice save for Harrington to stay four behind, back to five. Montgomery for birdie. Five feels like a bogey, doesn't it, guys? Huh, Mark? Well, it sure does. VJ made the mistake of driving the ball in the fairway bunker. This is the hole on the golf course that you just have to make birdie to feel good about it, Gary. Well, you do, Johnny. It's uh, been the easiest throughout this championship. Stroke average today is uh, just over 4.5. So there's pressure when you have a putt like this. Huh? You felt that pressure like, boy, I better make this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know there aren't that many birdie holes on this golf course. Looks to me like it may want to turn just a little right here. It will mark just a little. A lot of players have overread this putt. Missed it left. Good stroke. So Montgomery moves it to three over par. Now just one shot off the lead. Back to four. Mickelson after missing yet another fairway. Roger, what's he got left? Well, just stayed in the first cut of primary rough and has drawn a very good lie. Uh, has 154 yards left to the hole. There are some overhanging trees on the right uh, that really aren't a terrific issue, but he is going to have to take note of them. That's what makes Wingfoot, this Tulane has designed so good. The use of the trees, it just kind of tees you overhang. Well, a number of holes. He is really could be over par right now for the day, and he's probably going to have to be careful not to go long here, though. It's going to be tough getting spin on this ball, John. This ball going a little bit left. Okay. Pretty lucky hop there. Kind of going his way right now. Yeah. Sort of a birthday week, huh? Yep, turn 36 on Friday. And now, Kenneth Ferry, Roger. 149. It's that old saying, huh, Roger? The harder you practice, the luckier you get. Yeah, huh? yeah that's right. No one that's put more, saying, wasn't it? Yeah, no one put in more time than Mickelson here at Wingfoot. With the exception of the first hole, he's had a pretty right, solid man. start. This is a pretty good looking shot here if it'll get up. Oh, that gets a little hop over the knob there, but it might stay. Uh, not his best shot, but he's he's hanging in there, Roger. In contrast to Mickelson, who we've talked about had all that pre-championship practice, Kenneth Ferry flew in on Monday with his trusty caddy. He got to work, and here he is with Mr. Mickelson. Oh man, that was a good bounce. Yeah, another good one for Mickelson. He has not hit a fairway today, yet he's not lost a stroke to par. Four for four in greens in regulation. <laughs> Kenneth Ferry, long birdie try at the fourth. Likes, likes to go a little left at the hole. And he did not see that break, obviously. And he got it, you know, he's got to get, he's going to get worn out if he keeps having to make these longer par putts, Roger. In the meantime, Mickelson gets a really good bounce and knew it after he hit his approach to the fourth. Looks over Bones as if to say, this might be my, our day. So he's got a birdie try here. How realistic is it, Raj? Very realistic. There's not much. Uh break in this butt that I can see and it is uphill slightly. It might what, what might be right center or inside right or something. I, about it, not all John. I just don't see a lot in it.
has the lead by himself. For the first time in this championship. Moment ago, this was Steve Stricker at the sixth. He had a sluggish start with two bogeys in the first three holes. Coming off a birdie at the fifth to get the plus six. And then his second at the short par four dunks it. So Stricker sends a little surge back to Madison, Wisconsin with that one. That was nice. He's within three of Mickelson, and now Kenneth Ferry to stay within one. <laughs> Got to hand it to him. Yep, solid four pars in a row for Ferry, but Mickelson, who has yet to hit a fairway, but as it all the greens in regulation, gets his first birdie and takes the lead. At the seventh, Furyk to stay within three. He had a good putt, but it didn't break much. Might have been a misread. So he drops to plus five. Still one under today. the sixth Monty's gonna lay it up here on the short par four you definitely need to hit the fairway if you're gonna hit a short iron and he has not done that has he no that is a big miss huge miss back a hole at the fifth Mickelson on the tee at the dog leg left par five 515 yards so reaching the green in two is not an issue you'd like to shape the ball a little bit from right to left to kind of hold it into the hillside as the fairway slopes from players left to right. He hasn't birdied a par five this week. He hasn't hit a fairway yet today. This ball starts down the right hand side is cutting some. Well, that's going to find the fairway bunker Roger. That's a bad spot for you're not yeah, going to get on the green and two from I there. I don't are you? think so uh, unless you get very fortunate the lip on that bunker is pretty high. That bunker was repositioned in some of the changes they made here. Look they at moved that. it farther out. That bunker is the S bunker Superman here. All right, ferry next. This turning right to left. This is beautiful. Another beautiful drive. Should funnel a little to the right, be right in the center of the fairway. Easily can reach the green in two from there. He hit a heck of a shot yesterday, didn't he? He did. Hit it in there about uh, two feet. Made eagle as so we go up to six. And Monty's in the thick stuff. Yeah. And he is way down in the thick stuff. 103 yards. And this will take every ounce of energy to get it down to that green. That's an amazing offline layup shot with an iron, isn't it? I remember yesterday we saw that offline shot at the third. Just chopping it up. And Mark, that's going to end up right next to VJ's tee shot. That went up against the collar of the did it thick get rough? It looked like. Is it clear from the collar? Or? There it is. It's going to be up against the collar. It'd be okay for a left-handed player, but a little difficult for a right-handed player. And then VJ is by the little green flag. Is that right? Yeah, he drove it 25 feet from the hole. This is a hole to get a birdie on or more. Back at the fifth, which starts a pretty good run of opportunities here at Wingfoot. Jeff Ogilvy's third. Dan, he drove it uh, in the rough. Decided to lay up. Pitches it up underneath the hole, but uh, for his length, not taking advantage of the par five by driving it in the fairway. This stretch, uh, Gary, five, six, and seven, three of the four easiest holes on the golf course. And Monty looking over his third here, trying to get it up and down and remain at plus three, coming off the strength of two birdies, which have put him in a position to pick up the elusive major. It's a huge story, really. For, I mean, you know, Monty's been a phenomenal player through his career, and then he's been in a little bit in the doldrums for a couple of years, but... Uh, Best European finishes are Johnny, since the last win by Tony Jacklin in yeah. 1970. They've been knocking on the door, led by Monty at Oakmont in that playoff, eventually won by Ernie Els, and then in 
97 a congressional in the U.S. Open. It's definitely a knock knock knocking on heaven's door but not quite getting in. And Monty thought he but you know the best chances came in the mid 90s where he said he really felt the pressure and said that he just didn't he wasn't able to handle it all and he says coming in now in his 40s and the spotlight's not on him he's in a much more comfortable position more comfortable with that. OK Mark. Well, the hosel of the club needs to avoid the rough. That's the issue. I think he might actually get the toe down a little more than normal here. You sense that's a good looking shot. You sense the people really pulling for Monty, uh, Mark. Not sure you can hear that with the noise. We can hear him out there applauding that shot. It's going to be a Monty par okay. saver. Yep. Oh, that's a bad break to five. Well, Nicholson's ball, Roger, uh, right up one of these finger of the bunker. Yes, right up near the lip on a steep upslope. Uh, Going to have to hit a sand there and just get the ball up and play. Probably won't advance it any more than 80 yards or so. Shot this ball straight up in the air and left. Wow. Wow, I don't understand that. It only advanced at about 80 yards, but I'm surprised he missed the fairway there. Let's go, Phil. Up at the green, Ogilvy yeah. for birdie. That moves him to two over and just one off the lead. Very calmly and quietly going about his business, Johnny. Yeah, he's a solid player. A lot of the players sort of picked him to be the man to win this week that I talked to. I don't know why they had that hunch, but maybe they're right. Well, he's had a wonderful year winning the match play championship, finishing second at the Honda. And we'll move to the sixth. This was a moment ago, just the second for BJ, who drove it to this point, chopping it out. It's a good shot, really. That, that's not an easy shot. You've got to play like a little bunker shot, almost, you know, not accelerate. You almost to take it up and just drop it in all of Freddie Couples. So BJ will have a chance for his first birdie and a chance to pull within three of Mickelson as we move it back to five. There is the board. Mickelson, the lone leader, but scrambling at the fifth. And Kenny Ferry will be Kenneth Ferry will be next to play. His second shot. Yeah. 235 to the hole. Solid straight one TV tower. Yep. Yeah. You can hear him say a straight one at the uh, camera tower behind the screen. Well, we mentioned uh, he likes this hole. Yep. How about his second shot yesterday? 224 yards. Took it out to the right. Played a nice little draw. Landed it short. Chased it right up by the flag. Eagle three. Like it might be going a little left. Ball Roger. headed left, yes. Ooh, it comes up short as well, and that will not be an easy bunker shot. Gonna carry the ball a long way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he knows. Not good. That was a good opportunity for him, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Ahead at six. BJ for his first birdie of this championship today. As long as that putter cooperates, he's going to be a factor. Within three, back to five. Well, we see the fairway medal in his hand. Roger, tell me about it. Only 141 to the hole. That should tell you something about how bad this lie is. This is a going to be one of those Phil Mickelson trick shots here. Well, he just kind of takes this thing, chokes down on it, and then punches at it. Very abbreviates the follow through. Oh. Uh oh. That ball I, didn't go. It didn't even go three feet. Yeah, he just beat it right down into the grass. How about that, okay. guys? Let's take a close up of this one. Plays him way forward in his stance. Had a some wild play, Johnny. I'm not so sure the next one's any better, is it, Rog? Well, I, I can't get close enough, John, to see the lie of this one because I've had to step away when he played the last. Uh, but I can't anticipate it being much better. 
Gary, that's a crazy shot to try. Well, it is a crazy shot, you know, uh, a little careless with the layup from the bunker, maybe trying to get too much out of it, and then uh, definitely trying to get too much out of the third shot. Must be a bad time. It was this shot uh, going at the very left side of the green. safely on but a long way from the hole and Phil Mickelson's struggles at the easiest hole on the golf course continued. That's a wake up call. I would sure think so. I wonder what Bones thought about that club selection on the third. There's a guy Gary that's number one on the tour in par five birdie percentage this year. Over at seven. BJ has already played his tee shot here at this par three. He's in the bunker. Colin seven. Montgomery. Seven iron at number up. seven. Not a hard hole location if you get the right club. And not bad at all. Not much great from there. So Singh will be scrambling for the bunker, and Monty will have a pretty look to maybe get within one. And remember, Mickelson has a long par attempt coming over at five, so this leaderboard is going to squeeze closer a little bit, Gary. Yeah. Well, it certainly will. And uh, Roger, you're uh, taking a look at the lie there for Kenneth Ferry. I am, uh, Gary, and it's on a bit of an upslope, uh, a lengthy bunker shot, and those aren't easy. He's going to throw this ball way up in the air, so he has to make a, a big, big swing at the ball to get it to the hole, I think. Bunker shot of some 45 yards or so. Mickelson trudges up onto the green and uh, can't be pleased. Laying four there. Put of about 40 feet. Well, I can tell you one thing right now. He's not going to win this U.S. Open if he keeps driving it the way he has today. Somebody else is going to win it. He's got to turn it around. Ferry's third. Big swack at it. Can't get it all the way to the hole, but that's really not bad at all. Well, leave an uphill putt. We have not seen it made often from there, but got a chance. Shaking off the dust, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse than that, is it? Getting sandblasted over at seven. Where Mr. Singh has found, well, every time I've been around Wingfoot, Johnny, every time someone gets down to that bunker, they refer to your trip down there <laughs> in 1974. I just had a brain cramp. I just kept hitting it too easy. <laughs> well, Johnny, a PJ is well up into the bunker, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. And he's got lots of green to work with. Deep bunker, huh? This is deep. About that, something about that bunker when you you see the lip so high so you tilt more because you want to hit it high but that makes you hit it fat took you four to get out and 74 ended up with a seven you were just a couple off the lead at the time yeah I had a good chance at that point all right Mickelson lengthy putt for par <laughs> wonderful effort Gary, if that would have gone in, <laughs> that would have been a par for the ages. The field might have left. <laughs> well, Kenneth Ferry's got a chance at a two shot swing here. Yes, he does. This one back at plus two. Now three are tied for the lead at that figure, but uh, we'll move ahead to six. Short par four. And second shot for Ogilvy here. Just 23 yards, and he actually hit iron off the tee that got a huge kick down the middle of the fairway and ended up at this point. Just a little pitch shot, huh? Just a tiny little bump and run. Did he hit that all right? I guess, he did. I guess he did. It had a funny sound to it, but it seemed to work all right. This is the part of the course to reap the birdies. Ogilvy lined up for a second straight, back to five. And Ferry for birdie to take the outright lead. Up 
Still turns a little left. It's an easy putt too, isn't it, Gary? It's not a hard putt. The hard thing is reading the break to seven. Colin Montgomery coming down to tie for the lead a moment ago. Not a lot of break on this green. It's moving left on him. Oh, never even a chance. He must have been far, far enough over there. There's a little tiny depression that he caught onto. So now we're live. Singh trying to save his par here. Remain at plus four within a couple. He quit on that putt, didn't he? he sort of slowed down. Did you notice that, Dan? Took a back and falls just... to plus five, Johnny. When you putt away from the wind, when, uh, the sun. Whenever you got your shadow on that side of the ball, the whole side of the ball usually have to hit it harder. That grass loves to follow the sun. A couple of contenders here in Singh and Monty in their 40s. As you look at the U.S. Open, winners by age, not many, less than 10. And VJ, if he can pull it off, would be the fourth oldest champion in U.S. Open history at the age of 43. Monty turns 43 next Friday, so a couple of 40-somethings here in rare territory. No three putts this week, if you can make this. Keeps it intact. Is that impressive on these greens? Well, that's probably why he's one out of the lead, huh? And even with that crazy stretch the first four holes yesterday. He said that was nervous time. That's out of the way. He's two under the last 21 holes since that terrible start yesterday. And over at six, this is Jeff Ogilvy from Australia with a chance for the outright lead with Mickelson coming back to the plus two number. Previous two opens, missed the cut in 03 at Olympia Fields when Furyk won and the real rise in confidence last year with a 28th finish at Pinehurst. We got a beautiful read from Ian Poulter just missing. Doesn't do much, does it? Doug? No, it certainly doesn't. And Ogilvy is your new leader in the U.S. Open with back-to-back -back birdies at five and six. Well, he can tell his family someday if he never gets a major that, hey, I was leading the Open. But left glimpse, Snoopy one leading our coverage high above Wingfoot Golf Club, capturing the gorgeous views in the Merrimack, New York. on a day of near record temperatures here I, in the Northeast. I think it's pretty amazing uh, and, and smart of the USGA to give a hole like this that's temptable and, and tempting and, you know, because the leaders going into the round were plus two final round. Why not give it a shot on this hole? It's a fun hole. Well, it's added some spice to this stretch of easy holes, about the only stretch you could call that here at Wingfoot. Ferry giving it a swat. And that is a swat in the wrong direction, and that is some super long rough there. Not much green to work with. Four eagles on six today. Mickelson, who has not hit a fairway all day. He still might not hit a fairway if he hits the green. <laughs> well, you can see everything to the right. You don't want to miss it on that side either. You got a bunker there. But he could knock in the bunker would be nice. That was his play yesterday. Yeah. He said that that was the strategy and he got it up and down and made a birdie. So if he drives it on the green, that means he still hasn't hit a fairway? Correct. <laughs> Where's this, Roger? Well, it's a pretty good hit here. I got this ball solid. Some serious hang time and it's in that bunker, I believe. That's a pretty darn long carry, folks. That's uh, 307. 307 and just no problem flew it on. Fast pin high. That was the strategy yesterday. We'll see if he can get it up and down again for three. After the bogey at the par five. Did you notice how long that ball was in the air? Was some serious hang time. Up ahead at seven, the new leader Ogilvy. Again, the par three, 161. That's a seven iron. Just every swing is identical. Every ball flight's identical. It's right at it. Oh, Miss Club. Down the hill it goes. And a little bit of wind up there, and this high ball flight, it got caught. I've never seen a guy that literally hits it the same every time. 
Well, if it's good, the same way every time, it'll be a good day for the 29-year-old from Melbourne who now makes his home in Scottsdale. Delicate little shot here by this championship's new leader, Jeff Ogilvie, who missed his first green in regulation today here at the seventh. He needs to be very careful. False front of six yards. Make sure you get it up enough. And he'll have an uphill putt for his par three. Back at the six, there is Kenneth Ferry in the ankle high rough. Has drawn a pretty good lie, only 34 yards to the hole. Must have yeah. been a real good lie. It was, Johnny. I mean, it was amazing. He could have been way worse. All right, so they have a little crack at birdie there. Ferry all pars today so far, hanging in with the world's number two ranked player, Phil Mickelson, who found the bunker off the tee here. That is Gary Tilston, his caddy, will tell his story in just a moment as Mickelson is next here with his second. Grant, settle down, please. I just like these kind of bunker shots when you're standing above the ball and the, the balls blow your feet and the heel of the club will grab on you. If you don't watch how you can hit this fat, huh, Roger? You can, and the green's running away, so this is... Usually doesn't spin with this kind of lie too well. And there's an example of that. It just... No spin whatsoever, even with a 64 degree wedge. That's, that's a hard bunker shot. A lot easier when the ball's above your feet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, start your stop watches here as we time the air time for Mickelson's tee shot here at the sixth. It's been that's really a long time in the air. That's almost eight and a half seconds, I think. <laughs> Got more than eight seconds on that one. But it might not result on the birdie he picked up yesterday by finding that bunker. Final round US Open scoring average for Mickelson. Not one of the numbers that he's particularly pleased with. Has never broken par on the final round in 14 rounds. Been a runner up in this championship three times, beginning in Pinehurst in 99, again at Bethpage 02, and Shinnecock 04. I think he gets about 121 miles an hour club head speed and maybe 185 or 80 miles an hour of ball speed. So that's pretty stout. We're going with the fairway wood. And this is his four wood here. Last two holes, he's uh, he's dropped three shots to the field almost, Roger. That's because the, you got to make some birdies on this five, six, and especially five and yeah, six. Seven isn't as easy at eight. Stricker for par. Knocked it in the rough, had to chip out. Ooh. That looked awfully good, <laughs> Bob. Just ran out of ju gas. Over to seven. And Ogilvy up the hill to remain the sole leader. Nicely done. Remains at plus one over at six. We've got a birdie try here for Ferry to tie Ogilvy. A little downhill. It wiggled right on him. He didn't see that, Roger. Right. And that's just what it looked like. I don't know know so much that it really broke that way as it did wiggle. Six straight pars for Ferry to remain at plus two to eight. Good drive. And Montgomery second now from 199. Whole location back left. That's a positive shot there. Very few players have taken it that high into the green. Back to six. Nicholson for his par. Got it. But again, not a real positive stretch here. Five and six for Mickelson. He remains one back, and we go to the leader. And Jeff Ogilvie on the tee, Dottie. He just needs that nice high fade that he hit at the first. Back into the breeze. That's why I was looking at it tentatively. Yeah, he knew he hit it too straight, didn't he, Johnny? He needed to cut it, like Dottie said. Now the real holes start, folks. 
Nine of three on holes, eight to 10 this week. <laughs> so he likes this little stretch here. Back to seven. Check out the scorecard for Mickelson. Birdie at the fourth. And then the bogey at the fifth. And then the par at the sixth, Johnny. Those are the two that are troublesome right now, but he's still just one back. Well, he did it with smoke and mirrors through four to be one under without hitting a fairway. All right, let's take a look at this uh, little par three, the shortest on the card here at the West Course. Yeah, 161 yards uphill. They got a whole location that's sitting on the front left, and so it's right there. And uh, so you can see the green, the way the grid goes, it's back to front tilt. Got a few little troughs there. But around the hole is quite level. So if you can get the ball close, you can make it real easily here. It's a very easy hole location if you can get it pretty close. There's a bunch of them today that are just sitting right in the front, you know, which is sort of, you don't think of that as being a Sunday uh, hole location like six and seven, just sitting there right in the front. It's like more like a member guest pen. Superman! Superman! Well. That's a little much for Ferry to take there right after his swing. I don't know when that Superman came out. I don't know if that was on his downswing or the minute he hit it. I think the ball had, had left the club, but still. It's a kind of call out so quick after the shot that kind of gets on your nerves. Ferry has talked about how he's had to deal with his temperament on the golf course in previous years, and he's being tested right now a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, when that came, it sort of, it was pretty close to impact. I think it was all right. After. I, I think, think it was, it was okay, right. but it certainly was quick. He didn't seem to like the call too much, did he? Well, Phil's due for a hole that's a little bit more of a... Stress-free? Yeah, stress-free, you know. He's got an eight iron here, Johnny. Back into the wind a little bit, Roger? Uh, yes, into the wind, uh, maybe a bit from the right. Something's going on. Both guys over club by at least a club. Another ball in the rough. You guard so much by not being short and rolling back down that hill and having to face that delicate little pitch that Ogilvy was able to negotiate just a few moments ago. Take one more listen to the uh, chatter after Ferry's club here struck the ball at the seventh. Uh, very tight on it. And it's gotten the ire of the Englishman. States hosting the most U.S. Opens, and there are plenty here in this part of the country. New York leading the way with 17. New Jersey with eight. Pennsylvania will add to its total next year when the championship goes to Oakmont. Three of the last five U.S. Opens have been staged here in New York, and Mickelson's been a big part of all of them. Gouging it out for a second at the seventh. That was a tough lie that Roger Malpe told us about, so that's not a bad shot, Rog. Not bad at all, really. That was a very good shot. Up ahead at eight. And just a moment ago, Montgomery for the birdie. Just loses its speed. Excellent chance goes away. Back to seven. All right, Kenneth Ferry, Roger. On downhill here from the back of the green, about 35 feet or so. This one's a little quicker than I think it looks. Very bogey free and he'll have a chance for seven straight pars to begin the day over at eight. And that's Jeff Ogilvy in the left rough. You'll remember the tee shot. Not much chance to get this to the green. The squirt right. 
did. Way right. As we pull back, you see he has a very difficult pitch coming back across that ridge. Yeah, that ridge is right between him and the hole, huh? Ogilvy's lead might be short lived. There is Mickelson trying to stay at plus two. And what's this putt coming back? First of all, Roger, that was an ugly lie he had over there. Wasn't it, it was a nasty little lie. That 64 degree wedge he has is coming uh, pretty handy this week. Not much break here, Roger. No, I think it's inside the hole on the left, John. Pushed it. Flat pushed it. What a nightmare these last three holes have been, Roger. You'd have bet that he'd play those holes five, six, and seven plus two. You, there's no way you would have played at that score. Jim Furyk at the ninth for par drove it in the rough, so he's scrambling up here at the 514-yard par four. So Furyk, after a promising start with two birdies in the first five holes, two bogeys in the last three, still though out in even par 35. But five off the lead. Ferry now for his par at seven. For a share of the lead, probably. Sand right here. This little hole, Roger. You get to tee the ball up. Front little hole location, not tucked, and play in eight strokes, these two super good players. Gonna have to lean on the powers of that Superman belt buckle. <laughs> now Mickelson, a delicate little bogey try. So both Ferry and Mickelson drop one, and Ogilvy suddenly has a two shot lead, but he's got the thick stuff to negotiate at eight. Not a very good lie, but plenty of green to work with. Needs to get on the proper side of that ridge, and it's not going to do it. Didn't do it. The other ball, that of Poulter, also for a par. So the eighth hole is playing very difficult. There you see birdies five and six. Pretty solid. He said, I've practiced all my golfing days just to have a chance like this. And a chance it is Murph with two PGA Tour victories. Uh, Jeff Ogilvy in position in the U.S. Open. He's more than surpassed already his childhood dreams in this sport. Just to be a professional, to be able to do this all the time is would have been, I would have been perfectly content with that if I could just play golf my whole life, make a nice living and just do it. I mean, that's, that's a pretty nice way to make your living. Anything more than that was a bonus. Um, obviously, you dream about the majors, you dream about winning golf tournaments and the big ones. Um, but it's really hard to think about when way back when you're a kid, it's hard to even you think about that sort of stuff and you watch them on TV and it's it's all you really think about. But it's hard to ever imagine you're going to be there. And like all the Aussies, Ogilvy heavily influenced by Norman watching him play the major championships. The last three majors played by this 29 year old man. Pretty good, and that's why he's on the short list of a lot of people to perhaps be the next man in his 20s, I guess, to win a major championship. He's right up there on the list, and he's in position here. Throwing it out to the right. Has to deal with the ridge. Tough Every, everything but hard enough. So he makes the bogey there, slides back to plus two. Back to the tee now for Phil Mickelson. It's one of the few drives he likes to draw. Going right. Took it right straight over the trees. It might make it out. Yep, there it is. Perfect. Wow, that's a bold line there. Wonderful drive. <laughs> wow, he took that way into the forest there. And Murphy finally got one in the fairway. All right, we continue with Mickelson at the eighth. Well, Johnny, you know, we talked about having to shape the ball with the dog legs in this golf course, or knowing the exact lines if you're going to cut dog legs. And that's what he did here because he took it up over these giant elm trees, uh, a very bold line. Well, he's due for a good hole, isn't he? Yes, he is. This 190 to the hole in the back left. 
going with the three quarter semi stinger. This ball moving lower right to left. Pretty good looking shot if it will get to the hole. Back into the wind, huh? Yes. It's just surprising that the fellows are not, the ball's not releasing. Ferry is on the front of the green as well. Let's go to nine. Third, again from the thick stuff for Colin Montgomery, Mark Rolfe. This is tough, Mark. It is, it's not a very good lie. He's got that ridge to come over and out of junky uh, grass. I'm not sure how he can do it. That looks pretty good, actually. Uh, it's just tough, tough to get the right distance. A lot of tester for par. Is this the day where it finally all comes together for Colin Montgomery? Once a villain over here in the United States. Mostly uh, warmly received wherever he goes now. Back on the tee. Ogilvy, leader by one. Got to get it the fairway here, Johnny, if you're going to have any hopes of getting it on. Moment ago. Yeah, this fairway's hit, or that's the key thing. Whoever hits the most fairways in the next uh, two and a half hours is going to hold up that trophy. Well, it's out there on the trampled down stuff, and the grass gets a little worn out in the last days of the fortnight at Wimbledon coming to NBC in a couple of weeks. Maria Sharapova, can she get back the title she won there in 2004? The championships coming your way. Wimbledon beginning Saturday, July 1st on NBC. Ogilvy might have some tree troubles. All right, up here on the green, Mark. Colin Montgomery just one off the lead, trying to stay there, Mark. Well, it's a putt that's about 10 feet long here. Fairly flat, so speed won't be a real issue. Looks to me like it's going to want to turn to the right. That brow of the hill that's, um, you know, on to um, his right doesn't affect it, huh? It doesn't. It not not much, no, I don't think going so. going right through the groove? Yeah, there's not a whole lot of break to it. It's one he's going to have to be a little firm with, though. This ninth hole is playing very long right now. In fact, Vijay Singh hit a tree off the tee, bounced back into the fairway, but he had 287 yards into this green. Wow. Well, these are the kind of putts you got to make, aren't they, Mark? Yes, they are. No bogey so far today for Monty. Wants to make the turn with that intact. And that is a big putt. Stays within one. It's not just Mickelson who's getting some New York support. Colin Montgomery again has turned his reputation around in this country. As we send you back to eight. And Ferry for birdie one here all day. Uh, this across the spine and moving left a hard looking putt. Well, he missed it. Missed the read by three feet. Try 10 feet now. Yeah, missed the speed a little bit far. too. Yeah. He missed this point in the, the ridge which is so difficult to read. Back to nine. And like Monty, Singh has a par putt here to remain at plus five and make the turn at even par 35. Johnny here is a player that's definitely going to have to drive the ball better because he has not driven it well. Bit of a vague putt here. A little bit. Not too much break, is there? No, but this is the distance he's been having trouble from. Saying two bogeys the last three holes makes the turn in plus one over to eight to tie for the lead. Just move to his left. Well, that's some of the reasons we've only had one birdie all day. That hole location around that ridge has just been impossible. Let's go to nine. What's the report on Ogilvy, Dotty? Well, Danny's got 189 yards to the front of the green. He's going to have to keep it very low for the first 65. He does have an opportunity, though, to turn it left and scoot it up the opening. A little risky, though, with the with the bunker short right. That's a very small little opening that he's got to land almost parallel with that bunker on Dotty to <laughs> scoot it on. Uh, that's exactly right, Johnny. The toughest green to hit this week. 33% finding it. Again, a par five of the members turned in to the longest par four ever in a U.S. Open at 514 yards. It's about as long as the fifth hole. Now the lie is very good, so I, I think he's got five. a shot. 
It's the kind of shot, though, if you don't pull off, you can make double bogey if you oh, don't. Oh, in a heartbeat yeah. or more. Yeah, that's the problem with uh, these kind of, but I can't say I wouldn't go for it. He's got it back in his stance, hands forward, and pick it up quickly and just trap draw it. Good bounce, Dottie. No, it certainly wasn't. But he got some good flight on it. Ball carried a long ways. While Ogilvy was hitting that, this was Ferry at the eighth. For the par. Well, I think you can appreciate he just never hit the putt hard enough at all. Now Mickelson for his par. Gets it in there. Bill remains three over. Ferry, two four over. Well, we thank the MetLife Blimp for providing these shots above the 2006 U.S. Open Championship. MetLife for the if in life. Beautiful shots they are, too. Some panorama. And some golf club. It's been a good week. It's been a good weather week. We haven't had any delays, which is always nice. Well, the temperatures soar today. Just missed one thing. That's Tiger. Mickelson. Is a Tiger-esque type of territory here, trying to win his third straight major. You know, Phil does a lot better. Uh, Raj, I'd like you to comment on this. When he's got to cut a corner, go over a tree, have a chance to drive a par four. If you just give him a straightaway hole, straightaway hole that doesn't have any risk reward, a heroic gamble, it's like he doesn't hit it so good. Well, those kind of shots really uh, narrow your focus, Johnny. When you have a specific place or target you're trying to trying to hit a ball at, it uh, sometimes makes it easier to get the ball there. Especially for Phil, though, right? He's into the e-ticket. Yeah, you know, even the creative side, the aggressive side. That's what. Uh, yeah. That's really what he does best. I agree. Just a straight shot back into that clubhouse. Probably the most picturesque view on the West Course. Straight as an arrow. Maybe he's found it again, Roger. Well, that was a better swing. There's no question about that. But maybe he has. You know, he found it about here, according to Rick Smith. He found it on the sixth hole yesterday. Um, and um, he hit his first good drive on, on eight. Now he's got another good one at nine. Players going for three major wins in a row. Tiger Woods pulled it off, of course, in the Tiger Slam. 2001 era and Mickelson would be just the sixth player to win three majors in a row. Ferry is he fading with back to back Bodie bogeys. No he just drills it down the middle there. Dead center. And he's too off Ogilvy's lead. They don't seem to be doing too much talking but maybe now they will. Let's go to 11. And Jim Furyk ready with his second shot here. Just 116 yards. Ring Fight. light special. Fight. Hole cut Fight. right in the front. Oh, that's a good one. Quickly denied. And Ogilvy's third. Very good line. He was relieved to have found it in the bunker. Mm. You know, it was a weird thing. It was in the transition area where the bunker looked a little wet. I think it affected how it came out of there. Field kind of stumbling here at eight and nine. That was not a good bunker shot. Usually when it's, if anything, a little wetter, you hit crisper bunker shots and then they go a little long, but maybe with that mind he eased into it. Up ahead to the par three tenth, Stricker for par as Montgomery and Singh have been waiting for Weir and Stricker to clear the green. And that rolls around and then Stricker had a tough end to his opening nine as well. Bogey at eight, bogey at nine. He's at plus six, four back, and now finally they get a chance to hit one in on this beautiful par three, Johnny. Okay, let's take a look at the green grid here, the 10th hole. 
It's got a perched green, uh, pear-shaped. A lot of, they say a lot of the greens here are pear-shaped. Take a look at the way the balls roll and uh, how much tilt there is and back to front. Whole location today is in the back left, almost where all those little balls are in the corner of your screen. You see those balls like to go right there. So who knows, maybe we'll get something exciting happen here. Corners of this green have been reclaimed in recent years. Another example of the renovation and modification here at Wingfoot. And Monty has hit more greens in regulation today already than he did all day Saturday. That's why he's uh, just a shot off the lead. It was a well-played front nine, Dan, definitely. This is a small target he's hitting to. Real small. This needs to get up. Oh, man, that was way off. Because uh, that's uh, like two clubs short. And uh, is that ball out of the bunker there? It's in the tongue. It's in the tongue of the rough there in the bunker. I, out, I mean, out of the bunker, but in that tongue. Which might not be a bad break. Got a funny stance, though. All right, Singh's got a nine holes left here, Johnny. He's drifted four off the pace. Tough holes coming up. Well, the other thing is the back nine, uh, the front nine's averaged 36.0, and the back nine's 37.7. So it's almost two shots tougher than the front. So that the good news is if he has a great back nine, he can pick up some strokes, maybe. Okay, there's eagle possibilities at the 12th up ahead. With you better take advantage of 11 and 12, because after that, watch out. He's plus six on the back nine this week, so he's got to change that trend. And those are just so-so iron shots. Let's go to that 11th. Furyk for birdie. Chance to move within three. Pretty straight putt. Yes! Don't count out the 2003 champion. He's got the mentality, Johnny. Just keeps plugging along. Yeah, he's going to have to play a phenomenal back nine, though. I really believe he's got to get, you know, at least a couple more birdies. We go to nine. Johnny, what kind of number are you Maybe thinking three over. right now? Three over? Somebody's going to get in with three, wouldn't you think, Gary? Uh, you know, you never know, but maybe everybody will stumble. But. Johnny, 16, 17, 18 into the wind. They're playing pretty tough today. Yeah, there are a couple of birdie holes, though, that you can, uh, you know, like we were talking about 11 and 12. Huge par putt here. If he doesn't get it down, we'll have a three-way tie for the lead as the leaders continue to back up. The number plus three that Mickelson and Monty currently reside at. We're putting downhill into this little tiny bowl. Such important putts, Dottie. I mean, just every one from now on in. Yeah, he's got two and a half hours of just nothing but crucial strokes. Well, in theory, they all count the same, but we know it differently when it's Sunday afternoon in an open. Eight and nine taking their toll. Ogilvy's gone bogey bogey through that stretch after being two under through his first seven. He levels out and Mickelson's tied for the lead again up there with Monty and Ogilvy. And Monty's found that little patch of grass, I believe, or has he? Yes, he has. Mark, get a chance to look at the lie. I did. I would call it fair, Dan, but he does have a lot of green to work with. It's a good little chunk and run shot, isn't it? I think that would be a whole location back in the shadows again, like it was on Thursday in the opening round. I wouldn't put the odds of this making par here, though, more than 50, 60 percent. So it's no, I wouldn't either, Johnny. It's easier to chunk and run a shot when the lie is level or downhill. The uphill lie is a little tough to hit that shot. While Montgomery looks it over at 10, we go back to nine and Mickelson with his second. 215 to the hole. Wind against and from the right. What would this be, Roger? Four or five? Yes, a four iron, John, I believe, and this leaking left is going toward the left bunker. Yep. Didn't he? Not a good swing. Just hung on, didn't he? No release there, huh? No, it just it was all for him, all right hand just 
clamp down on it. Monty's teetering on the edge of that bunker here at 10. It's a good thing it's a short shot, not a long one. That needs to go. Is there another par saving putt for Monty? Still bogey free, out in 233 and tied for the lead. Challenging bunker shot for Mickelson at the ninth. Had to come across a mound in the center of this green. Didn't quite carry it far enough, but overall, not a bad shot. Up ahead at the 10th. P.J. Singh already missed his birdie putt. Monty trying to remain bogey free, and it ends here at the 10th. He falls to plus four out of the tie for the lead. And over at 17, just a moment ago, Dan Nick O'Hearn, two under par for the day, his third shot here at the lengthy par four. Oh. And Johnny with one hole to go at plus seven, a little too high. Well, you'd think so. You'd think a worst case scenario plus five would be in a playoff, uh, but you never know. You know, maybe everybody's just going to. Have a little problem on the back nine. Here's the pink clad Holter at 10 at plus seven. Had a bit of a rough front nine, plus 237, but his four back has to hope for some magic to go his way in the back here. I don't know what to think right now, Gary, to be answer, answer your question. I, you know, you'd think Phil would write the ship and, and maybe play that good back nine like yesterday, but who knows? Maybe everybody's going to just have a heck of a time with this course, especially coming back into the wind at the end. Well, the back nine certainly stroke wise playing tougher than the front. I just think somebody would play real well. Well, Ogilvy's had good marks here at 10 earlier in the week. Coming he's off back and back bogeys, Daddy. Yeah, he's chosen five iron here. Again, coming in very high and hanging out to the right. In the winning score back in 1974 at the so-called massacre at Wingfoot was plus seven. Over at the ninth, Ferry for birdie and a share of the lead. He's trying to get it back on track. And that was his attempt for the birdie. And so it appears he's going to remain at plus four. And now Mickelson trying to remain at plus three and not pick up his third bogey in the final few holes here of his front. Tough little putt here downhill. Mickelson bogeys the ninth three days in a row. Three bogeys in the last five holes. Out in plus 237. And that came close, Johnny. Sure did. It was wiggling. See how it's sort of just wiggling along there. But remember yesterday, he was five shots off the lead after his opening nine. There's the card for Mickelson. The bogey that got on a plus one, and then the bogey trend in the nine. Ferry for his par. And he is just at plus four tied with Mickelson. So he's hanging with Mickelson stroke for stroke. And Ogilvy's the only guy better at the moment at plus three. And it's working on an even par round. So the, the going has gotten really rough right now, Johnny. Everybody's just trying to hang on to pars. Yeah, I'm sure Tiger Woods is watching this and he's probably thinking, come on, if I was just playing well. Well, a pair of 76s. Didn't earn him the right to be here, but. It's a tough track. Back down at the U.S. Open as we get you out to 14. And Ryuji Imada just a moment ago. One under today, plus seven for the tournament. Watch this shot. That's a beauty considering we've had one birdie at this hole all day. Ryuji goes to plus six. He and Mickelson Murph had the only rounds under par yesterday, Saturday, Imada. Joining Mickelson. 
next Sunday. Don't miss a special 2006 Wimbledon preview. We've got all the scoop on all the players. What to expect this year at the All England Women Club before the championships return to NBC July 1st, next Sunday at 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. A moment ago at the par 5 12th, we talked about how the tees are playing up front today. This was Harrington giving it a go that's with his second. That was a big drive to get it there. I've never seen a ball down 250. Just knocks it on no problem and I think pretty good distance. And Great I, distance. And I, I think the par streak for Harrington's going to end 11 straight pars he has as he plays the 12th. The two got, there will get him to five. Got a chance for an eagle to get to four. Yes, he does. Well, A.W. Tillian has designs to host the U.S. Open. It's the fifth time here on the West Course. Baltus Rawl has hosted it five different times. And then Beth Page Black, where this championship will head back to in 2009, all Tilly creations. And the great thing about Tillian has is that uh, a lot of his golf courses just have a totally different feel, a different look, and he didn't get into the same kind of architectural uh, I don't want to say rut, but a lot of a lot of other guys courses look are, are, are instantly recognizable. That's a Donald Ross or that's this and Tillinghast just did a great job of he did definitely didn't like building lakes. No, you the only water the, here is at the 15th. I tell you, I'll look at all those courses on that list. You can't even I can't even remember a pond. He once said a round of golf should inspire 18 inspirations. He was big on making every single golf hole its own experience at 11. BJ Singh 134 downwind. Just a good pitching wedge. Oh, that's a beauty if it stops and it does. So Singh have a chance to get it to five over par. We go back to 10. And the long birdie put on the way for Poulter. Ooh, yes. Well, that looked good for a minute. <laughs> it, did. it did one little wiggle there and I was thinking that might go. And he thought it might go also. Back over to 11. Montgomery from 119. Need to make birdie here, Gary. Yeah, that's a little left. Ooh. Not good. That might even bury. I'm not sure. We haven't seen a buried lie, have we, Gary? I have not seen any balls bury the sand. Uh, very good. The players raving about the bunkers. Look at all those numbers over par. Ogilvy the fewest over par, plus three. Nine players now within three shots of Ogilvy's lead on the back nine here at Wingfoot. They're definitely bunching up. All of a sudden, a lot of people are thinking, gee, you know, I got a shot at this. <laughs> those bogeys that Ogilvy has made, you know, those plus six numbers totally alive. Includes Singh and Harrington up ahead. That's good speed. Oh, beautiful uh, pace. Yeah, it's one of the few long putts we've seen just for a tap in. It's been very rare. And again, the last Australian to win a major championship, Steve Elkington, Riviera 95 PGA Championship. You don't have to tell Ogilvy that. I asked him last night and he immediately <laughs> new on command. Back at 11. Monty getting ready for his third. He's got a good lie. Not much green to work with, though. On the upslope? On the upslope. Yeah, it should be a problem. Well, a little farther away than I'm sure he would have liked. A nervous length. Ahead at 12. Big putt for Jim Furyk. Get it to plus four within one. Make it back to back birdies and go coasting into the final six holes here. Exactly. See if he can double up on his championship in 03. He's got that little ridge to deal with. Should make it go just a little left and it doesn't break too much at the hole. Of it. Not the 
pretty good breeze going through there. And Furyk is within one. Those some nice putts he's making the last couple holes. And he's got the support of uh, New York Yankees manager Joe Torre. They uh, both own some real estate back in Kapalua. And Torre earlier uh, before this championship started, I'm pulling for my man Furyk. So right here in the New York area, Furyk looking good within one at the 10th. Terry looking out to the right, wanting to play a draw. Did he? It's going right. It's going right at the bunker. He was aiming quite a bit right. I thought maybe he was going to hit sort of a slinger in there, but obviously it didn't release it. And that's a tough shot. Up ahead at 11. Birdie putt for BJ Singh. Very straight here if you'll hit it firmly enough. Good stroke. Good result. BJ Singh within two. <laughs> hey, now what? Oh, oh, <laughs> now what is, are you guys thinking? This is getting interesting because he certainly has the length to reach the next par five, number 12. Back oh, at 10. And all of a sudden, Mickelson is swirling around all of these players in front and behind. This is a five iron for Phil trying to shape it from right to left. He is, but it's going at the center of the green. Watch for the folks who play here at Wingfoot and know this hole is a great spot. 11. Par putt for Montgomery, and that's a good save and a little shake of the head. He is hanging in there, Gary. He is. You got to give him a lot of credit. It looked like yesterday was going to be over for Monty. Well, that horrible start, five over par right at the beginning of the round. But he's hung in tough. We go to 12. How about Harrington for Eagle to get within one? Not a hard putt. It's quick, though. And he just uh, didn't read it right at all. It just was a couple inches outside right, but playing it straight in. How about his U.S. Open card? 11 straight pars. The birdie at 12 gets within two. And now seven players within just a couple shots of the lead in the 106th U.S. Open Championship. Mickelson heads up to the par 3 tenth. Ogilvy has the lead by himself. Three tied at plus four. Make that four with Kenneth Ferry still in there. We'll be right back. A moment ago, Kenneth Ferry's second at the par three tenth. Deep, rough. Tough shot. He's got to get it up to that plateau on the back left. And you can see it coming up to the edge of the lip of it. And no. Down it goes. Ferry's at that point in this championship, Johnny, where, you know, it could go either way. It's hanging in there. Just a moment ago, Jim Furyk on the 13th tee. Today, 229 yards uphill into the breeze. So the hybrid comes out. Just a solid click. You can hear it. Got terrific balance, does Jim Furyk, and produces a lot of very steady shots. Back to 10. Phil Mickelson for birdie. Up across a slight ridge in the green, breaking left. Ogilvy nearly had company at plus three. Finally get a kind of a stress-free hole here, Johnny, that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's what you need. You need a few of those and then just follow it up with a birdie. Like the next two holes, he could birdie the next two. Has not birdied a par five in the championship, and we've seen him make one bogey. So, so he's plus two actually on the par fives. That's amazing. Let's go to 11. And Jeff Ogilvy will be next to play, driven it absolutely perfectly down the left side, Dottie. Yeah, just 107 yards left. A little bit downwind. Duck soup, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Hole cut right in the front center of the green, just uh, four paces on. It's a little left. Is it up? Oh, that's more like scalded duck. Yeah. 
Oh, and this one looks like it may be buried, Johnny. Wow, what a bad shot. That a bad break and a bad shot. That one there was, it was the kind you just dream of. You're drooling. You can't wait to get to it, huh, Gary? I agree. Perfect yardage for a sand wedge. Scalded duck served up with a fried egg. Mm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Back at 10. Ferry for par. He's yeah. going to lose at least another one, Johnny. Bogey to eight, seven and eight. Had the good solid hole at nine, but Ferry's going to drop at least a plus five. Two behind. MetLife blimp. Snoopy one continues to soar high above Westchester County, New York. And we want to thank the MetLife blimp for all the work they've done this week, providing the dramatic shots from high above this championship. Ferry in with his third bogey in the last four holes. You know, it's hard to believe that probably in a few minutes, plus four is going to be tied for the lead in this championship with perfect weather. So keep on grinding. Kenneth Ferry and company. Jeff Ogilvy just had a chance to see the lie at 11, and as you might expect, he was not too happy. He's going to have a decision to make, uh, Johnny, as to where he plays that shot, but Ian Poulter will play first. Yeah. Just a simple bump and run. He had a bad tee shot on Toddy. It just caught that the longest rush ahead. by a little bit. He could chunk it out of there and take a gamble and land it right where he's standing, not Gary. That would be a gamble. Yeah, possible. Uh, the green is only about eight yards wide right there where the hole was cut. So uh, if he's got this thing coming out with any speed at all, it's going to be very hard to keep it on the putting surface. In fact, it looks like he's looking uh, left a little bit. We'll see. A bit of a backstop if he goes left of the hole. Looks like he's looking at it to me. Dottie? Yeah, he's looking about eight feet to the left. The impact mark has left a little bit of a room, room for him. Um, it's possible. Well, it went right over the top of the hole. It doesn't come back, though. Well, that's why he needed to go a little farther left, Johnny. I think if it had been farther left, he'd have caught a slope. Up at 13. Harrington's putt on the way at 13. He's uphill all the way, Johnny. He's plus five, so he's still in the mix. Back to 11. Phil Mickelson on the tee, iron in hand. We just want to get it down there about 230, 40 yards. Fairway slopes severely from the players right to left. Now will that stay? That's a good spot. Yep, that's fine. Intermediate cut of rough, good angle. This is like a one and a half stroke swing uh, if he doesn't make this Gary from where he drove it. Well, you had had to be thinking have a good chance to make birdie. And uh, now a very tough putt for par. Got a one that uh, I have seen player after player misread. I know it looks like it wants to go left, but it just doesn't do much. Gary, at this point, it's a lot about attitude, isn't it? And Ogilvy early days will tell you that he struggled with a bit of a hot temperament. Well, I think he's got to find that this is the flattest part of this green and not to get overly caught up with the back to front overall. Good putt. Mm. That really crossed across. That the, really did, John. That one broke more than uh, most of the ones I've seen today. Probably was just a little longer. Maybe that's what it was, huh? You haven't had that many off the right edge. Right of the off green. the edge of the green. That's right. Gee, that was a good stroke. I think he hit it right on the button. Well, a bogey at uh, what has been the easiest par four or second easiest par four today. And now a four way tie for the lead. So we go up to 13. And Jim Furyk finds himself tied for the lead and this for par. He's backed off three times. Really? Just yes. you think because of the read or just what? No, he just he, it's not his normal, you know, get up over it and then back off. 
did it twice more. He's playing a good break outside right. He does what's necessary to get comfortable and then knocks it in. How about Furick Murph? He was five back just four holes ago. Now he's yeah. tied. Can anyone say Hale Irwin 74 plus seven? Who knows where we're headed here? Could be the old Ken Venturi adage, uh, first one in the clubhouse, you know. They're really good. Well, there's a guy named Ryuji Imata who's at plus six with uh, three holes left. Harrington now for his par. He's one shot out of the lead. Yeah, Bob, that first one in the clubhouse at plus four might be a good score. That's sort of what I was alluding to, huh, Bob? You bet. You just wish you could get there real fast. Little left center and firm. Well done. Yeah, he's having fun. He's a good guy. Up to 11. Second shot for Kenneth Ferry from the right rough. 151 to the hole and not a particularly good lie. Kicked it left. Yeah, it's turned it over left, headed toward the bunker. Worse spots if uh, he's got the lie that he should have. It's actually think. makeable. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there you see it sitting very cleanly. All right, opportunity for Mickelson here, Roger. Yeah, good angle here, just off the left side of the fairway level lie. Good look at it. It's all about club selection here, isn't it? Distance control. Oh, we've seen some guys hit it in the bunker. Got to get that line right, also. Yeah. Roger, he took uh, that uh, one sand wedge out of his bag this week to put the extra 64 degree wedge in there. He's got 112 yards. I wonder if that's uh, an issue at this point. Well, it'd be hard to imagine him hitting a 60 degree wedge quite this far. Would have to be an awfully big one. This has to be the cap wedge, just a little punch yeah. at the opening. What a shot. Very creative. Very creative. Aiming it about eight yards short of the green, letting it bounce on. Up to 12. Colin Montgomery, is he in the uh, intermediate cut there, uh, Mark? And if no. so, does he have a chance? He does have a chance. He's got 258 yards to the front edge. 283 in all, but. The difficulty here with this shot, no matter how far right you are, is you've got these trees between you and the hole, and he's going to have to actually go up and over. I can still see a golf bag up on the side of the green up there, so he's obviously waiting for the green to clear. I'll tell you one thing. If you don't have a clear, good yardage, there are a lot of problems around this green that you do not want to mess with. So going for this green in two is, even though it's downwind, you could really get a tough lie in the rough and it's hard to get a close hitting it over that ridge and stopping it where the whole location is. Well, there's that tree sticking out there on the fairway. He cannot really even see the green. I'm about halfway up here toward the green and I can tell that he can't see the green. That's why he keeps coming over the left hand side of the fairway. So you got to go right over the left side of the top of that tree. I think so because you know he hits a normal fade and the wind is behind but also coming a little bit from the left. He's looking left of the tree. Maybe he's going to well now he's not aiming left of the tree. But he was looking over there. Stance says right at it. He can hit it high. I know that. Well he did. So bunker on the right side. That's going to bring the fall off that we're going to get to uh, recognize. I can't see the ball yet, but uh, it's right down there just over the edge, Johnny. And uh, he's going to have to really have a it's a dangerous shot because there it is. It rolls right off the green about four feet past the hole. Back to 11. Just a moment ago, Ferry's third out of the bunker. Good lie. Yeah. 
Came out lower than he was looking for, Johnny. That was a, not a good bunker shot. All right, we take our look at the 16th, 478-yard dogleg left par four. Back into the wind. Ruji Amata. Uh-oh. That's left of left. Oh, well, that actually, actually was a bad break, wasn't it, Johnny? Well, there's a lot of roots over there, though, and, and also out carvings of granite, so I'm not sure what that was. All right, back at 11, Mickelson, chance for the outright lead. If this goes, it's going to get loud. He hit it. Yes, he did. <laughs> He's clear of the field. Now, Phil Mickelson with the birdie at 11 takes a one-shot lead in the final round of the 106th U.S. Open. It was about this point in his round yesterday where Mickelson turned it on. Let's take one more look. Good line, good speed, good result. Phil Mickelson. The leader in the 106th Open will be back. And while we were away, Kenneth Ferry for par at the 11th. Well, knew it right Ooh. away and there's a little bit of that uh, emotion that he talks about. We go up to 12. And Monty's third at the par five, trying to get it up and down, maybe. Well, he, I'm sure he saw that drop off. You can't tell on your screen, folks, but I'm telling you, just past the hole, it runs right off the green into the bunker. I mean, literally just, a, now he's got to deal with it on the next one. That's why he chunked it. I'm sure the last minute he said, don't hit it long. All right, after Mickelson posted the birdie at 11, the board at 18. Look at this. <laughs> it's, it's funny it's, to see no red, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but a, a red three gets Mickelson to plus three and in the lead by himself. It's seven holes left. Now over at 12. Long birdie try for Monty, Mark. And Johnny is absolutely right. He can't afford to get it racing by the hole at all. So I figured he'd probably cozy it down there. This is um, very dangerous. If he hits it, what, six, if he'd hit the bunker six feet past the hole, it'd have gone right off the green, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Over to 14. And Jim Furyk second. The hole playing completely differently today. Downwind, this from 138 yards. Wants it to bite, and that's why it landed right by the hole. Not a bad birdie position, however. That's the customer Phil's got to worry about. Yes, sir. And now over 12, VJ Singh has this birdie to pull within one and join Furick and Monty at plus four. VJ drove the ball in the left rough and had to lay up. But as you were saying before, Johnny, there's just so much going on around this green that going for it in two shots is, you know, really doesn't pay off that often, I don't think. This is quick and a little bit of slice, isn't it? It is very quick. Singh looking for his fourth major title. So get him within one shot of Phil. I watched him walking up to the green. There's a leaderboard right behind it, but he did not look at it that I could see. There's a little brow there and it kicks to the left. Now it goes back right. It's the, there are a lot of little double breakers here. That, that was a tough putt to read. Ogilvy with a bad drive forced to lay up at this 12 dotty. This might be the worst lie I've seen all week. Aussie support there. Second shot on the intermediate cut up there. Not bad for That's where it was. That was a good shot and it's a good angle. 14. And the second shot of Harrington now from 126 yards. Oh! Big drive, huh, Bob? Huge drive, Johnny. The ball's just running down the very. That's a beauty. <laughs> Importantly, putting back into the hill very slightly. The little roar you heard was. Steve Stricker at 13. This 
is a try for a rare birdie, huh? <laughs> a good one, I'll say. Still putting very well. So Mickelson, the leader by himself by one of our Furick, looking for a second U.S. Open title. Colin Montgomery looking for the first major in Australia's Jeff Ogilvie just a shot back as well. And everybody feeling the pressure coming into this uh, championship Sunday, Johnny. But uh, there was one man who everybody expected to win last year at Pinehurst. Everybody expected Retief Goosen to win. He had the three-shot lead heading into the final day. We know what happened there. But Mickelson taking the lead by himself here with seven holes left. What do you think? Well, he's 17 and five with the lead uh, on the last day. And uh, in all three majors he's won, he's had the lead going into the last day. So there's never one actually coming from behind in a major. So the bottom line is uh, I, got, I think he's feeling pretty good, especially with that birdie he just made. But he has not made a darn birdie on a par five. In fact, he's made two bogeys and all the rest pars, which is crazy that he's leading the open with that kind of play on a five par. Well, there's Furick over at 14 to tie for the lead, Murph. And a birdie putt that if he were to get a little brave can just run away so fast. If you miss it, it's really quick. Last three feet by the hole. Very slightly uphill for the first 10 or 12 feet. He's looking out to the right, huh, Murphy? Yes, he is. He is one tough customer. He's a guy I want on my team, I'll tell you that. Took a hop. There goes another hop. My goodness. I'm not sure he read that real well, but it's a good par, isn't it? Go to 12. Yes, it is. T shot for Mickelson, a good one, and he's got a very, very good chance of getting it on in two. Are the five pars going to continue to haunt him? He's looking at it sort of like, I don't know. It went into the primary cut there. And he knows, well, I can make birdie here. You know, maybe it's a blessing. Maybe he'll lay it up. None of this. Try to explode a fairway yeah. wood. Maybe. Just hit a eight iron and a wedge and knock in a 10 footer. That's against his nature. 13 T. And Colin Montgomery on the T. BJ Singh put it in the left bunker, Murph. Not a very good spot. Left bunker is shallow. He can, if he gets flat. And That's Monty, once spot. again, just like at number 10, way short and way right. Yep, somewhat of a miscue for sure. I agree with that. Leaves himself a long, long bunker shot there. So Mickelson's got the smile right now. Nine players within three shots of the lead in the way this golf course is playing. Any one of them can win it to 13. And the bunker shot of Colin Montgomery, and boy, that's a good one from down there. That's leaves a him, deep bunker, isn't it? Yes, about? it is, and leaves himself about four feet. And up at 14, just a moment ago, Padraig Harrington for birdie. Right in the bottom, Patty moves himself to one shot in back of Phil Mickelson. It's getting pretty interesting here. Johnny, I think he's laying up. That's all he could do. He didn't have an option to do anything else that time. Well, as long as Jim McKay didn't say that to him, oh. then he would try to do something dashing. <laughs> that's a good shot. Good. That's a good position, too. That gives him a good chance for birdie. Just hit a great uh, wedge shot to make birdie the hole before. Maybe we can do it again. Back to BJ at 13. Just a bit of a splash right out of there. Well done. He got too far up in the bunker and didn't have much of a shot, did he? Nope. Up at 16 a moment ago, Ruji Amata's third. Remember, he drove it left. Forced to lay up to this position. Has yet to make a bogey today. Yeah, he made the cut right on the number, Gary. Well, fine round of 69 yesterday, and he'll have a downhill tricky putt to try to save par. So Back to 13. It's a good comeback, isn't it? VJ having a little bit of a walk around. 
BJ has putted the ball very solidly today, but he's had a lot of these, Johnny, from five to eight feet. Yes, he has. He putted really well last week. Uh, Gary had a stat on putts inside 10 feet. What was it? It was crazy. I think he made like 53 of 56, something like that, Johnny. It was like 94% of his putts 10 feet or less. That is off the charts. Well, the problem today, guys, has really not been the putter for VJ. It's been his long game. Hasn't driven the ball well and hit some poor iron shots. This one to miss left was not a good shot. Back to 12. And Ogilvy to get back into that top spot. Ty Mickelson for birdie. Rough stretch. Three bogeys last four holes. Awkward putt up and over and down. Yep. Maybe the open pressure's getting to him a little. He remains at plus four. One back. 16. Mata for par. Downhill. One that will really scoot to the right. Got to hang on. So that makes him uh, plus seven for the championship. And Johnny, barring a miracle finish, I have to think he's probably done. Yeah, he had to have that one. Back to 13. And Monty certainly needs this one here, Mark. Well, it was a beautiful bunker shot, like you said, Murph. Be a great three. To capitalize on good shots, good saves. Look Couple at that little rest. stride, Murph, after making that. And it wasn't too long ago where there wasn't much confidence or much spring in that man's step at all. Uh, this is a good story right here. I'm not sure if Phil's going to let them have it, but uh, they're going to have whoever wins is going to have to really step it up because the holes just keep getting harder and harder. Mickelson's third at the par 5 12th. 144 the hole, and as you said, Johnny, a perfect angle to play at this flag. Wind helping, just a pitching wedge, not even a real full one. I, I don't believe just like a quarter pitching wedge for him. You just cannot hit it at left of the flag at all. Hole high, it'll spin off. If it gets up. Well, if he doesn't win all that homework he did, it'll all be because of the par fives. He's got the lead by one and a major he's never won. The United States Open. And sometimes when you have to fight the hardest, Johnny, and persevere the most in the toughest golf courses that they dish out of major championships, it's even more rewarding. You felt that back in 19. 73 and Mickelson wants to feel it for the first time. Every shot so precious at this point. Last US Open one with an over par score was Cherry Hills in 1978 when Andy North won at plus one. And that's where Mickelson won his US Amateur title. Does this have it go a little bit to the right, Roger? It certainly will, John, as it comes up across the uh, crest of the ridge and then once it gets across, it starts to run away from him and then they go back to the left. There's the, the right part of it, but I don't think it'll come back like Roger said. Sort of has a little hook and then a flattening. But all in all, he's not thrilled with the five, but. So not all that. Mickelson ends with no birdies par fives. Just a moment ago, Jeff Ogilvy's three iron. It's only 33 feet wide up there on the top and it's a very small target. You're seeing guys left, right, left, right. With a good reason, huh, Bob, when you're hitting yeah. that long a shot uphill, to hit it in that landing strip is not easy. It is not. All right. 15 Padraig Harrington is on the green in regulation a long way away for birdie. 
but he's only one back. And he's got the only bogey free round going today. He had 11 straight pars before the birdie at 12 and then the last one at 14. This is a tough hole location right here. He's putting it up onto a plateau. Coming out of that low, now it's coming up the face of that, and then it's going to start. That's pretty good speed. It's a good putt. Over to 14. Money in trouble, Mark Rolfing. Well, he is. He's in the second cut of primary rough, Murph, but it's not the worst lie in this taller rough that I've seen. It's got 166 yards to the hole. Took a mighty slash at it. Pretty fantastic to get it on from there. Very fortunate when you can do that. As well as good. And VJ now. Looking right down the throat of the opening of this green. 159 straight down wind. Just hit a pull. It probably was in between clubs there. And got the ball hole high, however. Over to 15. Furick will take his birdie try here. Try and tie Mickelson. Seven players within three shots of the lead right now. This will go to the right. It's going up and over. There's the left. Did he hit it? Not even close, Jim. How damn. Ouch. That was almost scary short. So now he's got a lot left for par. You heard a roar earlier at 13. I tell you, these Aussies are good from the bunkers. <laughs> now do you say that was lucky or unlucky? I'm not sure. That's close to going in when they hit that squarely into the stop itself. It could run right down. Usually imparts a little backspin on the ball. That's a par. Mickelson now back on the tee. Choosing three iron. He hit a really fine shot yesterday. Remember right into the heart of the green. You want to use that same memory on this shot. Pushed it. Oh, now this shot going left, going well left. Bunker. Well, he's got a tough shot. He's going to need that 64 degree wedge that he's carrying. Furick for his par now at 15. Boy, does that hurt, doesn't it? Got it just underneath the hole there. Kind of the last guy in the field, Johnny, that you'd, you'd expect to. Just leave one that short at this stage. He's only got three holes left. He's only two shots back, but that was just a tough one to swallow. Kenneth Ferry now also choosing three iron. He's lost it to the right on this hole the last two days. Well, it hasn't been good to him. He's bogeyed it twice, man. Yeah. yeah. Swung aggressive ball starts right. He's trying to draw it the very right side of the green. Well, he avoided the right stuff, if you will, but uh, way short. Talked about stretches here at Wingfoot where you take advantage and then a stretch where you just got to hang on. 13 through 18, the final six holes here. Mickelson three under on this tough stretch. Now we'll go to 14 and Monty some movement in the back here. Just asking for the people to. to Tough hold putt on. to read here yeah. Murph. I think it's about 35 feet. It's definitely going left at first probably for the first half of the putt and then it'll straighten out. Hard to judge the speed here Mark because the last three feet is really fast. Surprised him. He thought it would come back right in the bottom there is 
Mark Rolfing was telling you, it just looks like it's got to go left. So he's left himself a three, three and a half footer there for par. Is this U.S. Open nervous, Bob? We're seeing <laughs> a lot of little hiccups here. You bet. It's starting to happen. Well, here's where it really starts, Johnny. This uh, 478 yard par four dog leg left back into the wind. Beautiful shot for a draw, isn't it? Beautiful shot. Well, go back on the tee like it. They should right center of the fairway. This hole, the tee was repositioned, moved farther to the left and back some 20 yards to increase the angle of the dog leg. And into the eyes of VJ Singh and his birdie putt, Mark. Yeah, you get the sense he needs something to jumpstart his round again here now. Hit it if you're going to jump start it. Looks like it went out to the right as soon as he started it. Not going to come back from there. It's a lot of people out there, Bob. Boy, it's fantastic, isn't it? We'll go back to 13 before me. Monty putts. And Roger Mulby, you're on the scene. Kenneth Ferry, first to putt. And this, uh, about 85 feet uphill. Across a bit of ridge and steeply uphill, certainly the first half of the putt. Moves some to his left, I would think, overall. Obviously just off the green, right? Just off the fringe, yeah. Just off the edge. Look at this. Pretty good putt right there. Nice judgment there. Now back to money at 14. He's been very good with these. Well, that's Whoa, those little putts are so treacherous when the, the greens get fast and furious. We'll go back to 13 now and watch Phil. I was calling Montgomery's first three putt of the championship. The ball's going to come out and land on a down slope. He's really going to have to get a lot of spin on this ball. I don't know how you get it any closer from there except to hit the flag stick as Ogilvy did. Montgomery did make his bogey at 14. So a three putt as Johnny Miller was talking about earlier. He didn't have any now. Colin Montgomery has a three putt. Take another look at Monty's putt. Strikes it seems to be going pretty well. It, just a little bit of a bobble there. See if his head moves. Yeah, his chin yeah, moves. He could have been coming with it a bit, which would bring the putter up. That can put some spin on the on the ball. Get it back, Get it back. Right away. And back to 13 now. Phil doing his work, Roger. Yeah, but I think it's going to have to come to his left some, isn't it? From here, he's been, uh, been studying this pretty intensely. Yeah, if anything, I, I would believe it's pretty darn straight. I wouldn't uh, put it out of the hole, I can tell you that. Well, if anything, maybe inside right? If anything. This is a huge putt. It's just a bit slower than the players are reading it, mostly. Just can't get him out of the hole. It was so straight. It was straight, wasn't it? Could have made it inside. Yep. But well, a costly tee ball leaves him in the bunker and uh, just couldn't recover from that position. And leaves us Murth with a three-way tie for the lead at plus four. And it gives Monty and Furick. A little more breathing room now, just one back. Speaking of Furick at 16. He's hit a good tee shot, got it in the left side of the fairway. 
That brings that plant the tree into play a little though, doesn't it? It, it does, Johnny. It does. The holes uh, cut toward the right side of the green, and you know, even though this innocent little hole location, John, we've seen just three birdies here today. That's amazing. It's very narrow there. So it is only like 30 feet wide. That's about right. Yes. Dottie, you're down there. 195 yards back up into the breeze. This tree we're talking about is right here, folks. That thing is right there. That tree is 28 yards short of the putting surface. Well, that is not bad. In their hole high. We've seen a lot of putts made from there, but hole is playing as the second toughest on the course. We go to 14. Jeff Ogilvy now in the longest drive of the day here. He's left himself 123. Oh, gee. bad shot. Bad shot from 123 yards. That's Harrington's ball on the way at 16, and that just kind of filters through the tree there left. That was a pull. So Harrington will... Uh, a little work. He's going to remain at four over. Another look. See if he comes over. Definitely had it going left of where he wanted it. I no doubt about that. I don't know if he was trying to play a draw or not, Johnny, but uh, I could have hit limbs and gone anywhere. Yeah, it He's could. It went through the leaves. That's exactly right. We go to 14. And back on the 14th tee, we'll get a, a good look. Down the fairway, it's dogleg left. There's a big fairway bunker on the player's left to carry that fairway bunker and get out into the fairway. There you see the fairway bunker. A nice draw would be the shot to call for. This can go a mile if a guy hits it well on, huh? just well, like uh, Ogilvy did. That's exactly what's happening today downwind. Earlier in the week, the yep. first two days, the wind was right back in the player's face. This was a heck of a hole earlier in the week. Straight the over three. that bunker, Johnny. It's about 275 to get free into the fairway. It's a tough angle, isn't it? Tough angle to play to hit this fairway. It's not very wide. It's about 25 yards wide up there. If you're a drawer of the ball, is Kenneth is, I think you'd be a lot more comfortable standing right there. Tee shot challenging the bunker. Carried right into the intermediate cut and releases in the fairway. Beautiful. Up to the green now and Jeff Ogilvy. Be fringe. Boy. Sort of a wishy washy type swing, don't you think? I think those are better off, uh, more of staccato, kind of firm wristed little pitch. Nicholson now. Fade called for. Red Robert! Unfortunately, into the first primary cut. Boy, he's got to figure out that driver, that's for sure. Fairways hit, look at that round four, two fairways out of 10. Back to 16. Harrington uh, has been taking a long look. Got it, you had a chance to look at the lie? I did, Gary, and it's not very good. Uh, it's really uniform around the ball, but it is really thick. Uh, just six yards before he gets to the putting surface. I don't know that he can land this much further than the edge and expect to get it close. It's slightly uphill, but more across the green, so the ball will want to run down toward the front of the putting surface. It's a very simplistic green, though, where that hole is. I mean, there's nothing tricky about that. No, and Furyk will have a, a relatively easy birdie putt in. There's nothing crazy. It's just, just a tough lie. That's a good call, Donnie. He just flat chunked it. That might roll off the edge, huh? Or maybe not. 
trying to. Surprising, Dottie, that he did that poorly, or? It was, it was pretty bad, Johnny. Back at 15. Check in with Colin Montgomery, one off the lead. Just on the edge there, it looks like. Well, that's about as perfect a drive as you can hit on this hole. That's to be about honest as far you. down as you can get it. You've got that uh, little creek that runs out in front there about 300 yards down, so the player is laying up before it. It's a daunting shot, though. Look at that, folks. you got that tip of that bunker right at the base of the flag. It's way back in the corner, and spin works against you unless you fly it all the way to the hole. This is from 135, and he got a lot of club on it. There's that little, well, he got it inside the little cup there. That might come uh, back. It's going to come back a little bit. Yeah, it comes back quite a bit. That's a good shot, and the drive is the key, was the key there. Good look at this hole, Johnny. The par 4 15th uh, decision time off the tee, and how you're going to play it with that fairway uh, going hard to the left. Yeah, it's a very small fairway slanted downhill right to left, so it really plays narrow. You can get it down where Colin, you can go in with the short iron, but uh, you can see the flag stick is way in the back right there. There's a lot of tilt, and watch how the balls run off that back right and run down there, but uh, then, of course, the balls are in the corner come to the edge of the green. All right, from 15 to 16. Furyk's birdie putt, chance to tie the lead. Oh. Well, your heart just leaps. Yeah, Jimmy, try it, Jimmy! Back to 14. And Ogilvy now for his par. This has to be put outside the right edge. Oh boy. Can you believe how fast that turned? It looked I'm really good. You, looked like it was a foot from the hole and just dove left. I thought he had made it, didn't you? Well, you well, know the putt better than anybody. If it if it doesn't hop like that or whatever it did to get off line that quickly, Johnny. He had good pace on it to hold well, the line. 14. Ogilvy for bogey now. He won't forget this one from 123 yards. That's an expensive bogey. Up to 16. Far putt for Harrington. To remain at four over. Is it firm enough? Well, I've got a huge hop halfway there. Huge hop. Come on, Jimmy! Yeah, it feels in the tight. That's a pretty good little roar there. Yeah, Harrington bogeys 16, drops him to five over. The roar was filled from the primary cut. Slashes through. Absolutely incredible to be able to get that ball to do that coming out of that heavy rough. That's a big shot there. Real big shot. We'll be back in just a moment. Straight up six o'clock here on the East Coast. The 106 US Open Championship coming down to the final few holes. Bill Mickelson. Looking for another part of the American Slam, already with a PGA Championship and two Masters. Just a few holes left to decide it. Jim Furyk, who's already won it, one back, and this man looking to tie Mickelson for the lead at 15. Only one birdie on 15 today, Mike Weir. Can he read it right? Nope. That is a very unusual little spot back there. Guys, I don't think practiced at all to that hole location. Three holes left for Monty. 14. Can a ferry for a birdie? Back up the hill. He had a good shot. It just released and went all the way down. Nicely judged there. Just a moment ago at 16, 170 yard second shot for Steve Stricker. strike. He likes it. Be right. And it is. So Steve Strickle will have a short birdie putt, a chance to get it to six over. Back at 14. 
And Johnny, uh, Phil is defying our feeling that you have to hit fairways. Yeah, two fairways, uh, three birdies today were all on fairways missed. And uh, this is huge though. This will give him that two shot spread. And uh, with his talent and uh, experience and his momentum winning the last two majors, you know, it's not a gimme, but this is really an important putt to spread himself from the field. Well, Johnny, it's not a gimme, but it's not a hard one either. There's very little break in this, maybe inside the hole in the right, right center. Uh, the green's getting though, a little bit, uh, you know. A little bit. You don't want it to bounce offline, but uh, you need to hit the putt squarely. in New York. He's heard it before, Murph. We've talked about it all championship week long. It's never ended in a victory in this championship, but a two-shot lead with four to play. Well, he's got him whipped it to a froth, doesn't he? They're excited. Look at him. Look at these guys. <laughs> Turn to become just the second player in the modern era to win three majors in a row. Take another look at that stroke. That was nothing but solid. He knew he was going to hit it firm going back up the hill. And Keep playing, it in the hole. Yep. Yeah. And playing plus one golf today, Murph. You you talked about it hitting two fairways, Johnny. I have to bring it up earlier in the telecast. Yeah. You said the guy that's going to the guy that's going to win this championship is going to hit the most fairways. But Mickelson is proving today that he's just got more creativity and more magic in his bag with all the short shots and artistry shown from the rough. It's been an amazing show. You're right. Ogilvy now at 15, up ahead from 155. It's just so hard to get it. That'll funnel back down. There's that little cup there. We saw Colin get it up there, but that's not the hardest spot in the world. It's just a tough read to make. You can come close, but to make is almost luck. Ogilvy plus four, the last seven holes at one time. The sole leader in this championship. We go to 16. And the birdie putt for Steve Stricker. Just right edge. No problem for the man who five times has been in the top 10 of the putting stats on the PGA Tour. Leave Steve Stricker to six over. We go back to 15. Well, it's definitely not a driver. <laughs> Unless he wants to carry the creek. Talk about a ribbon of fairways. The narrowest here at That's, Wingfoot. Ball's obviously going. I don't know how much help we're going to get back here, back in these trees, but yeah, I'm scared anymore. Like that. Like that. You like four? Uh, I, I was thinking three. I mean, if, if you're interested in getting the ball down, I don't want it to go over too much because it, you know, it just runs on. Okay. Well, there you go. You I like I like four. By all means, that. you got it. Has there been a course that has been broken down more? Than Wingfoot by Bones and Mickelson. Right <laughs> well, the two of them are real, you know, they're technicians. They, they really know what they're doing. You can see that one little creek. It's really the only bit of water on this golf course that could come into play, and it really doesn't unless you're really sort of crazy. It's 22 yards wide, that fairway down there at the end. 22 yards when you're nervous. That is a small target. He's looking at it like it's not a gimme. Well, this is down the left center. We'll see what kind of bounce it gets when oh. it gets over the crest of the hill. Well, that's why I hit the four iron so it wouldn't run down through there. And uh, that's a pretty good leave, I think. He's got the ball below his feet on a downhill side hill lie, which is not an easy shot when you got to hit it to a right hole location. It requires a, a draw off a slice lie. Up ahead to 17. Jim Furyk second, 178 yards back center hole location. It's tough to get it back there. Yeah, huh? Johnny, only two birdies here all day. You look like you. Yeah, going it. a little left, but there's a little sideboard there. Yeah, better, that better may than he... just come down. All right. I don't think he had a clue that it was going to do that. He'd <laughs> given up on it. <laughs> I think it was a lot. Uh, turned out a lot better than he thought. Somebody could get it close by pulling it by accident long and left and having it run around there. He almost did it. Daddy. Well, same exact yardage. Under 78 yards. 
Got to be careful the toe of the club doesn't get caught by the three and a half inch rough. Right on the crease. His swing plane uh, doesn't make the crease worse or it can go right along it. Just and it get right along it. No, that's high and headed oh, right. On, you went a little deep and that will go underground. All right, guys, so Harrington struggling here at the finish. Back to the 16th, Montgomery's second shot. Good tee shot, right side of the fairway, 183 yards to the hole. It's a heck of a tee shot under pressure, Gary. That's narrow out there. It is just 24 yards wide here, 16. Birdie would be nice about now. This one looks pretty good here. Oh, will it stay there? Will it stay? Yes, it will. Okay. Well, he's getting a taste of it, isn't he? Yes, he is. You got to give him credit, Johnny. I think he's handling it very well. Uh, hasn't been in this position in a major championship in quite some time. Yeah, guys, he's had a taste of it, but bitter sweet in the end. Here's a guy that used to be a perennial top player in the world after 12 straight years in the top six on the European money list, fell to 28, fell out of the top 50 in the world golf rankings. Thought about it, thought about retiring for a while. It got so bad as game did. Look at that, 99 career starts in the U.S. without a win. Things started turning around, though, the last couple of years, second in the British Open. Well, he had a taste there at the British, so... Um be a great win there if he could get it this year. Uh, if he could just win one major, you know, for Colin, that would be big. Okay, important right, putt 15, here. Ogilvy for birdie. Up and over. Very slow. Uh, that'll get there. That was a good putt. He's hit some quality putts. Thought he hit at 14, was really well struck. And then this one he thought had a chance. A little bit of a Tiger Woods type of feel to this final day here. Everybody else kind of leaving the leaderboard at the top. And now it's Mickelson who is doing it. Sort of, yeah. That little wedge that Mickelson hit at 11, that was the key shot, I thought. That little chip pitching wedge. Ogilvy stays two behind with three holes to play. We go up to the green at 17. And Padraig Harrington once again taking a long look at uh, this little chip shot. Dottie, you've had a chance to look at the lie? I did, and it's, it's a little bit better than he had at the 16th. Uh, it's actually clear in front of the ball, but he does have a pretty good-sized clump right behind it and uh, going away from him once he gets the ball on the putting surface. He's pitching the ball uh, a little bit back uphill, which uh, gives him the luxury of perhaps being a little more aggressive with the shot. I can tell you there's more brown grass between he and the hole than there is green grass. It's getting a little toasty out here. I think he's taking dead aim, Dottie, or just trying to make par? Well, I think he'd take par and take his chances at 18. A lot of practice swings. And there's that downhill lie for Mickelson from the intermediate cut. This shot here, if I was catting for him, I'd say, hey, this is not a birdie hole. Nobody's birdieing it. And I got a tough lie. Just get the ball 30 feet underneath the hole to the left by that left edge of the TV tower. It's from 176. Just about right there. He might have been listening to you, John. I'd be the first one I'm right on all day, I think, with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tough guy to predict. Now Colin Montgomery at 16 for birdie. It's got just a little bit of hook to it is all, Gary. Should be a 
makeable putt here and a big one for Cohen. Fifth in the field and putts. Greens in regulation. There's a good one. Well, he knows how important that was, huh, Gary? As though he hit it right where he was looking. We'll go up to 17. Furek for birdie. Another guy who knows just how important this is. No, never a chance. That was low, low, low. Phil's dodging bullets. Yes, he is. No one can make a putt at the moment. The lead is two for Phil Mickelson. He's take another look at the, the birdie at 14. Just a very solid stroke. Gives him the two-shot lead. And you see the New York fans there behind him all the way. We'll be back to the U.S. Open in a moment. Well, on his way up to the 15th green, Roger, we heard Phil Mickelson say this is a tough two putt. And he's right. This is about 35 footer up over a ridge. Once it crosses a ridge, it's going downhill away from him to the right. Goes right in this part though. Shoots just a little bit. The guys have left it short. And I can't say that was real bad, but that's that is knee knocker time, huh, Roger? They all are now, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to have that length too many times. Trying to hang on to his two shot lead. 17. While we were away, talk about a knee knocker. Harrington for par. Nope. So Bokey's at 16 and 17 for Harrington. He's headed in the wrong direction, but the MetLife Blimp Snoopy one is headed in the right direction. He's flying high above Wingfoot Golf Club, providing us with these wonderful aerial views of the 106th U.S. Open Championship. So we go back to 15. Kenneth Ferry to remain at plus six. This doesn't seem like the ball wants to go in here at this hole. It really wobbles a lot, Roger, down there. Have you noticed that? Well, I've noticed that on a lot of greens. Uh, John's the first time I've seen this one, so I can't speak as to how it's butted all day. It's going to be his fifth bogey, not a single birdie for the co-leader with Mickelson. That was the unlikely duo in the final group here, but it's been the man ranked second in the world who's taken charge over the man ranked 102nd in the world, but he needs this par putt to keep that two shot cushion Raj. 30 similar to the birdie putt on huh, Roger. Yep it really is John not uh, dissimilar at all. All about the nerves and hitting it squarely hitting a solid putt. Well that ball went in for by about a sixteenth of an inch that could have lifted out on the left side. I thought he'd maybe spun it out of the top edge Roger. He's got some beefy par fours down the stretch here with a two shot lead in the championship that he's never won. And we go to one of those right now, the 450 yard par four, 18th. Jim Furyk has arrived here at plus five and he's in that tie for second now with Montgomery and Ogilvy. They're the closest to Mickelson right now. He already started his pre-shot routine once and has pulled the yardage book out now three times. He's got the three wood on Dottie. Yeah, I think it's a smart play. A little bit easier to shape, even though it is into the breeze. Well, it's that 282 that he was worried about with the drive. Well, the three wood, he, can, he doesn't have to draw it. He just hit it right at the bunker, left side of the bunker, and he'll have no problem. Right, it's 291 just into that bunker, so this is a really good play. I know he's thinking if I could somehow birdie this hole. That's that, a beauty. If I can get the plus four, I think he's thinking right now. Had a terrible bounce. Yep, and it rolls almost up against the fringe, and uh, I think he might be barely okay, but that is not sitting real great. It's just sitting like into the grain. 18, second toughest hole this week. We go over to 16. And Jeff Ogilvy from the second cut of the primary rough. 176 yards to the hole. And just hacking it down the fairway. He hopes it's in the fairway. Uh, yeah, well, I tell you what, it's getting a lot of run, John. It's uh, turning out okay. Yeah. A simple little pitch from there right up the face of the green. Now, well, 
back on the tee. So Mickelson can make a couple of good swings with the driver coming home, Johnny. Yeah, two fairways in regulation. He had one on the edge, a couple on the edge, but. Got leg left. This should set up well for him. He hasn't hit many quality cut shots. He has he? and he's hit more pulls than he's hit uh, quality cut shots. And he's trying to hit a release cut. That's what Rick Smith was saying. This ball down the right side, not cutting. Well, it's going to be oh, it's sitting up. In the uh, primary rough, but you're right. It looks like it's sitting fairly well. Up at 17, Colin Montgomery on the tee. Hole sets up beautifully for him. Moves a little left to right. That's his natural ball flight. He's overdone it. That's well right of the fairway. Give him a little extra roll, and it's in the dry stuff. Uh, but the green, Steve Stricker with his third. This is quick. Made it look easy. Yeah, he did. Hadn't stopped yet, though, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That's a big, uh, that's a tough hole location there. That is. That's How many birdies? Two all day long. Man. Up to 18. Luke Donald for par a moment ago. He was in position somewhat to begin the day, just five off the lead. Rolls it in there to stay at plus nine, so at no point did he think that was in. <laughs> and the Lukes reverberate here through Wingfoot. 16. Ogilvy's third. Decide how you're going to play it. You're going to carry it onto the green, or you're going to land it short and bounce it up. He plays it very effectively. So hanging there at five over. A good chance to save par. His first six holes today, minus two. His last nine plus four, and. Uh, uh, was kind of a trend that was set early today. We saw some good scoring uh, through the first six or seven holes, but a lot of players have struggled since then. I can't say that anybody has played a great 2006 U.S. Open. I mean, Tita Green or been on fire, or really dominated, you know, and hit great shots. It, it just sort of the course has just sort of pulled everybody down a little. It's a tough course. Well, we're on our way to the next USGA Championship in Newport. That's where Tiger put away his second of his three straight U.S. Amateur Championships. It's the women's turn. Don't miss the most celebrated players in the game, including Annika Sorenstam. And yes, Michelle Wee will be there to look to break through with her first win as a professional. It's the U.S. Women's Open. Sure. Coverage begins Saturday, July 1st on should, NBC. Should be super exciting. The uh, women's game has really come on. That uh, last year's Women's Open, I thought was as compelling as any golf of the year. Birdie Kim holding it out. Yeah, Morgan Seven Trussell standing holes. there. Yep. All right, here's Furick at 18. Last gasps coming up for the guys chasing Mickelson here, and there just hasn't been any birdies at 17 and 18, Johnny. A total of five birdies have been made at 17 and 18 today. And as you look at the leaderboard, unless Mickelson backs up, that's what all these guys need. Yeah, if, if he can get in at five, Mickelson could play the last three, two, a couple over. There's no doubt about that. Could. It's always in the cards here. He's in the rough, Pickleson is. This is not an easy shot with this fringe here, though. Actually, Johnny, the lie is very good, yeah. 184 yards. Um, it's actually just a little bit down grain. He doesn't like it for some, well, maybe he does. It's headed left. He had a hook, huh? Didn't that grass have turned the club over or something? It shouldn't have. I just don't think it was a very good swing at, at the necessary time. At the 17th, Steve Stricker for par. Well, that's sort of an unusual little break there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, actually uh, moving left. Didn't appear that it would, but uh, Steve Stricker drops back to seven over. He's closing holes. 
Not many pars being made. So we go to 18. And visit the place where Harrington had his undoing yesterday. Padraig Harrington would be tied for the lead right now, if not for a triple bogey on this hole yesterday. He's sitting right in the middle of the fairway today, but boy, he wishes he could have that one back no yesterday, one Johnny. Yes. Late in the day when he was just a couple shots off the lead or so. This hole can be had. That hole location is in a funnel. If you just hit it in the middle of the green, it'll come right by the hole. It's the historic Bobby Jones hole out position. Last hole, 72nd hole, he made the putt. Made the 12 footer curling left to righter to Ty Al Espinosa after blowing a huge lead here, which shocked a lot of people, went on to win the playoff okay. the next day. At the 17th, Colin Montgomery's second out of the right rough. Good news is he's got it on the area where the galleries walked the grass down. We saw the shot yesterday, didn't we? Wasn't it by Ogilvy or something? Yes, oh. Jeff Ogilvy hit oh, it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that ball clipped the tree, and I think it helped it. It would have been long. Well, that's nicely done into the center of the green. Back at 16, Nicholson. How's the lie, Roger? Well, actually, uh, Kenneth Ferry will be first to play. 187 yards of the hole just off the edge of the fairway. Good lie. In the group in front, Jeff Ogilvy was able to uh, knock in that putt for par. Go. He's trying to get that thing to chase up. This doesn't quite do it. Still fighting, Gary. Yes, he is. You got to give him credit, John. I mean, uh, it's only five over today. That's right. No, nobody gave him a chance either. All right, now Mickelson. 174 got a pretty good lie. It is thick, but sitting up a little bit. Oh, hey! Hey, get get oh, this is a pretty good looking shot if it gets up. Oh. No. Bunker beautifully positioned about 20 yards short of the green. That just barely went in, didn't it? Yeah. That could have bounced straight if it wouldn't hit the bunker. Uh -oh. Uh oh Oh my word. That is the worst we've seen all week right there. That will call for all of his short game magic. Up at 17. Jeff Ogilvy on the tee. Way right, he's pointing Poulter's. Yeah, that uh, was where he hit it yesterday, and he played the miraculous second shot. Well, these people are uh, seeing a lot of golf balls <laughs> in the right on 17. So we go back to 18. Jim Furick gets out of the bunker and practices the swings. One of the best players you'll find anywhere. Just a little bit of a downhill lie. Seen a number of holdouts from Furick through the years. Well, you can see he's trying to read the green. No, he's definitely thinking about making this, Johnny. He's got that kind of looping swing, Johnny, that you like out of the bunker. Yeah, it drops it in. Goes out and then in. Very well done. But the best that Furick will be able to post is plus five. Well, Mickelson buried under the lip. You know, who knows? Mickelson still got two super hard holes if he bogeys 16, and he still got two super hard holes on 17 and 18. I'm sure Furick's thinking about that three buddy had though. So stick around, Jim. Look at that lie, Gary. Yeah, it is in there deep. I guess the good news, though, Roger, is he's left-handed. He's going to be able to stand in the bunker and not have an awkward stance at all. Well, absolutely. Uh, the ball is uh, pretty buried, though, not in a good spot. That 64 degree comes in handy here, guys, because it's sharper edges, doesn't have a lot of bounce to it, so he can really dig here. It's hard to get the right distance, though, isn't it? He's aiming way left for a pull. Up the edges when it's that deep. He swung awfully hard and barely got it out. Up at 17, Montgomery with a lengthy birdie putt. Ball moved pretty hard to the right at the end. How about this one for Colin Montgomery? Oh my goodness! What a birdie! 
That's the punt of the championship right there, Gary. He might be tied for the championship in just a couple of moments with Nicholson's position over at 16, Gary. I think he's thinking about crying right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, serious. It, he looks very emotional, Johnny. That's Harrington's ball coming toward the hole for Birdie at 18. So he's got a long putt to get plus six on the board. Colin Montgomery putting a charge into this thing. What a putt. The M&M boys here at Wingfoot, Monty and Mickelson, could be tied in just a couple of moments. Another look at the Monty putt. You can see him wiping his nose. I mean, this thing, there's a shot of adrenaline that's gone through his system that he just, almost a grateful feeling, I think, of this opportunity. His caddy's going. All that disappointment, Oakmont, the playoff for Lauren Roberts and Ernie Els. On a hot, sweltering day at Oakmont, and then in Congressional in '97, where it came unraveled on the 71st hole. Back at 16, Mickelson choosing the putter from uh, off the green. Putting through this uh, bit of fringe quite a little bit. It's going to be a tough putt to get to the hole uphill. Steeply uphill. Oh, 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 got it there. Oh. Well, Colin Montgomery got a share of the lead. And Montgomery has a hole coming up that he's talked about before the championship began. I remember Monty remarking that that dog leg left at 18 doesn't set up well for his fade shot, but he's going to have to figure out a way to negotiate it, although he's made fours every day so far at 18. You know, his wild drives, Gary. He Finally caught up to him on this hole. Yeah. All right. Bogey five at 16. He's four over par. We go to 18. And this to post the plus five. If Eric wants to take another look, he has a habit of backing off, but that's a little different type of back off. He wanted to get one more look from the other side. He's being extremely deliberate this last hour. He also took a really good look at the leaderboard. Both he and Fluff Cowan studied it while Har Harrington was putting. They know exactly what the deal is. Who knows? This could be a putt for a spot on a playoff. This is moves right, doesn't it, Dottie? Yes, it does, Johnny. Why he's just grinding away, Dottie? Keep thinking back to that three putt by Furick at 15, which cost him a. Big bogey, his only bogey of this backside. Wow. The grinder of all grinders doing his thing here on the 72nd hole of the open. Can't afford to have a misread. See him grimace on that. That was not that hard of a putt, except for the situation. Just basically, you could hit a left edge or just outside and make it. Plus six doesn't look near as good. No, six is no chance, I don't think. Got a couple of plus fours behind them and Monty and Mickelson. Ogilvy at plus five. Harrington has already missed his par putt, so Harrington. <laughs> Sputters down the stretch with three straight bogeys and that one. We'll see what they end up, but if they end up at plus five, Furek will think about that one for a while. Yeah, the putt at three putt at 15 and then that putt at 18. Those were the two key shot, uh, sort of missteps by Furek. Harrington at plus seven. Looks like he'll have to wait another day for his shot at a major. And Monty waiting on the tee at 18. We go to the tee, a hole back with the man he's tied with, Gary. Nicholson, 
with the driver once again. You see the big Norway spruce here about 100 yards off the tee. That's what forces the players to try to shape the ball from left to right. Didn't have to hit a driver. Well, that's way in the rough. Oh my goodness. That driver, I'm, I'd be going with the, the forward if I was him at this point because he could drive it right through the dog leg, couldn't he, if he doesn't hook it? I would think so, Johnny, and it's got to be easy to turn the ball uh, the direction he's trying to turn it with a more lofted club. This looks like a nice line. Well, this is his third shot, Johnny. He drove it way right, couldn't even punch out to the fairway. That was a muffy lie there. Well, that will get hung up, so Ogilvy struggling as well. He's well closing see. holes, <laughs> taking their toll. We go to 18. Biggest tee shot of his career, Johnny. This par four 18 tied for the lead in the U.S. Open. All the disappointments through the years. He's well, right on the thanks. cusp. Mickelson in trouble at 17. A par here might be good enough to get it done. He's got a great chance. If he can make four here, I think it's better than 50 50 right now that he's going to win the open outright. Stop, uh, lady policeman. Just keep your arms still, please. Thank you. Just a little bit of breeze, Johnny. His face here, he's got it teed up on the right hand side, so evidently going to play a cut. Good. Tell you what, Mark, if he could step up and hit that shot, knowing it doesn't fit his shot shape with a championship on the line, hats off to Monty. In the fairway at 18. Mickelson, is he going to let another U.S. Open slip away? Jeff Ogilvie's fourth at the par four 17th. The line's good. The line's good. Oh my. <laughs> what a par. <laughs> that is, that's Ogilvie. Ogilvie. Uh -huh. He goes on to get into a playoff, Johnny, or have a chance to win this thing. It's going to be his short game that has held him in there. As we go back uh, and see what's going on with Mickelson, Roger. Well, Mickelson's tee shot uh, flew into a plastic garbage bag on the side of the fairway, a garbage can, and uh, came to rest inside the garbage can amongst the beer cans. And uh, of course, he's gotten relief from that. He's dropped the ball immediately underneath the spot where it had come to rest in the garbage can and uh, has a reasonable lie in the hard pan. What about the trees? Well, he's going to hit a cut, John. I mean, he does have to hit a cut, but he's going to have a, a lie where he can play a cut, a tight lie. If it had been in a heavier rough, he wouldn't have had any opportunity probably to do that. But so he's got a shot. How There's big, no a, how big a cut are we talking about? Well, you were talking about uh, it'll require a lot of his skill. I'm going to say he's going to have to start it at the, at the right edge of the right bunker and then slice it probably 20 yards or so. To a very difficult hole location. Well, and a very narrow green, too, Johnny. It's only about 14 yards across between those bunkers. Well, he's just trying to make a par, I would think, from here, knowing. Uh, yeah. I would think. <laughs> so, I mean, we're, you know, anywhere around the green, he can get it up and in. He just needs to hit a pretty good shot that's not dead like the last hole. That's right. I'm sure when he saw where his ball came to rest, he was uh, thankful. Yeah, total of 53, 31. Is that ball above his feet, though? Not really, Johnny, no. It looks like it on TV. In a green spot that looks like it has some juicier grass, is that right? A little bit, but uh, again, it's not bad. Better than he thought he would get. Yeah! He's got this ball cutting. It's just right of the hole. How about that? Pretty good shot there. Beautifully played. He's gotten it up and down from every other place this week at Wingfoot. It might as well get it from a trash can, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's 
take a, another look. See him hold off that club face, keeping it open to make sure the ball fades. And now he uh, does a little Sergio imitation there, kind of hustling up to uh, his version. Hey, well. <laughs> I didn't see a scissor kick, Gary. <laughs> I probably won't. <laughs> All right, there's another look from above. Just threads it under one tree and slides it by the other. But we're talking about the guy that got about three inches off the ground after winning the Masters for his first major title, right, Gary? Well, that's exactly right, Dan. But, you know, it's fun to watch him play in those situations. He really plays golf like an artist when he does stuff like that. And Ferry playing his third. The crowd's uh, starting to get very vocal late in the afternoon here, and it's uh, starting to get to Kenny Fair a little bit. Yeah, it's a very well played shot. And sure, he's disappointed, but uh, he's really handled himself pretty nicely. Position he's never been in before. Up at 18. VJ Singh playing with Colin Montgomery, punching out. He's at plus eight, Mark. Yeah, he has really finished very poorly. He hooks this one right around the tree, though. It's going to end up short, but a pretty good shot. He actually drove the ball into the champion's pavilion. There it is right down in front of one of those big shoulders. And Monty has been waiting nervously out there for this second. Mark, what's he got? Well, he's got 171 yards. He is on the right side of the fairway, and so is the whole location on the right side of the green. And I don't think he knows exactly how he stands right now. He's got the perfect ball flight to knock it close to this right hole location at the high fade. It, and it's a funnel down there. If he can hit a good shot, he's going to get it inside 12 feet. Well, he's been waiting down there, Johnny, but he's been waiting nearly two decades well, for a major championship. So what's another minute or two here? Right? I'm surprised he just switched clubs when you've got you've had 10 minutes to figure it out. This one is just a little right of the flag. It's short, way short. He said, what kind of shot is that? Right when it left his club, he knew it was off. And he's buried. I, I'm really surprised he switched clubs after ha pulling out the other one. 17. Lengthy birdie putt for Mickelson. A little uphill moving to the right, huh? Is it firm enough? Is it firm enough? No. As Mickelson was walking up to the green, he takes a bit look at the big scoreboard. It's exactly where he stands, and it's like, hey. <laughs> All right, to 18T. Jeff Ogilvy alive by virtue of his par saver at 17 at plus five. One back. It's a good drive. It's very narrow down there, about 24 yards wide with an angle. And he's a long hitter, and he's hit a beauty. Who, who knows, Johnny? He may not need a birdie here. A par, a plus five. Right in a divot. Be okay. Right in a divot, I think. I think it went right in a divot. Just on the front of it, though. Hard to tell exactly no, where. No, it went in the divot. It's just whether it just rolled out the front of it. comes up amid a smattering of reaction. I think everybody's just a little. That was just literally open amazed. pressure. Absolutely open pressure. That shot, he hadn't hit an iron like that probably in five years. I mean, that was just really bad. Well, Mark, what kind of lie is this? What kind of shot is this? Well, the lie is not good. And the other problem is there's a big nose in the front right corner of the screen, so. He will be landing it on the down slope and probably trying to run it by the hole and let it come back. BJ's going to play first. He doesn't have much of a shot. He got it. Well, he can go around it. Can he? A horn just went off, and the crowd reacts to that. 
Talk about bad timing. I think Monty will watch this one very closely to see how the ball reacts on the green. All right, before we get to the drama at 18, back at 17 for all that is left for another par, Gary, <laughs> with another missed fairway. Yeah, well, he got very fortunate. Uh, here, the ball was all the way over into the area where the gallery had walked it down, so. Well, he has studied the scoreboard and left this green intensely. He knows how it stands. Yeah. All right. Good par at the 71st, and there's still four over. Gary, this is one of the greatest Houdini acts hitting two fairways. I Mickelson. can't ever remember seeing anything better, Dan, that's for sure. All right, Monty from the rough at 18. It's juicy. Pops it up and way long. He might play that, that the way the ball will come back. Maybe, nope, but it hangs up. Just hit it in the only spots you have no chance, huh, Mark? Just, just brutal here. Watch this, fix it up quick. Watch what happens at impact. He keeps the hands going pretty good. I guess he was playing it way over to the left. But that was a brutal second shot. Right now, Monty needs another bomb like the one he had at 17, but this for par. Well, he needs to be just a little careful with the pace on this one too, Johnny, because if you get it racing by the hole, he needs one of those Greg Norman type of <laughs> par savers here at the 72nd hole. Norman with that curling 40 footer. To get Actually, into the playoff. He, Dan, he hit the second shot like Norman hit the second shot here almost. Yeah. Norman's was farther right. Speaking of 1984, Fuzzy Zeller out in the fairway at 18. Norman went long and right with a six iron, hit his third to this point, just on the collar there. And the Shark knocked it in to get into the playoff. He eventually lost the next day with Fuzzy Zeller, but a part of the legend and lore here at Wingfoot. <laughs> there was Fuzzy waving the flag, the towel out in the fairway. But a lot of historic stuff has happened here including 1929 when Bobby Jones made his 12 footer. Monty well outside of that here for par. This one's not going in. This one might not go in and, uh, for a while. Boy, this is sad. It is difficult to watch when you think about all the close calls that Montgomery has had. I mean, it's Mickelson has not won this championship either and has been a runner up three times. But this man and all that's happened to him to get this close. Mickelson was just told by the walking score. He asked, wanted to know and was told that Monty's par putt was missed. You know, what he doesn't know is that Ogilvy is in birdie position and he probably isn't even factoring in Ogilvy. And there it is, Johnny. It is right in front of that. And, and the worst part of it is a sand filled divot, which is he's probably thinking, come on, I got a chance to win the US Open and I go in a sand filled divot. I'm thinking Payne Stewart at Olympic Club. Remember that in 98? This one's I think even worse. This has got a lot of green sand, greenish gray sand in there. Just a part of the game. But this sport. important putt right here, who knows what Phil might do. He's since he's hit two fairways. Is to put plus five and take the lead in the clubhouse. Boy, sitting in the middle or in the perfect spot in the fairway, looking at a birdie, making six. Yowzer. That'll haunt him for a while. Looks like Colin Montgomery is going to be 0 for 58 in major championships. I mean, he is I tell a modern-day Mickelson. If he could have made four here, forget the three, he had a great chance. All right, BJ for par. To finish his day with a 73. And then clear the stage for the final two groups. Oh, will be out there with a chance here behind him. 
Racing pokes it in, and he's got his seventh consecutive top ten in a major championship. Yeah, he could have won this week if he made a few more putts. But tie, tie for six, VJ. Colin Montgomery will wonder if there'll ever be another chance. That was a golden opportunity. All right. Poulter now. Back behind down the fairway. Chewing on that gum. He's at plus nine, not a factor. But he's playing with a man who is a factor, Jeff Ogilvy at plus five, and look at his position. Well, that's a really bad break, but he can get on it. He could hit a little bit of one groove down and try to hit a little bit of a cut. It doesn't look like he's playing that shot. Pretty darn close to the hole. If that had gone another two feet in the air, it would have gone down the hill right next to the flag. That was really two horrendous breaks in a row. There it is out of this divot. Let's see if he gets sand at on this on the wrong side of the ball when he hits it. Yeah, it'll be a little bit, just enough to come up short. Just about that much. All right, tee shot for Mickelson. It's better be a forward. <laughs> Doesn't like this, this ball one. going way left, way way left. Oh, what a bounce out into the rough to the right. But I don't think that'll leave him much. Off of the hospitality tent. I'll tell you what. Right now, Ben Hogan is officially rolled over in his grave. Well, Johnny, I do believe he knows what score Colin Montgomery made here at the last. The scoreboard to the left of the 17th green. The score went up there, and the fans around the 18th team started to cheer. So and I think he knows five wins. And he's, he's got a bare lie. He's gone from the garbage can on 17 to the corporate 10 on 18. I cannot believe he didn't hit forward there. Kenneth Ferry off the tee now. Plus eight. Beautiful tee shot. Just being drawn along with the drama here between Mickelson and Ogilvy. And yeah, that can ball may be in the divot. Anything you can detect here, Johnny, from this swing? It's just a classic. You don't release your right side, uh, left side in his case. Comes down pretty good shape there. It maybe overswung a little. He's late coming into it. He releases probably three inches late, possibly because of nervous, nervousness and also overswinging. Face is open and out it goes. Best score in right now is plus six. This man Ogilvy is at plus five with a delicate look at the giant shoulder on that front right this is portion a, of the screen. This is absolutely a crazy shot right here, how tough this is. This is where you need a 64 degree wedge. But he could play it. He could do it. But under this pressure, it's tough. Did he hit it? Oh, yes, he did. Giving himself a chance. Boy, he a tough him. break on the divot. He put a lot of spin on that ball. This he really, be, really grabbed the grooves. One hard earned four for Ogilvy if he's able to get this putt down. And post plus five. Look at he opens the face, taking a big gamble, and just hits it perfectly. I mean, just a beautiful strike there. Just the third U.S. Open for the 29-year-old from Melbourne, Australia, who makes his home here in the United States and Arizona. Couple of PGA Tour wins. And a big one earlier this year in the match play championship. And considered by many to be one of the stars of the future on tour. And you just saw Norman's 
exploits here back in 84 here at Wingfoot. Denied so many major championships, heartbroken by a number of uh, miraculous shots at great times and championships. We'll see if Ogilvy could kind of maybe make up a little. Who knows? We'll see. But here's Poulter to play before. While we wait, Roger, what about a report on Mickelson's situation and lie? Well, it's out where the gallery has walked, so uh, the lie is clean, and he does have some kind of an opening uh, where he'd have to play a high, big slice, but he has the lie where he could try to play it from 210 yards, so let's see what happens. I can't imagine him pitching out, Johnny. <laughs> I just can't see it. I feel like I'm watching Seve Ballesteros. All right, before Ogilvy's par attempt, Poulter for birdie. This is the Norman putt, isn't it? is going to put plus nine on the board 74 second to last group of this championship Sunday at the open but there's Mickelson out there looking up ahead as Ogilvy has a par putt coming up 74 for Poulter no birdies If Ogilvy doesn't make this, it'll make it a lot easier for Mickelson, who could put it away with a bogey. Well, he's got a hook putt. It's not, the, not the most brutal putt there ever was, but under the situation, the hole probably looks like a thimble. Roar down under if this falls. And it does. Plus five is the lead right now. And Ogilvy owns it. That was a courageous par out of that divot that he was in, the sand filled divot. And to hit, get that up and in from short of the green was miraculous. And that's good plan. 71 70, 72 72. So a par by Mickelson at 18 can win it. A bogey, we've got a playoff. Well, I always thought precision golf was the key to winning U.S. Opens, but I guess I'm just getting old. <laughs> well, it would almost be fitting if Mickelson scrambles out of this predicament to put away the U.S. Open because that's the kind of week it's been for him. Open for Phil Everybody Mickelson, 7 o'clock here please. Eastern Time, Wingfoot Watch Golf Club, 5th U.S. Open being staged here. Jeff Ogilvy of Australia has just posted plus 5 in the clubhouse. The leader there, but Mickelson's 4 could win it here. Tough spot from 210. Oh, no, it's caught an elm tree solid. And I believe it's gone backwards. And he still has got to be in a very bad situation, blocked out from the green. Ogilvy might be signing the winning card. Wow, you see the shock on his face right now. He knows he's hit a horrendous shot. 
Just look at this sullen look right there. It's like ashen look. Like he aged five years on that shot. Monty let it slip away earlier. Oh, Mickelson is hey on the cusp ten of it. yards back so I can see the pin, please. That whole group behind the three. Behind the three. Get behind the three. Does he have a shot, Roger? Well, Johnny, he is trying to see the flag. For him to play on that line, he would have to keep the ball unbelievably low. I don't know how the shot could work out. Really. Uh, but it may be all he has. I don't think he can play over the trees from here and get a shot at the green. Is it lie just clean as a whistle or is it sitting down? Is it good? It's sitting down just a shade. That last shot, did he hit that fat? It sounded like well, it was heavy. It might have been. It didn't, he certainly didn't get the altitude on it. I thought he would. I think he was trying to lift it. When you do that, your belly pops out and you hit it heavy. Traveled about it is down 25 grain. yards is all it did after hitting the tree. 65 front. Okay. You thinking this or nine? Front edge. In this or nine? Well, that, that makes it 73 over the false front. So I'm, I'm definitely not thinking nine at all. Okay. So where's he going to hit this, Roger? Right over like everything? He's got an eight, and he's going to try to hoist it up across these trees in front of him. He's going to have to get it up quickly. Well, he's taking a chance to lose that open out right here if he doesn't pull us off, he doesn't make it through the trees. You know, he's going to lose the open. Remember, a bogey gets him in a playoff. He could play for the playoff, you know. You don't have to. Go for the gusto here. This the third. He's playing it forward. Get up! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's hit it very high, but way left. He's going to try to get it up and in from. Well, it's got the oh, front left bunker. A fried egg in there. It is just implanted in that bunker, and Ogilvy has been watching all of it. This is a nightmare right here. Absolutely, the you couldn't have worse decisions than he's had I think on this hole I don't care who you are I know you all love Phil but come on you just got to make par on this hole you could hit a two iron three iron off the tee another long iron onto the green two putt and say see you later you don't have to run down the last stretch on a white stallion you know you can limp in there and say thanks for the trophy well it is going to be some up and down that's going to be need to be mated when he to, sees this lie, he to get into plus five. I mean, it is just an awful lie. Just crazy shot selection. Just. I'm yeah. sure Jack Nicholas is there in Florida and he's thinking, man, Phil. Mentioned Ogilvy has been watching. He saw it. I mean, he's got a great chance to win the open. He had no idea he was going to win the open. Mickelson needs to get it up and down. And if he does it, Ogilvy's the U.S. Open champion. Ferry out with his second. 151. Waiting for oh, quite a while for all the hubbub to die down. People crossing around. This is a good looking shot here. This is one bizarre finish. You can see that pole location was really in a funnel if a guy would hit a quality iron like that. And Phil, I admire your smile tonight right now, but I don't know how you're doing it. Nicholson had a two-shot lead with three holes to play. Ahead of him, Colin Montgomery doubled 18. Mickelson looking like that might happen to him, and the man from down under could emerge as the champion. We're going to get him one lift as he comes up here to try to pull off the improbable. I want to see the look on his face when he sees where that ball is. Man, he got a couple bad breaks on the lies, didn't he? Roger, can you hear me? Yes, Johnny, I can hear you. Is this, is there a chance on this shot? 
Well, if it were anybody other than Phil, I'd say <laughs> no. I mean, is it going to run right off the green, or can it he? It has a very real possibility of doing that if he gets it to the green. It's buried pretty good, all above his feet. If he lands it just a little close, uh, just onto the green, can he get it close? Uh, it's a wild scene right it's here. It's pretty loud down there. It's a wild scene. It's almost like a football game. Playoff as Ogilvy looks on, getting closer and closer to making it official. Mickelson's going to have one last try. The runner up at Beth Page in 02. A costly three putt a couple of years ago at Shinnecock. 99 was the last time he played and the only time he played in the final group on a U.S. Open Sunday before today. And it looked like this championship was going to be his. Finally, he was going to continue on this march of sorts to either the Mickel Slam or the Grand Slam. But this is one shot left to see if we're going to continue that ride. You got to be a little bit in shock, Roger. Well, I would certainly think he has to be, Johnny. Uh... You know, I, I just don't know sometimes when I watch Bill play. I mean, it's always rambling, always gambling. And, you know, sometimes making bogey's good. You just got to take your medicine. Well, it's a good time to pull on that wing foot magic that Norman had, that Jones had on this 72nd hole. Well, feel the thrill. See if he can knock it in. Survives Wingfoot and wins the United States Open. When everybody came crashing down around him, hugging his wife Julie, a native Texan. And to be honest with you, one of the worst collapses in U.S. <laughs> Open history by Phil Mickelson. And you can't forget about what happened to Colin Montgomery as well. Oh, man. Came to 18, situated right out of the fairway, left his second shot short, ended up with a double bogey. He, he can't believe it. He won. I mean, he, there was no way that he was going to get any better than a playoff. <laughs> Just the second Australian ever to win this championship. David Graham at Marion pulled it off 25 years ago in 1981. Well, I said at the turn, you better start missing, hitting some fairways, Roger. And you can't win this Open Championship missing every fairway but two. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why he didn't throttle back more often and just try to get the ball in play, John. I just don't know why. Well, I could see the going for it until 18, 72nd hole. But when you, in that position, you just win ugly, baby. Maybe I'm Al Davis of the golf world. But All right. Kenneth Ferry is capping off a little Cinderella week for him. Final group here with Mickelson. Still going to be a high finish for Ferry. That'll get him in what next year and top 15. Johnny getting a next year's open at Oakmont. Yeah. Top eight get into next year's Masters. So this is a putt to get him into the Masters. Probably doesn't know it. No, he doesn't know it. <laughs> but it's Just, a big one. Watch out. He can make a triple here. Not that it's going to matter to him, but Nicholson for double. And wouldn't 
Wouldn't you know it? It's going to be another runner-up finish for Phil Mickelson in a U.S. Open. Improbable. But it's happened again. Led by two with three to play. Play the last three holes in plus three. All that momentum he's built up in the last two majors, this one really hurts. He's never won the United States Open. He wanted it more than any other. He had it. Four times a runner up in this championship. Johnny now tied for the most in history. Ferry for a trip to Augusta. He'll get there. That's a good story. Superman belt buckle is headed to Augusta. Ferry doesn't make a birdie in his last 31 holes. And Mickelson's magical ride ends in New York again. Just incredible. That's the only word for it. I was already gearing up for the playoff after that tee shot. And Ogilvy, we talked about surviving his plus five, 285, the highest score to win an open since the championship was staged right here at Wingfoot 32 years ago, plus seven by Hale Irwin. His father, Michael, at home on Father's Day in Melbourne, Australia, started him off in the game of golf at the age of six. His mom, Judy, watching as well. It's a happy Monday morning in Melbourne. <laughs> where Jeff Ogilvie is the US Open champion. Keep it right here. We hope to talk with the men that crumbled around Ogilvie today in the 72nd hole, Mickelson and Montgomery. So there it is, the final leaderboard in the 106th edition, the fifth edition here at Wingfoot. Plus five wins it for Ogilvie. And his final round of 72 plus two. And the big shot for Ogilvy, remember, at the 17th from just in front of the long stuff. Looked like he was out of it for par. And then the tough break, he got at 18 when he hit it in the divot. Able to get it up and down to win the biggest championship of his career. Still somewhat of a surreal atmosphere around the 72nd hole at this 106 U.S. Open. Let's show you a little bit how we got to that moment. Jim Furyk looking for his second Open title had this par putt at 18 to post plus five, which ended up winning the championship. We talked about how he'd think about it if he missed it. He's going to be thinking about it. It would have gotten him into a playoff with Ogilvy. Colin Montgomery second at 18. He says, what kind of shot was that? Couldn't have hit it in a worse spot. Montgomery with a double bogey fold at 18. Ogilvy's fourth at 17. We just showed it to you before we went to break. This was for par when it looked like he was out of it. He stayed at plus five. And then he got the bad break with a divot at 18. And he left his second short, got it up and down for par to get plus five on the board and take the leader in the clubhouse. And then Mickelson on the tee at 18. Well, this shot, he overswung. He shouldn't have hit the driver. I mean, it just was a horrendous shot and even a worse club selection. Definitely should have been the forward, if nothing else. I would have maybe thought about a long iron off that tee. When a par, would have won it. Would have won it. right. You want four option five. You don't want birdie options. So this six. was the second. And this shot here, the this shot about here. 25 yards, Johnny. This shot here, he probably shouldn't even have tried. He should have put it probably in front of the green down where Ogilvy got it up and in with his great 64 degree wedge. And then here again, he tries an impossible shot, had to pop his belly out to get it up over that tree. And he gets a bad break, a bad shot, but a horrendous break to bury there. If he doesn't bury, he probably knowing him would have got it up and in. And it's like a, it was Phil's birthday this week, but he gave a present to Ogilvy. Who would have ever thought? Jeff Ogilvy, the winner. And you talk about the massacre at Wingfoot in 74. How about the 18th hole massacre here today in 2006 through 17? There was the position of all the players 
and how they ended up after they played 18, except for Ogilvy, who was plus five and ended up getting it up and down and to Colin get underneath every ball. Colin Montgomery sitting there right in the driver's seat, and a beautiful iron shot would have put him there to win it and uh, doesn't even get in the playoff. Instead, there's Ogilvy. It becomes just the second go Aussie right, to get it done. To the right behind Out with his wife, Julie. To bask in the sun here at Wingfoot. Nine different Australians have won on the PGA Tour the last couple of years, but they hadn't won a major. Oh, go with it, go ahead, go with it. And with all the heartbreaks that Greg Norman has endured through the years of major championships, including right here at Wingfoot, it is 29-year-old Jeff Ogilvy, who was one of those who watched Norman on television from his home country and saw those tough breaks. He ends up hoisting the trophy here at Wingfoot. Uh, it hurts. It hurts to watch that finish. So he joins Jones, Casper, Irwin, and Fuzzy Zeller as champions at Wingfoot. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Walter Driver, President of the United States Golf Association. On behalf of the United States Golf Association, please join me in welcoming the 106th United States Open champion, Jeff Ogilvie. I have to thank all the Australians in the crowd and all the ones who are pretending like they're Australian. Um, this is, uh, for a foreigner in a place like this, this is probably the best fans I've ever seen anywhere in the world. So you've got to pat yourselves on the back. This is the funnest place to play in the world uh, because of you guys. Um, and what a golf course, huh? This is, um, this is a pretty special place, the history here. Obviously one of the toughest golf courses we've ever seen set up, tougher than we've seen, tougher than I've ever seen anything else. Um, so just to hang on and to finish the way I did and to, to hang on, um, yeah, I don't really have the words, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, I feel for Phil, I know he was the home time, he was almost the hometown favorite to win, but, um, He's won a few majors recently, so I can uh, maybe take one away. Thank you. Jeff, congratulations. It really was a battle of attrition out there all four days. Uh, you beat the field. Did Wingfoot beat you all? I think it did. I mean, I think uh, Wingfoot can hold its head up pretty high. It, it definitely won this week. Um, well, I mean, normally not a big scoreboard watcher, but this week it was actually, it helped you to watch the scoreboard because you saw everyone else was making bogeys as well. You make a bogey, you look over and everyone else made a bogey and you're like, wow, it must be pretty hard out here. So I just kept hanging on and 17, I thought I was gone and I had obviously a career shot to chip it in and then up 18, I really thought I'd hold my second shot. I mean, it was all over it. It was straight on line and found a soft spot in the green and went all the way back and then hit a great chip shot and got up and down. I mean, it was a, a pretty special way to finish, and I'm pretty excited about it. Thanks. You parred the last four holes, which under these conditions is a charge. But like you said, you had to chip in for par on 17. And then the gutty up and down after the tough break of having your shot roll back and off the green, the second shot, to salvage par. At that point, you're thinking what? Outside shot at a playoff? Well, I thought, actually, uh, I thought Colin had made bogey on the last, not six. Um, and when I saw that, I thought, well, if I, can, if I can get this up and down and make five, this is a tough hole. Anything can happen on this hole. I thought, if Phil misses the fairway, he's really going to struggle to make par, and maybe we can play, to, play tomorrow, you know? Um, I never expected to win it outright at finishing at five over, but um, funny things happen sometimes. 
This uh, location has significance for you. I know you're a student of golf, especially the Australian players, the great Aussies who have preceded you. It was here on this 18th green that Greg Norman in 1984 made a tremendous putt to get into a playoff with Fuzzy Zeller, though he eventually lost it. But this setting and where you now take your place in the history of your countrymen in the sport means something to you. It really does. I mean, that's one of the first memories of uh, watching Greg I've got is watching Fuzzy wave the flag because he thinks Greg holds it across the green for a for a birdie, but he holds it for a par. Um, and then the playoff, he lo happened to lose a playoff, but I uh, forever, and they kept talking about wing foot, wing foot, that's one of the best courses in the world, it's one of the toughest courses in the world. Um, and uh, the first time I came here was about Monday, two weeks ago, and it was, uh, I was impressed from the first moment. I was really happy with what I saw. It, uh, wow, I mean, how can you, I mean, it beats you up, but you still enjoy every moment playing in a place like this. So now you're the first Aussie to win the U.S. Open since David Graham in 81, first to win a major since Steve Elkington took the PGA in 95, and more significantly on a personal basis, this is Father's Day in the States. Your wife, Julie, is expecting. I am. I'm a fa I can almost qualify for a Father's Day now because my wife's pregnant, so um, she, she gave me the happy Father's Day this morning. I didn't really know how to take it, but I'll, I guess I'll take it, and it's, uh, if this is my first Father's Day, I'm, it's, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you. Your U.S. Open champion, Dan. Thank you, Bob, as uh, Ogilvy hoists the trophy. And the mother-to-be, Julie, cheers her husband on. Uh, so many different storylines uh, this week at Wingfoot. Johnny, the golf course, Bob talked about that. All the players, and we have been commenting it on all the week. We have asked Phil Mickelson to come out and chat with us. I mean, and he politely declined. Uh, tough moment there with his wife Amy. I I know how I know how bad I feel about Phil's finish, and I can imagine what uh, Phil feels. That uh, that was a really an amazing collapse right there. You look at that. No, finish no, no there. disrespect no. to Ogilvy's win no, here today, no. but this will be remembered as much for that win as it is for the men who collapsed around him and it's just not Montgomery and Mickelson who are on that list. Yeah, yeah, Furyk, he three putts 15 and then he makes the the double bogey at the last hole to finish at six, one out of the playoff. Harrington finishes bogey, bogey, bogey to finish just out of the playoff by two. And then of course Monty double bogeys the last hole to miss the playoff by one shot. Come on, you talk about the most unbelievable finish you'll ever see in championship golf. Jeff Ogilvy just hung on that up and in, the, the chip in and then the up and in after uh, being short of the green at 18 was awesome. Just in great. In that respect, he absolutely earned it.